is of high quality. The mystery, you We say. will be the detectives Whoa. in this mansion of it's, terrible it's a, <laughs> detective The answer Benoit has eluded Blanc. us. I will be Colonel Mustard. In the library. With, with the candlestick. Oh. With the dildo. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, I ended up watching Clue because of this movie. Clue is awesome. <laughs> I never expected it to be as good as it was because a lot of people have like got really good things to say about it. I was like, it's fucking based on the board game. And the film opens it's... and the guy walks through the door and he's like, ah, Colonel Mustard. And I was like, fucking really? <laughs> <laughs> Is it true that what they were saying, like, they, they filmed different endings of it, and whichever one you got depended on what region you lived in or something? Apparently, yeah. And the um, the final cut has three endings that um, they connect them by saying, that could have happened, but let's see what really happened. And then the uh, last one is, that could the, have happened um... too, but let's see what really happened. Nice. Um, and yeah, they have different... This is the thing. It's a like a joke... But they actually had to put a lot of effort into uh, making it reasonable that three different people could have been behind it all. Um, it takes a while to go through, and every the communism is mentioned every once in a while throughout the story in different ways. And in all three endings, the character says communism was a red herring. Like that wasn't the actual <laughs> bad person. <laughs> also, Tim Curry fucking steals it in that film, but he often does in whatever he's in. Yeah, it's just most Tim Curry movies. I need to see Legend again. I almost want to see the original It again, just to see him as Pennywise, but that's like the only part of the movie that people even tend to talk about yeah. being amazing, so... <laughs> just... I, yeah, I wouldn't do that to my, myself if I were you. <laughs> it doesn't hold up to, like, you know, retrospective what? viewing. What I've heard. Um, so yes, hello. I can see people are uh, coming in there in chat. Hello, hello everybody. I know hello. Like... Uh, a weird... Normally, it would have been like a week uh, since you would have seen us. Unfortunately, it's been a week and a half, but it doesn't even feel that way because you possibly would have been among the people who've been watching 30 hours of me playing a video game in the last few days. Um, or they watched A Wrinkle in Time 30 ooh. times. Oh, yes. That would have been Which time probably well would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. There's no reason not to mention it. Last of Us 2! Uh, I don't know, like, just get it as an opening topic to get past to move on. <laughs> like, it's like, that's a game. I played it fully. Wasn't that a bad game? <laughs> um, I was, I'd was. i heard so many bad things, and yet I'd managed to stay mostly clean on, on spoilers outside of... I knew a couple of like bigger events, but only pieces of bigger events. And man, so many shocks, so many surprises. So many wonderful moments, um, and yeah, I figure that um, I may as well mention it here because I did on the uh, the final stream that even before I'd done the third stream, I already had a lot of ideas about how I wanted to make a pretty entertaining like sort of set of ways to deliver criticism for this that's like relatively fast for me, but also um, it's almost like a test, but also because I kind of want to kind of want to vent about the game. It's kind of annoyed me a little bit in my soul. You know how it'd be. It's fine. Um, yeah, I know about that soul annoyance. It's, <laughs> uh, and you know, not not memeing, it's definitely up there with the greats. The the TLJs, the Game of Thrones, Season 8. <gasps> the... Oh my goodness, those are the greats, but the bad greats. <laughs> oh my goodness. The, the best the, dark of the worst. It's, yeah, I mean... The duel of the greats. It's, it's so... It's so surprising. We, we, we talked about this a bit on the, um, the After Party stream, but it was just like, what happened to the Terminator 3s? What happened to the films that were sequels and kind of cash grabs, but we went, eh, that was a film, like, I guess. That wasn't very good. Yeah. That wasn't, like, insultingly bad. They didn't, like, try to clinically, in a laboratory, concoct some kind <laughs> of a movie specifically designed to destroy the things we love. So that was <laughs> kind of nice. It was just kind of bad. Yeah, like, a, just, just like, hey, what if, um, what if the Terminator comes back and helps people again? You're like, okay. Hmm. All right. What if the Terminator know, comes back and fucking kills John Carter? You're like, wait, what? Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder what the story is behind that. <laughs> then the movie starts. Like, oh, okay. All right. I think the problem is when you get onto like your fourth or fifth cash grab movie in a series, then you start to just go off the cliff. Um, 
Yeah, that's that's what it used to be. I think we all agreed that that, would, that was just the way it works. It's like the more it goes on, the worse it gets until it peters out, comic money, and it's dead. And that's fine. That's just the way it goes. These days, though, you have to like hug them close. You're like, please, please don't take this one too. And they're like, no, it's time. <laughs> give it, give it back. <laughs> it's time for a reboot. And because uh, I'm not like I was, I was, I was never on the up and up about all the different developments mm -hmm. with with the game being made, I was always prepared to just play it when it came out, because I kind of liked, uh... Well, I, I kind of liked the first one a bit. I was like, this is, this is a cool game. I'll, I'll play the sequel. And I heard bits and bobs. I remember the... Wasn't it like one of the f first sets of trailers? People were very happy. We were, like, super excited. And then... it, it, they were nice and grim and dark and violent and stuff, so it set quite a good tone. And because there was no context behind anything, it was like, oh, this looks exciting, this bit. Like, someone's getting tortured in the dark and the rain, and then someone's getting killed with a hammer. Cool. And yeah, I, uh, things started to turn when someone leaked a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and I managed to stay clear of it. I just kept hearing about how awful it was. I had to, like, you know, shunt several conversations in Discord just to be like, oh, do you mind, like, Saying what you got to say, but without being specific. Man, was it worth it? Because <laughs> I got to discover so much, so much. I had no idea what what I was in for. Uh, you can you can find those streams. Uh, they're, they're all linked in Watto's Junkyard for now. Um, but like the best bits of it are probably gonna show up in the eventual video I have a crack at. Um, but that's not why we're here today. This was actually organized a while ago, and we've just been looking for a time. If for you it can to believe work. it, I know, right? Uh, <laughs> We did a stream on, on Drinker's channel, talking about our thoughts, specifically, on, on, on the film, going through it almost chronologically and just breaking down how amazing uh, it all is, in terms of just, wow, that construction. Oh, I do want to appreciate, Fat Geralt is one of the best characters in fiction, yeah, I do agree. <laughs> so. <laughs> He's got a mean right hook, man. <laughs> that Geralt deserved better. Absolutely. I was actually sad when she killed him. I was like, oh, I could have gone for more fat Geralt. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we, we, we did that stream, and of course, um, I figure it makes sense for us to cover it a bit on EFAP 2. Knives Out, we, we, we did wait, watch it. I think if you go back to like EFAP, whatever, when the film was coming out, I think I've said... <laughs> Like a million times over, like, yeah, we're gonna watch for Critical Drinker, yeah, it's gonna happen, yep, mm-hmm, yep. And then everyone's yeah, talking, yeah, like, have you seen it, it yet? Yeah. I'm like, nope. <laughs> 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 and who would have thought that all it took was you being like, okay, so we actually gonna watch it? I was like, oh yeah, okay, today, or yeah. this day. And you're like, yeah, okay, let's do it. And we did, and wow. Um, much the same as The Last of Us 2, but for different reasons. I didn't know how much tism there was in this movie. Uh... It was amazing. So so many different ideas, like narrative wise, that are just uh shocking and, and inventive and creative, such as someone vomiting whenever they tell a lie. Wow. Oh, that's a thing. Oh that happens. Oh. We all know someone like that. That's not strange and contrived just to make the movie work. We all know someone who vomits whenever they lie. Well, yeah, I've seen one or two people who vomit every time they see me. Oh. Um but I think that's for other reasons. Do you, are you lying when they see you? Could it be connected? <laughs> <laughs> when I claim that I'm sober. You're like, hello there. And then they vomit and you're like, I didn't even lie, what the fuck? <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> do you have to do this every time? <laughs> oh. uh, I, I think my favourite contrivance was the character whose name was Hugh specifically <laughs> so a single line of dialogue would work <laughs> later in the movie. I have seen defences of that where someone says, You idiots. They establish his name as Hugh early on, as if that like addresses our criticism at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about when they establish it; it's the fact that it even happens. They Jesus. could have called him so in a in a perfect world, right? He's not even called Ransom; he's just Hugh throughout the whole movie. And at the end, we're like, his fucking name rhymed with you. Oh my god! <laughs> but it gets worse because nobody fucking calls him that. It's oh, it's fantastic. Uh, then. Yeah, the, the, those are like the top, probably, well, we say it's hard to categorize, there's lots of really stupid things in it, but, um, yeah, the, you know, not exactly looking to repeat um, the stream we had with Drinker, but it may come up, different things, trying to qualify them as we do, while we check uh -huh. out two different videos today. I say two, could end up being one, who knows, you know how it goes with the effect. Um, one argues that Knives Out is perfect, the other argues that it succeeded where The Last Jedi failed. Now, which of those two would you guys like to check out first? 
Oh, let's so let's the, do them in the order that um that you mentioned them. Yeah, perfect. First, how do you feel about that chat? We're gonna go with the hyperbolic title first. I'm just I'm I'm, I'm just I'm just curious. We got the TLJ well, one. Anything that says that they succeeded is hyperbolic. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Mm. I'll have you know, right, that a lot of people actually do think that this film is either pretty great or uh, good. So we yeah, do a have lot to, of people are wrong. We do have to do some convincing, all right? We'll, we'll get to it. Um, we got, most people just saying do it when there was an option of two, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I appreciate the do it's though. Yeah, uh, I've given you guys a link if you want to hop in, anybody who hasn't already. Yeah, let me hop on in. Clicky this button here, load up my page, get my video ready. I've got my my pipe and oh my, my hat, my my hat that has the brim on the front and the back, so I could flip it around either way and still keep the sun mm. off my eyes while I'm investigating. Um, I got my checkered coat. Um, I've got my manservant. Oh, no, I'm jealous. Um. Oh yeah. One of the, so the, the we're covering a cocaine. The first one is called, like I said, Knives Out is Perfect, and in the title it says Perfect, so it'll be interesting to see the qualification for that. And the second one is going to be by Phil Mento. We wouldn't have covered him yet at all, but it's uh, someone that we've been asked to cover a couple of times. Also asked to have on to guest, which uh, he's welcome to. Um, uh, you have. Yeah, do it, uh, if, if you want. So, let's, let's load her up. Knives Out. Oh, jeez. Uh... Oh my goodness. I Does it... can't watch that video. What? You can't? Video unavailable. This video contains content from Taylor München Fernseh GmbH, who has blocked it in your country on copyright grounds. First no. off, half of those were not real words. <laughs> Second off, <laughs> can you go ahead and get like a... You turn on your VPN. I don't have a VPN. You don't have a VPN? I... That would li literally be the first reason I would need one. Um... Well... Right, can you, can't he, can you, right, can't you go to the border of your country? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> so if you tried to watch it just directly through the channel, it wouldn't work either, through the stream. I would guess so. Um, There's a little bit of a delay there. Yeah, it'd be a little um, awkward for yeah. I guess we can watch the other one first, and because as far as I'm aware... Yeah, you know, while you write to the interior ministry of your country and ask them to repeal this something um have tell angela merkel to <laughs> finally do something fucking good for once and That's... let you let let you watch knives out is perfect the video essay make sure <laughs> when you're writing this out that perfect is in all caps to accent its perfection Damn it. i don't think we've ever come across this as an yeah. issue before <laughs> And of course, yeah, the weird one. Talking about. There's that no super rarely as well. Like I think I saw that once before on any video. So <laughs> I don't. Um, what about a crazy idea of if we watch the other one, and in the meantime, Mel, if you can like download this video and upload it on your channel unlisted, and then if it can give you a timestamp for what is what is making it blocked, and then since it's only five minutes, so it shouldn't take long to do any of these things. And then, uh, I don't know, put anything in front of that. And then hopefully if it unblocks it, then we can watch it unlisted uh, on your channel. See my crazy logic? Yeah, I, I need a link to that video, though. Uh, if you just click the, um, the top no, left. There's, well, nothing, there's nothing to click I, for me. I only have a oh, what, if you, um, what if you went to this person, whoever she is? Oh, Mad Matt, whoever he is. And if you... Do they have it mirrored on another website, like BitChute or something? Uh, does BitChute work? Because if they've uploaded together? it somewhere else, then maybe... Uh... Yeah, I think Watch Together works with other stuff. So, it works with YouTube, Vimeo, Twitch, Deezer, TikTok, Podcasts, WTG Shorts, Instagram, Twitter, GiphyCat, Pinterest, <laughs> Kube... Daily Motion, Facebook, SoundCloud, MixCloud, Slides, oh, and Watch Together Sync. Um, Someone just uh, messaged me that apparently uh, the Oprah browser has an integrated VPN, so I might just check that out really quickly. That might be the fastest way, actually. 
All right, yeah. I can't find it on BitChute, the same video. Uh, have you tried uh, Shit Boot? I have not. I don't know if work. I hope so. Um, it's actually, uh, in German, it's uh, uh, Scheiße. Um, oh, boot. I know the word. Huh? Did you say it work? No, I said I know that word. Oh, have you have you got Opera up yet? Or I need to click install. Oh, I guessed. I guessed what boot was in German, and I was correct. <laughs> wow. It's actually booten. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait. So what's booty? I I wanted to double check to make sure that I wasn't insulting the once proud German race. Um, and <clears throat> turns out boot in german is booten i just want to point out how incredibly i i feel like pointing right now i am so happy oh yeah well, pointing uh, is a big sign of emotion i'm uh, i'm is... pretty relieved because you've avoided an international incident in there rags so well done mm -hmm. yeah nice job man pointing in german is zeigen yeah that seems like it's made up yeah i think it is made up i like zeigen that's something zeigen. that i would say oh shit that worked immediately <gasps> Hooray! When you say worked what immediately. Worked? Uh, thanks, Space Cowboy, for uh, DMing me that suggestion. Thanks, Which Space what? Cowboy. See you later. Danke, Space Kaboop. Danke schön. <laughs> da, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you can see Knives out. this video. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> you click play and it went back to it. Wait, hang on. I probably need to click some something. The Fliegen Flugen. Uh, you can do it. Enable the englorms. I understand. In Norbaluben. Uh. Das ist ein schrecklichen Tag. <laughs> what did you say about Shrek? <laughs> you get Shrek <laughs> out of this, okay? <laughs> the movie's great, how could you? Shriek. So I'm just gonna sit here and get fucked up while you guys work on this. <laughs> I mean... Good luck. <laughs> I, I don't know if we're on the verge of it being solved or not. Sorry. What is it asking yeah, you for? Yeah. Like a I'm playback thing? Again. I'm the opposite of drunk. I'm super lucid. Mm -hmm. Or as they say oh. in Germany, yeah. uber okay. Yeah, okay. Clara. Oh, it's fresh. And yeah. then... All right, there we go. It works. <gasps> Yay! So we're actually ready. Well done, sir. Check out. God, like World War Three in here. Okay. Here we go. Knives out. Is perfect. Let's do it. Strudel time. Knives Out is Marco. fresh. And not in Rotten Tomatoes, 97% sort of way. But in a different I hate sort his of voice way. already. Knives Out is a masterpiece yeah, is that shows easy. a perfect... Hey, look. Knives Out's a masterpiece. Right. Uh, more like a, a masterpiece of bad filmmaking. Dude. Oh, oh, oh. That is fucking great. I love it. Perfect representation of a director's vision done right. Knives Out is a spin on the classic well, whodunit story. director's story vision done right. Well... Hmm. It's what he wanted, yeah. yeah <laughs> There's and, no doubt about that. And as for being a classic whodunit story, it wants to be a classic whodunit story. Like, on, in the aesthetic aspect, that's clearly what it's going for. Old man, murdered, mansion, everyone's yeah. there on the same yeah. night. Who could it be? Like, if you look at it from these very broad aspects, sure, it's a classic whodunit, if that's what you're going for. I just, I like the whole, like, what you just said there is like, you know, who could have done it? And, and I think a lot of people will probably end up describing this movie as being like, ah, oh, you know, all of them were motivated. Just be like, nope, just four. Just four. The rest <laughs> of them are completely superfluous and pointless. Yep. And they just chew up screen time. I thought it was a spin on the classic whodunit story that subverts expectations, the Ryan Johnson way, which in subverts this movie is Subverts expectations, the, the Ryan Johnson way. Man, he's uh, he's really ruined that, isn't he? He uh, kind of has. It has an insane negative connotation now. Unfortunate. It's kind of like, I don't know, what other things have negative connotations? Um, Women's rights, the Holocaust. <gasps> oh yeah, yeah. Thirteenth Amendment. Yeah, of course. Uh, I guess just a Johnson film. Like it could be by any other Johnson, but now it's tainted yeah. forever. The purpose of this video is to try to explain the genius filmmaking and script of Knives Out, and why it is my favorite film of the year. Alright. This movie starts off perfect. Wait, uh, when did Knives Out come out? It was 2019, right? 
Yeah. Uh, nah, let's see. Uh, let me go to 2019 movies. Oh, you don't. don't it do was. It. You're going to be really we... disappointed because there's so many good ones that came out. Oh, because <laughs> yeah. yeah, Joker came out that year. Yep. Um, I can't wait till people do a fucking retrospective on 2020 movies. <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> My nothing. top 20 2020 movies. Ford vs. Ferrari. Oh, good stuff. Some good shit that year. I mean, it was surrounded by hot garbage, but mm, at Astra, I like that. I like Marriage Story. We never saw Uncut Jam. Yeah, Marriage Story was really good. Yeah, Uncut Jam's. I managed to miss that one. So it shows um, how passionate we were about this movie that has taken us like an entire year to watch it. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was high up there on that list, you know. Getting Jojo there. Rabbit, The Lighthouse. Yep. Yep. So great. Um, Togo came out on Disney Plus. Someone in chat suggested it's... John Wick Three. Why would you do that to me? No. <laughs> was that Zach Gerbard? He's just trolling me all the time about John Wick. Willem <laughs> Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. Wilhelm Dafoe. It's a PG movie about a sled dog, I guess, and it's 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 Togo, and it's. Willem Dafoe. You reckon he plays, the, he plays the human. He doesn't play the. Cats came out 2019. Remember 2019, everybody. Oh. 1917, of course. Parasite. Gemini Man. Another great. I still need to watch Ford v Ferrari. Oh yeah, Mulan was supposed to come out. That didn't happen yet. Yeah, that's been delayed indefinitely now. I think. It's, yeah, Tenet's got the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. Damn. This year is dry, as they say. Mm -hmm. It was unfortunate The Last of Us 2 came out like, Hey, what's up, everybody? Do you want some entertainment? We're like, yes, please. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this wasn't entertaining at all. No. Of the, the office. This movie starts off perfectly, in my opinion, oh. by starting with the interrogation scene. The interrogation scene reveals Doesn't character start off with the interrogation scene, does it? Well... It's, well, it really start starts off. off with him getting killed, or sorry, the body being discovered, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah I, so. I suppose I'd be I willing, sort of... benefit of the doubt wise, to be like, so what is the main section that we're starting off with? I suppose it's the. Well, it's, it's isn't it Martha girl... waking up and then he goes to the house? Yeah. It's... And then we yeah, start the, the interrogations, scene. I guess. The third scene is when everyone gathers at the house and meets together. Yeah, so this. Yeah, not really. Kind of, I mean, not really. It's, it's I funny. mean, first scene opens with third scene, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, really. Motivations for every character and establishes the groundwork for the rest of the plot. Every character, Richard, Linda, Walt, and Joey, are given the motivations time to establish for every their... character. I mean, it's wrong. Yeah, There's characters who aren't even part of that interview. If you're trying to be like super generous, what did what did the interviews tell us about each of the four? It's like Linda's very proud and um, intelligent. I would probably say I don't, she's like the only intelligent one out of all of them, seemingly outside of maybe Ransom. Uh, and she is protective of her family, I, I suppose. And then you have um, fuck their names. Uh, <laughs> the um, the so guy who cheated. Have... What was his name? Richard. The guy who cheated. His name was. Richard. Richard Dryson. Right, Drysdale. So, so he uh, is like petty, if you remember. He's, he's like willing to shit on anyone. Okay. You got Walt, who's just kind of like the dependable, kind of basic guy. He doesn't seem to have much drive or, or personality to him. Yeah, and um, who was the fourth one? <laughs> of course, the the. The um the Jamie parasite Lee Curtis? one. Oh, that's Linda. Um, Tony Tony Collette is it? That's the one, yeah. And she she's very um like Valley Girl sort of thing. Uh, which I I think is kind of the archetype that they're going for in the whole film. She's very um, oh my god. Like, yeah, but the... we don't get we don't get Chris Evans in that opening bit. I don't believe he shows up later. Yeah. Um, we don't get why? uh, we don't get um, Meg. No, we well, don't we don't get Jacob. We don't get the alt right troll. We don't get the snowflake. Yes. Yeah, we don't get. Oh, well, we'll. We, so so the, that's Megan Jacob. Yeah. The snowflake, as 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 he refers to it, she does actually sit down for an interrogation. But I remember, like, her scene is really quick. Um. Uh -huh. 
and we don't get to learn a lot about it. Fran? Fun fact. Is she in the, um, is Fran in there? No, no. Fran's ignored for the most part outside of she gives that little thing to she says um uh, the, the 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 like there's a plot she knows about poisoning someone with their meds or something remember like that's her one of her first lines where you're like oh and she discovered the body but we don't really find out anything about her she's really only serving a purpose in the film in terms of like she's like an entity that is needed to be in a certain place at a certain time to push the pieces in the right places she's not much of a character because remember her whole goal was to get money out of this right He's trying to blackmail. Uh, you're talking about uh, Fran. <clears throat> Fran. Oh yeah. I. So Fran, yeah, because she did the blackmail. Yeah, she was looking for um okay, so money just for money. Um, her amazing plan of show up in a dark room. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. Uh. So yeah, we, like we don't. I wouldn't say we discover a, a very much at all. You get the um the sort of flashbacks to, to, to the characters to try and be like, this is kind of why they're motivated. Guy cheated, Guy wants uh, the control of the publishing. Linda, I guess, just... It, what would you say Linda's motivation is to kill Harlan? Doesn't have one, right? No. Yeah, she one. seems to be well off and doing alright. Um, didn't she like him? Like, when they're, like, really Yeah, close? she's very positive about him, so... She's she's not the one who's been embezzling money from him. That's Tony Collette's character, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and, yeah, I don't think mean... she's got much to hold over her, really. Hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, still a, a lot of motivations and stuff that we get absolutely no um, uh, no knowledge on a lot of characters. Uh, they introduce <laughs> characters later on. Um. It does more to establish the stuff of what happened that night more than it even does the characters being interviewed. Which was um, the intention, right? It's supposed to double up uh, uh, as yeah, a so. as a giving us like information on how the kill went down, but also, or at least the setting in which it happened, while also giving us these characters, the, giving us them traits by by the way that they say things and and, and all that. But like, um, I don't know. I, f I really felt like I didn't have much to work with, and I quickly developed like, wow, they're all fucking assholes. Like, that seems to be the, uh, mm. the idea. And, of course, when anything of theirs is threatened, they immediately, like, yeah, what does he say, um, like, vultures, beaks, bloody knives out, I think is his line. Um, so yeah, I don't know, I, I would, I would be hard-pressed to, to explain them as characters in a thorough way with just those interview pieces. It's kind of, um, Little to work with, is what I would argue, but a lot of people think it worked. Their possible motivations and traits. Richard is shown to be unfaithful. Linda is shown to be proud of her self-made business, which makes her arrogant and egotistical. Walt is shown to be petty with- Okay, um, mm. arrogant and egotistical. For Linda? Yeah, I guess. But I feel like of all the people, she has earned that. I mean, like, I don't- she, I think I don't hold that against her, certainly. How is it well, represented yeah, I mean, that she's kind of, Yeah, she well, kind of sees this motive? business... Yeah, I mean, she sees the business as her accomplishment, so naturally she's protective of it and, like, what she's done with it. But that's, yeah, again, that's, that's not being threatened, so there's no reason for her to act. Yeah, these are just throwing out negative character traits about people as if you think we are going to think that's a motive for her when it doesn't make any sense. He's supposed to assume that her arrogance is represented by the fact that she thought she would get uh, in the house, and she doesn't? Is, is that like... I mean, I don't... Because it's not arrogance, you just... Like, I expect when my parents die, I'll get stuff. It's not of arrogance, it's just... Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, I'm, I'm thinking about the film, like, how does that pay off exactly? Because, of course... Well, her expectations were subverted. Ryan Johnson style. Because the Richard, you could argue, like, he's a bit of a, a slimy, sort of, uh, asshole, cheater person, and how does that, like, uh, reach a conclusion in the storyline? It's like, well, his own decision to disrespect Harlan by throwing the ball outside eventually leads to him getting his indiscretion discovered, because he's an idiot and for some reason left the letter, uh, and assumed, he just assumed it was a blank letter, so he just left it on the desk. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I suppose there's a through line there, but I, I'd be curious to, like, what, what would, what would you say is Walt's through line? Like, he's, um, 
Apparently he's petty. Oh. What, not what even, you... yeah, not even that. I mean, because <clears throat> you know he's he's shown to be quite a loyal, um, you know, worker for his father. He's administered his, his publishing empire. He's wanted to branch out into movies and things, but his dad's always said no. So he's kind of had thwarted ambitions. Yeah, um, and then the implication is that like um, his his dad wants to set him free. Um, by cutting him off and just letting him write his own novels and, and stuff. But that's the assumption that he's actually a creative person, which isn't borne out by his actions in the story. So, because yeah, I'm trying to think is... of like Walt payoffs, and it's like, well, he, he just does the thing where he's like, hey, I can help you by getting lawyers from New York. And then she's like, I'll get it myself. And he's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> there goes my threat. Yeah, I don't really. Is that. Him being like, I, just, I would, I would, I would be curious to see how that sort of roundabout gets us his character in in a meaningful sort of position in the film. Uh, I mean, is it trying to say there that you know he's he's kind of dumb and he's kind of naive, and even when he thinks he's making a threat, he's not capable of going through with it properly because he doesn't really think through the implications of it before he does it. That would be closer to what he's a little bit timid, isn't he? Kind but, of, yeah. He's so he's also... not really able to play hardball with her because he doesn't know how. I guess you could argue he's still, um, he's probably the nicest out of all of them, seemingly. <laughs> Dare I say. Well, does does he not say to Marta, before any of this stuff comes out about her, her inheriting the, infor the, the entire fortune, does he not say to her, look, we're going to look after you financially? Yeah, he's yeah, I mean, obviously a veteran. Yeah, and there's no reason for him to do that, because he's not under any pressure to do so. It's just, it's like... Yeah, Walt's just being nice. Yeah, so like that's an act of generosity on his part. Yeah, they they try and make they're they're all unlikable people, but they're not all devilish or anything. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are far worse than others. Um, you know, Meg and Richard in particular are up there as long uh, along with Joni. Probably the three worst that come to mind, not including, of course, is Meg the uh, snowflake one? Yeah. Because she gives up her friends. Well, yeah, um, I would argue that's possibly the worst act that's committed outside of Ransom, right? Well, Richard cheating on his wife. Um, Joni stealing hundred thousand plus dollars from. Yeah, her I would actually father. say cheating on your wife is probably not anywhere near as bad as because you want money. You're trying to sell someone's mum out. It's kind of weird. Um, at least with cheating, um, there's context that could be there, as in like. What their what everyone's maybe. relationships are actually running out. The stealing hundreds yeah, of thousands of dollars, though. That's uh... <laughs> yeah. I think it's pretty certain that Meg was doing it for selfish reasons, and even if she was pressured into it, she still is an adult, and she yeah, still, she still makes that decision. Yeah. Um. I guess we don't have context for why Richard cheated. Um. Joni's just straight up stealing money from Harlan. Lots of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so I guess, yeah, like, we are trying to sort of pass out the characters, it's just there's, uh, there's little to work with as far as I'm concerned. But, yeah, um... Yeah, oddly enough, the, the, mo the characters who don't do anything morally <clears throat> bad are probably Jacob, uh, internet troll man. Yeah, he, uh, sa he says he doesn't mean, actually do mean anything words. Bad. That's about as much as he does. But of course, he's probably the least character of the characters. Yeah, um, he's just kind of hanging around. I mean, Walt didn't necessarily do anything wrong. Even in the, the scene where he's supposed to be threatening, all he's really doing is walking toward her while explaining stuff. And being dumb. Yes. Being yeah, dumb. I'm trying like, to think of... Oh, what... wait, we can't help you with all yeah, the resources. I'm... Oh, yeah, the resources I have now. Okay, cool, thanks, bye. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm Walt is... Immediately. I'd have to rewatch it, but I don't remember him and really it, doing anything bad. And if you remember, um, he doesn't, like, go, damn it, you know, she saw through my plan. He just goes, hmm. Hmm, because I'll yeah. go back home. Yeah. Yeah, can't remember doing too bad. Well, all right, then. With everything handed to him. Joni is just a straight-up liar with financial issues. This is brilliant writing. Wait, who, wait, who had everything handed to them? Walt, Walt, apparently, I guess, yeah. No, Walt had to run a business. Uh, well, yeah. as, as they say in the film, all he did was take the book and, like, stamp it, you know, and send it out. So that's how they, uh... Mm. Yeah, I presume there is... Job. That is kind of 
belittling what I imagine is quite a, like a demanding job of running a publishing it's company. Be stressful. Yeah, I mm. I feel like if somebody hands you a business and you keep it going successfully, you're working to keep a business alive. That's a thing that not everybody can do. Well, especially yeah. if they're implying that Harlan basically has nothing to do with it. Like, he just writes his books and passes them over. Because at that point then, everything to do with the book from then on is all Walt. He, like, controls all of it, I imagine. Well, yeah, you have to get editors, you have to get artists in to design the covers, you have to get publicity things arranged, you have to get publishing deals sorted out in each territory. You know, all of these things have to be done to make a book actually out there, to get it to get it finished. Yeah, and it's taking, like, the, the, the position, I guess, in this film with all of them, that none of them have really ever worked for anything. They've all been handed uh, everything they have, really. It's just like, huh. It's kind of it, it. It just kind of undoes a lot of whatever different bits and bobs of effort and talent that would have gone into each of their particular roles. Like, um, she's all about real estate, Linda, isn't it? But they say like it doesn't really matter because she was given a million dollars to start with. Yeah, but then if you're dumb, like you can waste a million dollars very quickly and easily and get nothing oh, out absolutely. of it. So presumably, she is smart and she had to work with well, yeah, that. Yeah, especially if you invest it all. Yeah. That's a, so this a again. This is this is the this is the kind of the classic thing with you get with Ryan Johnson, where he shows characters doing one thing, but he tries to construct a narrative around them that's completely different, and tries to form a different opinion. You know, if you have someone like Rose Tico who consistently fucks up everything she does, but Ryan Johnson's script tries to portray her as a heroic, smart, intelligent character. Yeah. When her actions are the opposite of that, and it's kind of like what he's doing here. You've actually got a bunch of people who, okay, they've been given opportunities that the average person wouldn't have, or they've been given resources that they wouldn't have, but they have done good things with those resources. They have, they have worked hard and applied themselves, or at least some of them have. Well, it's the thing, we don't know any of the, the details about how Walt, how... In, in, in fact, the ones we really don't know anything about is uh, Richard. Like, what is... I don't even know what he does, but we're supposed mm -hmm. to just not, like be fine with him... <clears throat> not being uh, considered a, like, as much of a leech as Linda and Walt, despite the fact that we know they have these positions, so they must be able to run them. Like, at least. And then, of course, you have um, Tony Collette's character, who is pretty much characterized entirely as a leech. And mm. that's not the yep. same. Like, there needs to be a line between her and what they do, because they actually work. And it's kind of awkward, because it does... They, they do sort of frame it as, like, the whole family of leeches, basically. Or... Um, at the very least, they, they're squandered, they've been spoiled. Which is pretty funny, by the way, considering Linda seems to be, uh, probably like, what, ten years younger than Harlan or something? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Like, well, it's time yeah, for you to spread like your wings and fly, and it's like, what the fuck do you mean? Yeah, this is what <clears throat> I think we were discussing on my stream, where it was like, the same thing he says to Walt, who's, like, easily in his 50s by this point, judging by his appearance. You know, saying like, oh, you know, it's, it's, I'm going to set you free from the demands of this publishing job and I'm going to let you write your, your own books and get out into the world and be creative. And it's like, these aren't people who are in their teens or their early 20s who've got their whole lives ahead of them to like reinvent yeah. themselves. They're middle aged people. Like, they're probably, they have property yeah. to pay for, they have your kids. families to Yeah, feed. like they, they have kind of reached the zenith of their accomplishments yeah. already. <laughs> it's time you to know, go out there into the world. You're like, what the fuck? Oh, Dad, man. I'm only five years away from collecting a pension. <laughs> Don't do this to me. Five years. I can't. Um, I'm gonna roll it back. So they, they said they just declared something was smart. I want to know what it was. To him, Joni is just a straight up liar with financial issues. This is brilliant writing, using the interrogation scene to show character traits. Oh, who done it is going to have an I mean, interrogation. I don't know about brilliant. I mean, that's that's. It's kind of standard for an interrogation scene. You ask. <clears throat> Well, I mean, I don't. We're accidentally commenting on what you're supposed to do as a writer in the first place, which is no one thing should always only serve one purpose. Like you try to achieve more than one thing at, at one time. Um, and so he's like, ah, oh, you know, we got the interrogations are running at the same time as getting characteristics. So we're like, how would you even have an interrogation without a characteristics being spilled out? <laughs> yeah, I I feel like calling it brilliant is a little hyperbolic, considering that this should be standard for what this scene is. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm okay with like appreciating that taking place. I just don't think it was very well done. I don't know. 
yeah, I don't know if it reached brilliant status, especially if it's supposed to get us to really understand the family. In... Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ultimately, any any scene where you've got characters answering questions and perhaps giving their own perspective on something, that is going to tell you things about the characters, regardless of how well it's written. It's just a factor of what it is. So, yeah, this isn't this isn't great writing. This is just like standard, somewhat effective, like you know multifunctional bit of writing at the start of a movie. That's all you get from it. Well, yeah, like, I feel not like genius it's, by any stretch. I think it's like Olympic diving in the sense that the more difficult the dive you're trying to do, the higher your possible score can be. Mm -hmm. So when you're writing something like an interrogation scene in a mystery movie, and you're using that to simultaneously explain some characters while re-explaining the events of that night according to people, you're going to have to, if it was more complex and interesting, sure, I feel like it could be brilliant, but... Like the, there's one part I remember, and I thought, yeah, that was that was uh, kind of well done, but if if not, pretty obvious, but it, it kind of works as, as a funny. It's the, um, you know, hey, Walt says, uh, you know, he's doing pretty good with his little thing, knowing full well that uh, they all think that he was handed it or whatever. So you're trying to coax out some some uh, prods from the family with that statement. Linda sees right through it, and she's like, you know, you're uh, that's, that's not going to happen. We're not going to rip into each other. And then, of course, yeah. Richard immediately starts spilling his guts about how much he's, uh, you know, got an issue with, with how Walt sucks. And it's just like, hey, okay. But, like, I don't feel like we got yeah. much of any of that at all outside of that. Yeah. Leave me alone. So... And I, because I feel like if we got more of that, it would have been great. I mean, the way it's constructed as well, I mean, I'd have to rewatch it, I guess, to know for sure, but, like, each character kind of has a piece of the puzzle in terms of what happened that evening, haven't they? Like, they each were in different places when at different times, so they're each able to fill in a little bit of the, the blank in terms of what happened and where Harlan was seen at certain times and what noises were heard and all that, but they don't tend to overlap all that much, as far as I know. Mm-hmm. Whereas what you can sometimes do with movies like this is that each person has access to the same information, but what they choose to divulge tells you quite a bit about them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean so like if they a... choose to omit certain details to make themselves look better or to cover up something that perhaps they were doing that they don't want other people to know about, then you've got the interest and basis of, of you know, playing with who who's done it, basically, because then why is this character choosing to not mention this certain thing which happened? Are they hiding something? Does that mean something more? That's something you can do, but then it doesn't work like that this time around because they each know something separate. They each have access to separate bits of information rather than a complete picture. Yeah, there's nothing that we can really... Because if we're reliving this from everybody's explanation of it, then we can't tell if it aligns with reality or not. We just kind of have to take their word for it and then see over time how it plays out. Yeah, and that's, um, the, that's the problem with doing it all at once. All the interviews or all the interrogations all at the same time. If you were going to do it the other way, you would spread it out over you know the first act of the movie where they all get spoken to at different times. But this, is, but this movie uses it in a deeper way. Not only traits are revealed in the scene, though. The scene also shows possible motivations for killing Harlan. Harlan is going to show a video to Linda of Richard being... So there's repetition here and i would ask what he means by it's used in a deeper way um, yeah i thought that that was the surface way the surface point but um, yeah in that moment we're being because i think uh on the first watch through we're just like damn all these people have such thorough and detailed reasons to kill him <laughs> it's like all mm -hmm. of a sudden it's like oof because you get them bang 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 it's like you've been stealing money and i'm cutting you off you have uh you have been cheating on my daughter, and I'm going to tell her. You uh, are going to lose the uh, publishing organization and go. You're going to have to go out on your own. And the the idea we assume is that uh, if if you were to kill Harlan on this night, those things might not go through. Um, yeah, give us if it's deep. I'm I'm ready to accept that there's something there that I totally missed and didn't notice. You got to explain it though. Um, so. Yeah, that's all I'd say. Yeah, I just really. don't know why that would be considered deep, yeah. yeah. ...and faithful. He's going to cut off Joni's funds, and he fires Walt from his publishing company. 
All of these are possible motivations for murder. Mm -hmm. Then, after all the interrogations are over... I would want to like, question at that again, point, what, what is... are the other motivations in the film, if you could tell me? Uh, so just ignore Ransom. Out of the... those motivations you've just established, right, those, those three, I'd be like, what are the other ones? Tell me. Yeah, what are, what are Linda's motivations? What are... What are Meg's? Walt, what are, you know, go, go through each one, because I think they're, at best, really... Like, you could see why they might, but pretty much all of them, it's sort of a big stretch, especially considering that they've all been either called out on it prior. Well, yeah, and so a unifying also, element could have been to have given them a motivation, the mole of motivation, which, which is to prevent him from giving the fortune away, right? That's a better motivation that we get there than all the ones for the supposed murder itself. Yeah, like he hasn't quite written the will yet, but the twist could be that he had written it before they'd even decided to kill him. So that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I'm obviously describing a very different movie at that point, but I'm just saying like it can it can help you because everyone has a motivation at that point. Yeah, yeah if the definitely. movie wasn't a murder mystery and was a drama that was instead focused around the fact that he apparently had more respect and admiration for his made than the rest of his family and it was about the family trying to get her to give up the fortune or get the fortune from her or if harlan has said you know what i think she's honest and wise and she's going to decide who gets what out of the whatever millions that i have and it's about them it would make a good comedy in that sense it would be like uh, a mad 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 world or stuff like that where everyone's now these crazy characters are trying to convince this one you know, nice person to get all the money, but we got what we got, yeah. I suppose. I love how, oh, well. um, <laughs> that, like, with Walt being a suspect, it's like, well, if his entire occupation or his entire career is based around publishing his dad books, wh why would he kill Harlan? Like, that's well, the I guy suppose... who supplies the books to him. <laughs> like, he can continue <laughs> to run it, but you're right, it's like, huh, you'd... hmm. Um, also, that, like, was it done already? Didn't Holland say like we'll talk about it tomorrow? As in like it's or I'll, yeah. I'll explain we'll what I've out, done. Yeah, yeah, it's like we'll work out the details of it, but it's like I've made my choice. Yeah, mm. like that's something they probably wanted to make clear with those flashbacks that it, the the uh, end of time, like the time left to stop the him from doing this thing, is still open. Like it's not quite over yet, so that we know for a fact we're like, oh, they might have killed him because that kind of does kind of line up. But um, even the one, you know, where he's like, I'm cutting you off to um, uh, Tony Collette. It's, it's, it's like, is that done then? I'm assuming there were like regular payments that were sorted out by, you know, uh, a third party that connects to Holland's bank. And I can't imagine that he wouldn't have said to them, yeah, that's not happening anymore and that it's done. So, like, is Tony Collette actually motivated? I don't know. I guess maybe she just wants revenge. She'll stab him because she doesn't like him. Um, oh yeah, yeah some I people like come to this like fucking you... epic music in the background for some reason. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's kind of pissing me off. <laughs> what epic music? Oh, for this video? Yeah, it's, it, you may have missed it. It's yeah, kind of weird. Very... It's so yeah. inappropriate for the movie. <laughs> yeah. This isn't some epic fantasy movie. <laughs> this 12-year-old kid is only 10 years old. Stop picking on a 7-year-old. He's 3 years old, guys. What the fuck? <laughs> <Just the comment. laughs> um... I mean, yeah, the, the, it's, it's clearly a younger person, uh, but they're still sharing uh, some arguments in here. So it's, it's used as a, a bouncing off point, but um, yeah, don't don't be mean, any of you, right? We're just we're just hearing out. The, it, we're also a third through, so um, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll then move <laughs> on to Filmento. Benoit to Marta, and because she pukes when she lies, which is just a genius character trait for a movie like this. Wow, uh, that's not really uh, <laughs> genius. Uh, a genius character trait. Uh, so, I mean, it's different. Obviously, there's the explain why this insanely contrived attribute of this character and is it happens to a be a genius trait. Of all the people in the world, it could happen to. It was a person who needs to get through a murder mystery detective's questions while having killed. The uh, the party in question. Yeah. Um, it. I don't know how. I, I, off the top of my head, can't think of a time I rolled my eyes harder 
than when we watched this. It was like, oh yeah, I, I, I can't stand lies. I just throw up whenever I tell a lie. I thought he was speaking figuratively oh. when they sort of introduced it. Like it, it upsets mm. you when people lie. Like it, like she, that's her reputation. She's like, yes, totally. But she actually vomits, and you're like, oh, oh, wow. And she does so many times, but then yep. the, the script only has her do it when it's convenient to the actual story. You know, yeah. there's times when she could hold it in for a period of time until oh yeah, you know, she could suppress it until it's yeah until, until the plot says she doesn't have to anymore. It's very and inconsistent. Benoit Blanc can sometimes not pay any attention when he's asking her an incredibly important question because yeah. he doesn't know that she. He just trusts that she's a good person. This is why he's a shit detective, by the way. And he asks her a question that's really important. Did Ransom have you drive? Because if she was driving him, when they think Ransom's behind it all in, in like a devious way, then it would, it would implicate her pretty hardcore. And she says, oh, yeah, totally. And then he's like, oh, okay. And then she goes, bleh, but he, he was just on the other side of the car. Or obviously she was inside the car, but it's just like... And, and when we brought up, quickly... vomit smells. Yeah, I was about to say. Like... It's like right between them in like a little, I don't know, a McDonald's cup or whatever it was. Well, they actually um, like... <laughs> put their effort into uh, showing that too. Um, I was looking at um, a clip in it, and uh, when she vomits on Ransom at the end, one of the first things that uh, one of the cops does when they show them again is start going like, oh, like smell-wise. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, vomit, vomit stinky, guys. Yeah, and the the little plastic cup will not contain all the smell. Well, it so doesn't matter. You've got her, her mouth and lips. Like there's that's yeah. Anyway, if people have vomited before, it's uh, it's you have to you have to clean up. You have to brush your teeth. Yeah, you it's, have to... it's 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 gross. <laughs> <laughs> Blanc is able to confirm nice. all of his suspicions. After the scene, not even halfway into the movie, Harlan's death is revealed to be caused by Marta. This is a first subversion of expectations, and it's done great. This is where it leaves the normal who done. All right, so I all oh, 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 oh. done it tropes to dive into an even Wait, better what? story. All right, so what is what is the what is the trope being subverted of the who done it? Is that we don't find out who the killer here. is until the end? Yeah, that's, that's the subversion. Is that we're finding it out early? I don't think you should get points for that. I think you should get points for execution. Yeah. Um. <sighs> I I don't feel like this is yeah this isn't a subversion like I if you were expecting to not know but I guess it's only a subversion in the aspect if you walk into the theater and you start watching and you think that at the end they're going to reveal the killer but they don't then you're just like okay there's still a plot going on here. There's still a story well, being told. That's what our that, reaction was. We were like, oh. Yeah, well, it's like, oh, all so right. It can't be that simple, though, because we're watching a film that'll have a bunch of reveals. So something else must have happened. That, yeah. That's what we, we just assumed. And, and we thought it was a, a problem at first that Harlan wasn't falling over and, and you know, slurring and dying within the first minutes of his uh, injection, up to eight and more. But it turns out it's because he wasn't actually injected with morphine, which uh, any good nurse should have been able to have spotted at that point. Uh, yeah, there's a, that's the thing. The execution's all over the place with this. And if you are someone who is really keen on details like that, you might think, ha, huh, that proves that da 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 da, when really it's just a filmmaking fuck up, courtesy of Ryan Johnson, subverting what you would expect. You know, because thought, what you expect is based off logic and reason. Ransom expected to come in and switch the bottles back after they were used. Mm -hmm. um, so he, to cover the tracks of it being... It, would that make sense? It would make sense. For, oh, wait. Because he got morphine and, and, and medicine. He swaps the liquids in them. And so Harlan dies of a morphine overdose. He swaps the liquids back. So it just looks like. Yeah, this so had, if this had to... worked out according to his plan, though, she, like, I, I guess the way he was imagining it, Marta would have just immediately reported it to the police and be like, oh my God, you know, I gave him the wrong medicine. He mm. died from a morphine overdose. I'm so sorry. She would have got arrested and stuff. But, like, the police would have done a, a toxicology report immediately to confirm what they'd, uh, yeah. what she suspected. But why would he expect um, the bottles to still be there? 
Well, exactly. And I was going to say, even... they would also take away, they would confiscate all her medical gear so that they could do an analysis of that and understand and corroborate everything that she'd said. And if his plan, well, this goes into why did he even hire LeBlanc in the first place? Yeah, the, the premise, um, once again, for Ryan Johnson's premise of his films goes right down. <laughs> I keep calling him LeBlanc. It's just Blanc. I don't, I don't know why. why do, I don't know. I must be thinking of someone else. But Daniel Craig's character, yeah, he would, if he came there, I, I don't know what he was supposed to find out or discover. The whole thing falls apart. The, the involvement of the detective in the story, who happens to be the one who solves all the mysterious mis mystery stuff, he shouldn't have even been here. Um, Chris Evans's character is portrayed to be very cunning and shrewd and yeah. capable of complex maneuvers, but his reason for involving this extremely skilled, famous detective doesn't make any sense in the plot and is totally counterproductive. It's absurd. Uh, it, it why would you need hire... a special, specialized detective to discover a toxicology report? Like, what the fuck? Does he only hire him after the housekeeper discovers what he did and sends him, like, a threatening yeah, message? Because is that when he panics and he's like, he... fuck, I need someone to... Well, like, I could be wrong, but from what I remember, he figures out from the toxicology report that that must mean... Remember, Fran... So, this is really bad. Fran is like, <laughs> I know that Chris Evans did something. So she gets a copy of the toxicology report, she discovers it's blank, it's normal. So she photocopies the header and sends it to Ransom as a bluff. She's like, I know what you did. And then he sees that, and so he assumes, oh shit, so he was hit with the morphine. That's why he killed himself, to cover for Marta. Oh, I can now implicate Marta if I just get a cop or a specialized detective to get the toxicology report because that'll prove that foul play was at hand beyond just killing yourself. And so that's what yes. I'll do. And of course he needs to kill Fran as well, right? To knock her out of the... He needs to frame it as though Marta killed Fran too. That's, that's yes. his plan. Um... And all you needed to do was nothing, because yeah. So, <laughs> so he got the, him involved. Just check the report after you get it, and not just look at yeah, the like, top thing. Yeah, like who gets but, a toxicology yeah, report that no one checks? Like, what would be the point? Yeah. It's so stupid. Like he must have just looked at the top thing. Oh yeah, that is the report. Put it back yeah. down into the into the uh, envelope, and just send it right further or copy. No way. Yeah, but what, when what, no, but copy? when. When Fran sent it to him, she she left the the results blank, so he didn't know the results either. Yeah, she did was, he? If you remember, then when he shows up to her, she's like, "I knew it," because she didn't know it. But mm. him showing up means that the bluff worked, because it was a bluff. She didn't actually know what she was doing there. But again, Fran is a whole other okay. thing, character-wise. Yeah, we're not even getting to the r ridiculous notion of that whole scene where she yeah. goes to meet the killer someone who she who is a well, killer imagine fran being a relatively reasonable housemaid just goes you know what um hey walt i, I don't know she's trust walt whoever go to the police with this you'd be like i saw ransom swapping the medications for harlan after he was killed like isn't that weird and they'd be like yeah, yeah. that is kind of weird medications you say hmm i suppose yep. that would be in his blood yeah. Like like we whatever had to go happened. With the whole with the whole theme that everybody in this family is greedy, right? Because Fran wanted money too. Yeah, <laughs> they're all just dicks. <laughs> yeah, and this is the funny thing. It will because I know that there's going to be someone out there listening right now being like, "But guys, don't you understand? It wouldn't have worked because the toxicology report was clean." And it's like, yeah, Ransom never found that out. Not until yeah. way way later. What what would he make of the fact that he died from uh cutting his own throat? Hmm? So he so you have Ransom hears that he died from uh cutting his own throat. Oh wait, hang on. Muller is wrong. Ransom hires LeBlanc because he saw the suicide in the paper. Well, yeah, but he, he needs it to be reframed as not a suicide. And the the way to do that is through the um the toxicology report. That's why he wants to hire LeBlanc. Hire LeBlanc to look at the toxicology report? Well, this, this is the thing. Are we, are we assuming then that they would have looked at the toxicology report and still concluded suicide? Well, if it was, if he was clean. So then what would 
bringing LeBlanc do? That's the thing I'm trying to this, sort this of is, This is the problem. You have to think of yourself as Ransom. What, did, what was in Ransom's head? And he was like, ah, she's threatening me with a toxicology report, therefore... It, it must. There must be a problem because you remember um, uh, LeBlanc. LeBlanc. That's League of Legends. Uh, Blanc says his reaction to the toxicology report threat was elation because he knows uh, that that means that there's still evidence that Marta would have given him the wrong drug. Because he thought that's what the toxicology report would show. Yeah. You guys are so confused. I mean, it's pretty hard to keep We're track of exactly how of many it. times it fails. It's it's a little awkward. Uh, I mean... Because, and all of this relies on the fact that somebody was trying to, instead of this person knowing what was done, this person bluffs him, and he misconstrues a bluff that I don't think was necessary in order to carry the plot forward to have that meeting between them where Marta has to save Fran. It's kind of nuts from Ransom's perspective because uh, if he believes that the toxicology report would give him, uh, put Marta in, because this is the thing, Marta can't lie, you can't forget this, I know it's a meme in the fucking film, but if you ask her, did you give the wrong medication to Harlan, she will have to say yes. Yes. So is that yes? Yeah, so is that what he's assuming that uh, Blanc would question her on, and that <laughs> she'd be compelled you... to give the answer? But why can't you just do that? Because remember, he's like he can't implicate himself as if he knows. And it's like, but why would you need to, you know, be questionable of the fact that it's like, what happened that night? Why would he kill yeah, himself? Like, Who spoke him to him dose? last? What happened? Yeah. Who spoke to him last? Was was it the nurse? Why was she talking to him? You know, the medications. That, can we check the his blood? Like, you can easily do that. And what's anyone going to do? Like, go, hey, wait a minute. Why are you questioning that? Did you kill him? <laughs> it's like, what? Why can't I question that? And as yeah. Ransom puts, it's like, they need actual proof. They can't just be like, ah, oh, that implicates you somehow. So see, he wanted LeBlanc to think the guy who hired him couldn't possibly have involvement. But it was anonymous. Yeah. So. Which, again... <sighs> We'll, we'll carry on. It's fine. <laughs> it's, 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 unraveling it is fucking, like, immensely <laughs> infuriated because, like, it just doesn't make any fucking sense. Also, moments of it show the genius writing. Rewatching the movie reveals several signs showing that Ransom was the cause of Harlan's death. The line the great Nana says to Marta seems like a throwaway line to the cop. See, I don't think you need to rewatch that to get that reveal. The whole point was that he attempted to kill him and through. An insane set of circumstances <coughs> turns out not. So he did attempt to kill him, but that's you don't need a second viewing for that. That's the whole point. So I don't know. That's strange. To throw the cops off her scent, but it's more than that. She had seen Ransom earlier climbing down the same way. Also, the question Linda poses to Blanc, "Why are you here?" could also be seen as a throwaway line, but it comes up later in a big way. What do you, does it? What? What? Oh. I, I, I don't you might follow. have to rewind that a bit. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I just I don't see how it's like. Oh, it's just like sort of a throwaway as to who hired him. It's like no, I was expecting an answer to that by the end of the film. I assumed it would yeah. play a big role. Who would have hired this guy to do this specific specific thing? Well, yeah, considering he himself repeatedly brings it up as like his is one thing that he can't explain. Yeah, he, even from it's the whole donut hole thing. He says that's what motivates him, which is pretty funny, right? Like. What keeps him on this case is the fact that he was hired in the first place. So, well done, Ransom. It is, as Blanc puts it, a donut in a donut. Now yeah. I'm going to sidetrack a little bit to talk about the writing in a different aspect. The dialogue. The dialogue is great in this movie. It's genuinely funny at times, never quippy, just fun humor. Also, the normal... Genuinely funny, quippy. I didn't... I don't think I laughed ever. I mean, we laughed at it, um, but... I can't remember ever Chris laughing. Evans, Chris Evans said eat shit over and over again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. That was, uh, it's quippy. I mean, I mean, the bit where he where he forces Marta to eat like an entire lunch and then puts a bowl in front of her and he's like, right now I'm going to ask you some questions. Like, oh, I thought that was quite good. But that wasn't really the dialogue. That was just the situation that he concocted. You could still leave, though. <laughs> this is like, it hurts Why your brain. Why did just leave? <laughs> I, this is a this is 
primo example time area so maybe he'll give an example here well yeah because i would have counter examples of um all the cringy political stuff like alt-right troll sjw marxist tism anchor baby i i want an asshole as the president look at the, oh yeah well hitler was an asshole <laughs> man this dialogue i love it mm. uh i guess i would have to rewatch thinking about what I, what I the dialogue specifically to really go with the you know whether or not I think it's strong or weak but I would probably hesitate on weak for now uh, with with what I remember dialogue wise all character interactions are fantastic the characters seem like they've known each other for a long time and this is essential for this movie to work as well as it does the characters besides for Marta all are shown as bad people it's a classic principle of show uh, the characters are all shown as bad people except for Marta no, um, I, I wouldn't say that this film is a, a show-don't-tell in terms of people's character. I mean, we're, we're told that he's cheating. We're told that he's an alt-right troll. We're told stuff, and we don't see that manifest in, the, in their action. Yeah, we're told she steals money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Linda, we're told Linda is just inherited yeah, I would, money. But... I would actually want to hear the arguments for Linda and Walt. I want you to explain to me how you know they're bad people. And um, I know that, because I kind of meme around when I'm like, all the people that are impossible to fucking like, they're all assholes in this film. I'm being a little hyperbolic with that one. I'm mainly, with Linda, I think about when she, like, just fucking points and shouts at Marta. And then she's like, did you have sex with my father? Like, she does lose her shit a little bit there. But, I mean, it's fair enough. Her entire inheritance has just been taken away. I think you can allow her to be a little frustrated in the moment. As for Walt... Um... He does bring up Walt? the mum as being like, maybe a, you could argue that's a threat, but you could simultaneously argue I, that he's actually um, looking out for a little bit. You can't really be sure. Yeah, because he is the one character who goes to her and offers and says, you know, with all the money that he expects they're going to get from the will, that he's going to take care of her and, you know, treat her well. Um, so I'd have to see the scene again and try and pick up on his mannerisms and his expressions, but it could go either way. Yeah, I would I would be curious to hear the arguments for why those two particularly are uh, just signed off awful people. Also, I would like to hear an argument for why the alt-right troll is evil outside of alt-right troll. That would be neat, but I don't think I'm yeah, going to get Yeah, someone it. in chat said he doesn't ever express a political belief. No, yeah, he, say he anchor barely baby even thing? talks to anyone. The anchor baby thing is probably the the closest thing, but even that, you'd have to try and dig a bit to assign it to a particular political ideology, rather than just him being an asshole or, or shouting. Yeah, it, you know. Don't tell which this movie uses to its full extent. Ransom is shown as a bad person, but in, not in a psychotic, evil way. I mean, he's, we're told he's awful again and again and again, and then we meet him. Yeah. I think that was the point of the film. He's like the most likable one at the midway point. Yeah, what I said is that I, I, was I, like, I don't think that was an accident. I like. because it, and then we a, see, then it shows him doing all the stuff at the end, so... But I yeah, guess so, it's fine to have well, yeah, it as yeah. part I mean, of the He, well, fucking, he, he kills yeah, people. He's referred to like, as... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's referred to though as the black sheep of the family, which in in any like in different contexts could just mean like he doesn't adhere to their standards of, of being a businessman or being a mm. successful person. You know, that doesn't necessarily make him bad though. It's it's a contextual thing. Well, yeah, they but say we're like given he constantly in information about him initially. He constantly argues with Harlan. That's their thing. They just shout at each other. Um, everyone finds him annoying yeah. when he turns up, and he's like. Uh... You know, why are you even here? You've been written out of the will, and then the eat shit. Like, we learned he didn't comments. go to the funeral. Yeah, yeah, like, there's, there's just, we keep getting told that he's just like, oh, he's the worst, definitely the worst. And then he's like, so, uh, dad probably cut us all out because we're kind of dickish. Like, like she says that to him, and he's just like, yeah, that's kind of fair. And, and as an audience, you're just like, huh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, hmm. Hmm. He's just rude to everyone. I mean, the he's not rude to Marta. Not to Marta. Not until <laughs> he frames Later. it for murder, of course. But like, yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's like goes... his whole his whole plan. Oh, maybe it's considered rude to do the whole uh, beans and. I'm sorry. Why does it matter that she's eaten food 
Wouldn't it? Wouldn't she? It wouldn't happen anyway. He would know that she's lying, regardless of if she's eating food. She would. She I would guess just... it would be more obvious in the scene. And, and I guess she wouldn't want to throw up. So she would want to doubly not want to do it. I suppose. Which probably just eaves instead of vomits. If her empty. That's, that's what kind of what I meant. Like I still empty. feel like you can trap her as much as he trapped her there, but I don't think he trapped her at all. So. You think this people would be I... using this against her all the time? Oh, a little bit. If this... If this was a trait of mine, I would hope that no one ever learns about it. Right? <laughs> yeah, every time you think lie, you situations... mute your microphone afterward. Yeah, think of any situations you would have to run away from when people ask you questions. Like, evil way. He's just rude to everyone. I mean, in the end, he goes full-on psychopath. But the twist is hidden in so well by the writing and the acting. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the acting... I don't have a psychopath. Um... um... I mean, a little, little bit when he's just like, I'm just going to kill you now. Yeah. Um, yeah, at the end. But it, I guess maybe like a, in a very high functioning sort of way, you know, like he's very calculated and... Well, it's he, entirely vengeance. He's like, well, I'm done. I'm going away for murder, so fuck it. He says in for a penny and for a pound, right? Yeah, if only he would have just never said anything in that entire conversation. Oh, yeah, we can probably get to that. I <laughs> <laughs> um, the actors are bringing their A-game. This cast is stock. Yeah, I think the actors did well. The acting was good. Yeah, the acting uh, was really good. Yeah. They, they all seem the to be having fun with it, so I'll give them that. There wasn't yeah. a lot for them to do. I'll give them uh, yeah. Uh, Daniel Craig had the yeah. most, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Marta yeah. had a lot as well. She was, she was crying in yeah. some scenes, and yeah, I think she did well Vomit too. Vomiting. Anna de Armas and Daniel Craig, thumbs up. Her, Oscars her ahead. Go ahead, do it. Her vom game was a game. She was good at vomiting, very yeah. true. Yeah. Mm. Full of talent. Daniel Craig, Chris Evans, Anna de Armas, Michael Shannon, Don Johnson, Jamie Lee Curtis, and more yep. are all doing great performances. Yeah, those are the actors. A scene that is a great representation of the level of acting, and the level of filmmaking for that matter, okay. is the scene where Walt confronts Marta. He's scary. I'm not sure if it's from the close camera, the intense music. Well, it's so pretty I obvious, get, right? He's talking about when Malt confront. Uh, it's Malt's a red hallway. Malt... They zoom in on his fucking cane slamming into the ground as he slowly approaches her, yeah. and his hand clenching his walking stick as if he's really fucking anxious. And, you know, zooming into his face like... <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I mean, it's the editing. If you frame that in just a wide shot and you dim that red light to just being a normal light, he might come across as entirely fucking normal. Yeah. Well, he'd probably come across as the opposite. Like, he's a, a kind of <laughs> crippled man hobbling towards this w young woman with a stick because he can't walk properly. Yeah. You know, like, I don't think anybody was under any <laughs> confusion with that one. It's like, the film is like, he's evil. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Music or the overmans, but every aspect of this scene contributes to the tension. Over the Overall, top. the acting is just fantastic from every actor. Uh... This leads me to my final conclusion. Oh. I've talked about the brilliance of the opening interrogation scene. Well, you told... <laughs> well, you haven't talked about its brilliance. You you made the claim that it was brilliant and didn't do anything with well, it. Um, it's the thing. It's, it's, it, it, it was brilliant because it introduced the characters while running interrogations. That was why it was brilliant. Yeah, I would say Which it's I don't, I don't think that's enough. We need the pieces. Like, how did they actually do it? Why was it well done? Because that's sort of, that's more of a, yeah. that's, that's like a label for what it was rather than a dis like an explanation of how they did it. Yeah, you're just making the claim that it's brilliant. You haven't shown why it is. If I, when you make a video like this, imagine that what you're saying is you're going against the grain. Whoever's watching it doesn't agree with you. What can you say in order to convince them? If you just say it's brilliant, people who already think that for whatever reason, justified or not, they're going to agree. But you're not going to change any minds by just saying no. that it's good. You, well, I mean, you can tell this video is very um, gushy. Like, they, they yeah, watched the film, they loved it, and they're like, I need to make a video, just, I need to express yeah, myself. Yeah, there's no depth to it. Um, Which is, you know, fine. It's called a video essay, though. I don't understand how this would, how you could even call this an essay format. There's no, um... Yeah, that's awesome. He probably just uh, thinks that a video essay is a, a, a video on YouTube that talks about a movie. <laughs> I tell you, the fucking the video essayists, they've ruined uh, the term. I, the only time I will ever put that in a title is for the irony. <laughs> and I guess while we're on the subject, um, constructive criticism is, 
the criticism that I would give, apart from pronunciating things well, mm -hmm. would be this background of the orange and black film reels moving around. Very distracting. I don't hate um, it. I'm fine with it, I guess. I, I mean, it's... I'm not. I think it's very distracting. Um, cut the cut the background mean. stuff. Cut the the epic music, which is totally inappropriate. <laughs> like for what you're talking about totally. No, it's fucking the, weird. I know this is tricky. Well, I suppose it's not a problem now because the movie's been out forever. Like, use actual footage that's relevant to what you're talking about. Like, if you're talking about a specific scene, then use that fucking scene and put that in there. Well, Give us some audio from it. I think what he's done is he has seen you know, background footage being being used, production well, footage being used. It's and all so that they have behind the scenes stuff, but they don't have... The, that's what you do in a video essay. You show this footage. Oh, do you mean to, like, give the sense that you are digging into it? This is, like, this is beyond the movie now. This is, like, production well, and... Well, I wasn't really saying for the reason, though that is probably a reason why some people do it. I think he has just watched other people do it, and he's just emulating it, and... That's kind of why. It, that's why it's called a video essay, because I, just, I think that in his mind, just a, a YouTube video that's talking about a movie, that's what a video essay is. That's all it has to be. It, I mean, it's such a quick and dirty way of making a video, because one, you know you're not going to have to worry about copyright when it's just like a behind-the-scenes featurette. And two, because it's not relevant to anything specific you're saying, you don't have to edit it or cut it or anything. You can just have it running. Like it, it just one long chunk, and it's not going to oh, yeah. matter. It definitely, it's it's definitely minimal effort. Um, just a quick put it out there. It's almost like just making a video for the sake of it, which you know, I, I think it's a yeah, you know, seventy four subs. You know, very early channel, just starting off. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I still think it makes this, sense this starting that point that is be better than and... a lot of people we've covered. Just saying. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. If if the microphone quality was good and someone was speaking in a very, I guess, m more professional manner, and it was someone who just sounded older, you could absolutely confuse this with what's supposed to be one of the top tier film criticism videos. It copies the style in a lot of aspects, much in the way that Knives Out attempted to emulate, but in a bad way, a mm. genre of film. Mm. There's your there's your through line right there. Whoa. Oh my goodness. The show don't tell principle, the characters, the acting, but I wanted to end with one last point. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I could make, if I was going to make a video specifically about how Ni or Knives Out is a bad example of show don't tell, I would have a lot of, uh, I'd have a lot of ammunition. Yeah, I'd say so. Last point. This movie made me feel something. It left me on the edge of my seat around every corner. It subverted my expectations in an impossible to predict way. Okay, so subverting your expectations in an impossible to predict way. You couldn't have predicted how they didn't do what you expected. I was kind of upset when I found out that Ransom was the one because I was like, yeah. oh. It's like, okay. yeah, it's like we how we discussed and it's like we kept expecting there to be another layer of yeah. you know, reveal on top of it. It's like, uh, you thought it was Ransom, but actually here's something that's going to recontextualize oh. everything and and how Ransom no, jailed himself. Like, he could have made it out in so many different ways, but he kind of just fucked himself over. Yeah, I was really looking forward to how it would all get wrapped up, and if if there was going to be... Because we know, in a, in a meta sense, we all knew that it's Ryan Johnson, and he's trying to do something super tricky, sneaky at the end to, it's going to convince everybody that he's clever. Really kind of disappointed. Um, really kind of hoping for something uh, better instead of a huge number of contrivances and conveniences happen to further along a plot that's supposed to be amazing when we look back at mm. it in retrospect. And its themes were probably prominent the, throughout. Oh, sorry? Yeah, I was just going to say, it's probably the, the author of the video kind of showing their age as well. It's like, you know, if you haven't seen many whodunits, uh, really good ones, well-constructed ones, then this is going to seem awesome to you. Yeah, I guess uh, I'd be curious if he was here, I'd ask him what he has seen. You know, have you watched Poirot? Have you watched Hell? Have you watched Monk? Have you watched Castle? Well, have the fact you that watched... he said it subverts the genre is like, so you you are aware of that, meaning you have seen, you know, the genre? Well, <laughs> it might just be that he heard someone say that and he's repeating it as fact. Hmm. Which I think he's doing because he, I'm, I'm saying he truly does believe it. He's certainly not lying. 
but well, I, mean, I think he might be hard pressed to elaborate on why. Yeah, a little bit. It's in an impossible to. As someone in chat said, kids often speak in absolutes. Which, by the way, not trying to dismiss. I agree. Kids are Sith, and they should be killed. Uh, no. I'm not trying to dismiss entirely just because young. That's not. That's not. You know. That's what we we heard out these these um arguments. We're not done yet. So yeah. Minute, but... I haven't brought up age. Um. A lot of the criticisms that I've made in terms of just repackaging stuff that you hear, we do that with other videos too. And that is something that people do regardless of their age. Can you um, guys have found a better all... Knives Out video to react to? Phil Bento's up next, and he's a he's someone who you you lot like as far as I know, so we'll we'll check that out soon enough. Yeah, let's check it out. Um after this is done. Yeah, it looks like he's wrapping it up. He's he giving us a, it a statement, I suppose. Predict way. And its themes were prominent throughout. The movie uses okay. a fun. Uh, I'm I'm curious if I if he was here and I asked him. So what are the themes of Knives Out? Well, see, I can and answer that question. I feel. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and how does the film are all execute assholes. them well? Uh, the film poses the question of who who deserves the the resources, the people who were there to begin with, the people who stole it, or the people of good heart. Yeah. Um, it's almost obnoxious in its I would execution. Say it's I would pretty say. clear. Yeah. Uh, well, I think this but... is the point. <laughs> Notice that they didn't say that these themes were well executed. They were just like, "Yep, they're prominent." Yeah, throughout. They're prominent. Like, yeah. Well, they, <laughs> they certainly are. <laughs> I would agree. But to 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 hear someone go through the thought process to get them to explain why you believe what you do, um, how did you reach that conclusion? Do you have any references? You know that sort of thing. It helps you to find out why. You think what you think, um, and it's good for you know practice format to tell a simple theme. Just be a good person. Um, so he thinks that the theme is to just be a good person, uh... which is, I mean, I think that's almost broad to the point of almost uselessness. This this some I wouldn't stuff disagree technically. That you could use in the film. So, for example. Uh, the film. One of the first things we get in the in the reveal of who killed him is Harlan's playing Go. He's like, "Why do you always beat me?" And she says, "You're playing to win. I'm playing to make a pretty picture." The idea that she's not she's not got like evil motives. She's just she's just good hearted. And of course, the whole good heart thing gets repeated over and over again. But like I said, I would I wouldn't choose to say that the the the, the theme that they're going for is simply be a good person. Rather, uh, what like should how do we decide like who gets what and shouldn't it be based on the goodness of the heart rather than your standing or your status yeah i feel like if, if you're gonna say well if everyone was just good things would have worked out i'm like sure yeah yeah but and and even then i don't know if i agree with that too much um because you look at like walt what was walt doing that was bad that you know he got kind of crushed by Harlan in a think in a way that's not really all that fair. And what over was he doing? What was he doing mean? He? You know, when you look at people like um Joni, I think, yeah, Joni, you know, obviously she was funneling money away from Harlan to pay for college for her daughter. So it's mean in one sense. She's doing it for probably a good reason. I think well, um wasn't no, that was the whole extra money. Right. It was, was extra money on top of that, right? She, yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah, yeah that's so she's, it. So yeah, she's, she's just a twat. Dick. Like, she was just, you know, using the money on something else, I guess. So we don't even find out what. What was she like? Was it her... She had a company, right? A skincare company or something? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Is, is the idea there that it was thing, like... Using it for that. It was a disaster um, and she was just funneling her money into, into that to try and make it work? If we look at Meg, uh, she obviously does a terrible thing, but that's after the fact, you know, yeah. if she would have, if she was nice from the beginning, as far as we know, um, obviously she's framed from the people who are the right leaning people as being, you know, deluded with her activism and all that sort of thing, but she's not cruel or anything in it. She's not being a bad person because of it, or that's certainly not her motiva motivation. As far as I know, I don't see how Linda's being a bad person or you know, obviously rich cheating on his wife is framed as a bad thing. Um, which I'll go along with, certainly for the movie's sake. Um, we see Ransom being a dick, but in terms of being a bad person, we don't 
really know what's going on arguing there's not enough to go with there yeah there's a lot of kind of up in the air sorts of stuff and i think people think that motivations are established a whole lot worse than they are they think that motivations are established a whole lot better than they actually are um i feel like we'd probably be a lot more lenient if this wasn't a murder mystery if the stakes weren't you know killing a person <laughs> but if the stakes were much and lower than that. Spotting the clues and how everything falls into place is, like, tantamount to the fucking ending, like, by design. It's not where you go, well, well how, does, how does the space magic work for the, 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 the wizard, as, as a lot of people like to try and shove away? I'd be, I'd be like, you really going to pull that with this? Like, why do you care about how the logical falls into place in a whodunit? It's like, I don't know, it seems to be, like, the only point of the whodunit. Uh. Straight to the characters and the audience that Marta won because she's a good person. This movie was masterfully executed and wonderfully written, but that wouldn't matter if the movie. Yeah, I feel like, especially the tidbit at the end where Marta, you know, was good, so she got everything. He's like, well, I think some of the characters were being totally okay, but got, you know, punished for. You know, with not getting an inheritance, um, even though, as far as we know, they weren't immoral, bad people. Yeah. So that bit I'd have content uh, in terms of its execution. If that was a theme that this film was going for, I think I've got ammunition against it based on what happens to the characters. Not as they're presented, but how, or what we are told that they are, but as they are mm -hmm. actually, you know, acting and speaking and being. And I wanted to mention, because we have before, but Harlan seemed celebratory about cutting them off. Like, yeah, fuck him, sort of thing. Yeah, he... Mm. It's weird. He feels like I, he's I, done I, a really good thing, and he says it's 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 all going to be for the best, it's all going to work out, this will bring the family together, which is... um, It's shockingly uh, naive, but... Yeah, yeah. It, 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 yeah I, I think you're, you're exactly right. He's not, uh, he's not malicious about it. I think he just feels like he is ultimately doing a good thing for them. It's tough for them, but uh, it will make them into better characters as a result. Yeah, like what Again, you'd expect, maybe outside of um, Tony Collette, is for him to be like, "Yep, I, uh, I did it." Be like, you did it? It's like, yeah. Uh, I really hope you know this is the right thing to do. That that sort of reaction, rather than I cut them off. You're like, oh, yeah, it's like really happy damn. about. <laughs> yeah. Matter if the movie didn't leave me with something. Nice Out was my favorite movie of the year, in part because of its masterful craft, but more of what it left me with. I knew every character's name and traits after one watch. I connected with them all and saw the themes. I would ask him, what are the traits of, um, really? I mean, I think that'd be interesting. What are, uh, I'm just trying to think what are, I mean, a trait is different than a set of traits that more flesh people out because there's, there's, t I think there's too many characters who are involved? I I don't think that characters we talk about we the go to is the the kid. Um, All right, try. Um, Jacob Thromby. You know, like, give me his traits. Give me Meg's trait. You know uh, these. Yeah. Once you start I, to, I, yeah, go ahead. I I think yeah. If you've got a good sense of a character, then you could probably predict how they would act in in virtually any situation that you could come up with. But with these guys, it's just like, yeah, they're, they're kind of painted in broad strokes because that's all you need from them. They're stock characters in this. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I have I, no idea how Richard or Walt or Joni or how these people would react to given, uh, you know, situations. I don't know yeah. enough about them. All this is why the from... motive needs to be so airtight and big and important and focused on because... A person that we don't know as much about, but who has a really good potential motive to kill somebody. That goes a long way. It really carries them uh, far in terms of the mystery of could they have been the one. Yeah. Yeah, I would, this, I would actually argue yeah, we got um, almost archetypes rather than characters. It's, it's mostly you, you give one word answers to what kind of character they are. They're like, oh, this, one, this his... one's the that one. I love how his benchmark for, for a a well-written movie as well is that I knew the characters' names after watching it. It's like, I didn't. Yeah, I knew <laughs> I all the characters' names in Last Jedi. It doesn't mean it was a good film, though. Yeah, I have a up on on the list here on a second tab. I have the the names of the characters so that I could kind of illustrate, you know, because I have to explain this stuff verbally. 
Uh, I'm good with faces and terrible with names. So getting uh-huh. everyone's name down, that's not something I do a lot. Maybe that's a personal thing, different between people, but names are hard for me. Uh, faces I get. It's not so much. This is a movie people will talk about in years to come, but not in an Avengers Endgame sort of way, but a Ryan Johnson, masterfully crafted, knives out sort of way. <laughs> this movie has no, <laughs> f- <laughs> movie has no <laughs> flaws. Is that way? Flaws, in no. my opinion. Oh, yeah. Wait, That's he said in my uh, opinion. He's fine. Yeah. Safe. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, your opinion has wrong. no flaws, in my mm. opinion. That's actually a great. I like it. It's, it's oh, yeah. has no flaws, uh, in my opinion. Well, <laughs> your opinion's wrong. Well, you can't. But... Opinions can't be wrong. What the fuck? Mm. I, I, I just love like that. that people are going to be talking about knives out years from now. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, the most people have to say <laughs> about this Cheryl fucking movie them. is that it subverted your expectations by having the kill be revealed early. That's that's all people really say about it. Yeah, I of of there is hyperbole, and but I we obviously we all do it, and mm-hmm. yeah, but um, ha, a film has no flaws. One I would avoid. Yeah, uh, yeah. One I would avoid. I mean, the um... film's a masterpiece. Film's amazing. The writing's brilliant. Like eh, those are those are yeah. You know, not as not as bad, but a film has no flaws. Like that's it's that's something... like specific. Well, yeah. it's funny because it's perfect, and I know I can't believe I'm saying this, but I, if you were here, I'd be like, "So, what do you mean by perfect?" And he's like, "No yeah. flaws." I'm like, "What? What do you mean? Do you mean that it was? It's nothing about it you would change because you adore it? Is that what you mean?" I or there that's are what actually like no errors of any kind. Um, because. It's it's a shame that we have to have a conversation about what the word perfect means. You think we'd all be on the same page <laughs> well, because, about yeah, because what perfect means. We're like, oh you can't you don't mean you don't mean that, right? Like what? Well, that's not what you It's mean. like perfect has become synonymous with really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And mm-hmm. that's oh, and uh, we're all probably at eh. fault for using it here and there at some point. It's, it's just interesting because he's like perfect, in my opinion. I think he just means that he really liked it. Not to sound hyperbolic, but this movie is a perfect movie. It's fun, not exciting, to sound, different. You even acknowledge <laughs> not to be hyperbolic, and then you call it perfect. Perfect, yeah. That's, uh... <laughs> mm. All right. mm. We might be operating on just different definitions here, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Fresh, and like I said, perfect. Stop, that's why Knives Out is that. my favorite movie, not only this year, but of all time. So oh, I wow. said Knives Out is my favorite film of all time. Wow. I mean, to be fair, right? <laughs> you need to watch more films, son. That just well, slipped yeah, right I, in there. I don't it? mean to be mean, but that sounds like something a 12 year old would say. Damn. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I would, um, I would yeah, be yeah. like, really, you think it's better than like, and then just rattle off a couple of your standards and just see what just happens? Just ones from that, that year. Yeah, this is the classic 1917. thing. 1917. Like, like, is it yeah, better than Marriage Story for like, characters, really? I don't know. See if you've got like a little cousin or something like that who's like you know ten years old and you're like, what's your favorite movie? And they'll all, they'll pretty much always just name the last film that they saw because it's what they can remember <laughs> and it's just like that's that's they've got such a small frame of reference that's kind of what they go for. <laughs> yeah, that's what we've got here. Like the, the next movie that this person sees that's halfway good will become their next favorite film of all time ever. All right. Let's... Yeah. Um. I mean, I mean, out of curiosity, I would really like to know, you know, what's his top five to get a gauge of like when it's like when people say oh, this works with games really well. When people say, you know, I didn't like this game or I really like this game or this game was good or bad. You kind of you got to get that frame of reference. Uh, that helps you to understand maybe their their way of thinking or maybe it's not a way and it's just just feels. Which isn't unheard of these days, but you know, some people don't give it. Some people just aren't critical. I wonder if he prefers He's it like, to yeah, like Last it. Jedi. Would it be better than Last Jedi? I don't know. Yes. Uh, that doesn't mean it's the best. Not even of this year. It's just my opinion. I haven't seen every single movie ever made, or even. <laughs> you you don't have to see every movie ever made to have a favorite movie. Yeah. Well, it's maybe he's suggesting that had he seen more. It's very likely this wouldn't be his favorite. But for now, it is. Yeah. Well, favorite does imply that of <laughs> what you have seen, mm-hmm. it is. In all the movies this year, but this is my favorite movie of this year, and it's my favorite of all time, too. 
So thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, leave a like down below, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell, and I will see you in the next one. This is Mad Max signing off for now. Peace. Hey. Um. You know, thank you, Mad Max. Just drop it a like, you know, and, and, and push him to see some other films and see how this yeah. channel develops, you know? Like, be like, hey, check out Saving Private Ryan. And then oh, see I if he's like, holy up. shit, that's my favorite movie of all time. And then you go, hey, check out Lord <laughs> of the Rings. Check out dude, Lord of the Rings. Go. Lord the Rings. I don't know. I don't know if I'd have to. I don't know if he's a bit young for Saving Private Ryan, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure I was younger than him when I fucking saw it. <laughs> I thought it was amazing. <laughs> oh, well, oh well, well, some kids are raped when they're 12. I, I, I don't. I, I don't. I would. If I had a kid who was 12, I would not show them Saving that is, Private Ryan. Yeah, that's. Wait, since when did we establish he was 12? I thought that's what he is. I, everyone's been saying he's 12. He sounds 12. Well, 12 is a meme age. Everyone says 12. <laughs> well, they, well, this is a meme video. Nobody can actually be 12. <laughs> no, he might be 12. I'm just saying, like, we, we just fucking... We, we, we just went, oh, it's definitely 12. <laughs> I yeah, I, well, I'm... you know, fair enough. I'll give him some credit, right? If, um, if he's just round about that age, or 13 or 14 or whatever, credit to him, because that's better than what I could have produced at that age. So, fair enough. Oh yeah, I mean it's. It, it, I certainly don't want to get him to quit. I just. I. I would say probably in terms of like. Um, in terms of making videos no, to be constructive, I would say you know stuff that isn't you know the visual stuff that's easy to fix. You just don't do it. But for making a video and scripting that sort of thing, general rule. Imagine you're really, actually, truly, trying to convince somebody who thinks differently than you. Somebody comes in and says, nah, Knives Out was crap, it was horrible, it was terrible, all the characters are bad, you know, it's a real stinker. What would you tell them to convince them that it was good? What, would, what scenes would you show? What examples would you give? Um, not to be, uh, in a non-deceptive way, what visuals would you pair with what you're saying? That would be a good, just rule of thumb, carrying it forward. Um, I don't see showing a violent movie to a young person as tantamount to fucking rape, by the way. No, I, I, that's not what I meant by that. Sorry, that that's, that's not what I meant by that. Um... Time to rape you with my favorite movie. Um, Saving Private Ryan came out in 98, so I wouldn't have seen it when it came out, but I remember being shown it in school. Would have been around... Really? Yeah, yeah, it was history class. In uh... high school, I'm guessing? It was, I want to say year eight. It was definitely, I think it was after year seven, but it was still super early because uh, the teacher I was showing it by left really early in that school. Um, I'm trying to think how old for, would I be? For unrelated I reasons. I think I, I think I would have been 14, so. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty yeah, sure I saw well, it when it came out. Remember. This is the thing, yeah, um, it... most, a lot of the time, what was what was the age rating for the same program? Was it 15 or 18? I think it was. I eight think it was rated R. Honest. How do I find this? <laughs> rating is rated. Because rated. there's quite there's quite a few fucks in there as well, isn't there? So I mean, it's well, pretty people violent. Being blown to pieces. Oh, it was fifteen. Having limbs oh. blown out of his stuff. Um, saving private. Yeah, it's rated R, and I think R is seventeen here. Uh, ooh, it was fifteen over here, apparently, which. Kind of surprises really? me in a way. Oh, yeah, well, that's saying, that sounds kind of low. Well, it might be the it could be just older sensibilities. I feel like uh, <laughs> it might be. It might be. Um, it's it's really hard to eyeball it in terms of like what exactly people are allowed to see at what ages. The safe way is just once you hit eighteen, you can see it all. I guess. <laughs> I, guess I, mean, like the, I, but, I, um, I suppose on on account of there being no like sexual scenes in it, then I suppose that brings it down a notch for its rating. Well. I would, I think that, I feel like the, the visceral, very gory nature of Saving Private Ryan would be processed, I think it'd be more difficult for someone to process that than a, a movie's version of a sex scene. Again, this could be a, a culture thing too, because it's always like this. This is element of prudishness for for nudity, but you can watch people's heads get exploded, and that's fine. It's it's like really <laughs> yeah. interesting. Um, but you are right. Saving Private Ryan's not just like hostile, where it's just violence. It's also actually like traumatizing. It's not yeah like mentally. It's supposed to 
be quite stressful to uh to yeah watch. like i would i would be totally okay with um like letting a a a, a, a hypothetical 12 year old son of mine play like killing floor 2 because it has a very fantasy you know a fantastical oh. unreal aspect to it um well, yeah, because because the interesting mistake, thing, but to avoid ratings, like if you have your aliens getting shot in the head and then they explode and green goes everywhere, like that automatically goes way lower than actual blood or just red. Like I know that's the thing about age ratings, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, um, I was going to say, uh, metal is it not like really strict in Germany, uh, particularly uh, for video games and stuff? Like you're very like restricted on the gore you can show there. If it I'm depends, not mistaken. really. It's. Uh... The, the the most recent one I can think of is Wolfenstein, but that's mostly because of the all the swastikas. They're like really really bitchy about this over here, because <laughs> video games are considered art, so it doesn't count for them. So they have to censor it. So you'd like it's weird shit on the walls instead of swastikas and whatever. What's going yeah, into it? But, because... but, but but still, you're you're right. There's like a bunch of games, uh, Wolfenstein included. Uh, uh, yeah, I like. I wouldn't let no, no blood or gore. There's like a they they sell a low violence version on Steam, for example. Mm. At least they they used to. I don't know if that's still there, but I don't know. Yeah, I think that it's it's the way that it's depicted. Um, yeah, it's so really complicated for... to be sure. Because um, another thing that happens with kids is some in this innocuous or normal, and then suddenly they like have nightmares about it for the rest of their life, and you're like, why though? It's like, that thing creeped me out. And you see it, you're like, oh, I guess it is kind of creepy. When it's supposed to be cuddly or something. Um, how things fuck with a person individually is really hard to, like, call. Similar, you know, someone mentioned a Serbian film. Yeah, I wouldn't, like, no one should watch that. <laughs> I don't, if anybody, like, there's no age you reach from, like, yeah, Serbian, it's like, nah, just don't, just don't watch it, ever. There's no, you're right. Not safe oh, for I'm life seeing, is how I describe seeing, that movie. I'm seeing in chat that people are saying apparently it's allowed now, so... That's yeah. that's neat, I guess. What's allowed now? Apparently, putting swastikas in video games. Oh, that's good. So we're wait, back uh, to what it should be. Yes, that's good. Actually, let me check now. Is there a normal version of Wolfenstein on there? Uh, What's the Serbian film you were talking about? Oh, you don't want to know. It's literally called. Yeah, I think a it's Serbian called a film. Serbian film, and it's just like fucking. I've only read the synopsis of it, and I can even barely remember what I read. It's uh, it's a ride, a nasty, nasty ride, fun for the whole family, as described in chat. No, no. Well, just like torture porn or, um, it's like weird murder, necrophilia, torture. The porn it seems stuff. the, the really idea strange. behind the film is to be as disgusting as possible, or at least close to it. Uh, okay. Um, well, I just checked. Apparently, there's uh, the the normal versions of uh, Wolfenstein here. So, yeah, you did yeah, it, Germany. That's, that's neat. Yeah, remember uh, when I was first uh, over at your smaller, uh, when I was staying at Al's place, and <laughs> I wanted to buy a Wolf Wolfenstein. It's like, oh, it's low, yeah. low violence. He was like, oh, I buy it for you, and I just gifted it to you, and it didn't work. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> so yeah. How old does someone have to be before you can show them Knives Out? Uh, not knives twelve. Out, <laughs> just be like, just don't. <laughs> just go, yeah. So, yeah, I, I would yeah. be fine with anybody watching Knives Out. They probably get, I mean, someone who's really young probably get bored of it and leave. They'll get subverted. What? So, They'll yeah, subverted. interestingly, by the way, what if Knives Out was your first movie? Like your first ever movie? Yep, it was your first movie. Huh. Huh. Could That's be your well. last, I suppose. Because it's something Fringy brings up every once in a while, because he gets frustrated mm -hmm. when films get rewarded for subverting genre tropes or subverting genre when he's just sitting there like, but what if what if they've never I mean, watched a movie before? The th well, the thing is, if if you've got nothing to compare it to, yeah, it's going to seem fantastic because yeah. you've seen stuff or is it? happen on screen. What if you, you watched it and you're just like, well, that didn't make sense. <laughs> well, if, I mean, well, if you're not awesome. familiar, if you're, yeah. you're, you're totally unfamiliar with the concept of who done it. And you just kind of see this as a surface level movie, you would probably come away like, "Oh wow, wasn't that clever?" The, there was things that happened, and like it got there was reveals and stuff like came out that I wasn't expecting, and there was like clever ways of getting around all this stuff that's set up in the beginning. 
Wasn't that I smart? Mean, but like, if you've seen any other movies of this kind, you're like, yeah, it's dumb and it's contrived and silly. I mean, it's also it's hard to say because people just develop differently. Like some of yeah. them uh, would like would, would say, oh, she vomits when she lies. That's stupid. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that's a neat idea. Imagine there was. Like, yeah, I've had a lot of really young people who just accept it. They're Imagine like, oh, like huh. someone who's brand new to film and they see that, they're like, oh, is that like what is that what we do in films? We have like mm -hmm. crazy things. And you're like, no, well, hmm. <laughs> it's not what you do, but you can do it. So anyway, our next uh, candidate <clears throat> is the wonderful Phil Mento, who. Uh, All right. Like I said, we've been asked to either bring on or cover by different people at different times. His argument is going to be that the ni Knives Out worked where The Last Jedi failed. Here we go. Well, before we this start, uh, let me use the loot real quick. Yeah. Okay, yeah, go for it. <laughs> be right back. Yeah, I, um, I, I've talked about this before, but like, violent stuff didn't quite get to me ever when I was super young. It was always uh, psychological horror. That was where I was like freaked out and um yeah as a parent then you'd be like ah so you can show them violent stuff just none that's like super spooky and then you're like no actually uh some kids really do get freaked the fuck out by violence and so it's just a sort yeah. of ballpark thing where it's like eh, don't show people who are this age this stuff don't show people this age this stuff i think it, it kind of depends on the context of it like if it's violence in a horror setting then yeah fair enough like when i think back to being a kid we were all watching these like big bombastic movies from the 80s like oh like rambo and shit yeah and you know predator and all that sort of stuff like and die hard and that's that's yeah. violent but it's not done in a, a disturbing way it's just um i mean kind the, of... <clears throat> the skinned people in in predator and predator 2 i remember even being like yeah. damn <laughs> yeah that's part of the fun <laughs> <laughs> While maybe violence in like a boxing movie, like really harsh violence, but still, if if it's boxing, it's kind of just contextualized in a way that's just not so bad at all. You want to hear like a little, uh, a fun little uh, Metal Commander lore? Okay. Uh, there was one thing I was super afraid of as a kid. Uh, I used to play uh, video games with my dad back in the day. Uh -huh. uh, or I watched him, and he was playing Ocarina of Time, and there's the the... Uh, the scene right after you get adult or teen link or whatever, and there's all those zombies in the town row. Those fucking things terrified me as a kid. <laughs> I had to turn away. It's like, but uh, tell me when you when you went through. I uh, that I could look again. But man, those fuckers terrified me. I had nightmares of those things. Yeah, I mean the fucking the adventure yeah, before the. Return to Oz, the wheelers, and the witch who replaced her heads. <laughs> that shit. Oof. So many people get freaked out by the wheelers. They're just... They're creepy. I actually... I do want to rewatch that movie just to figure out how it's being done. Because I don't think they realized they'd be that creepy when they made them. But, like, they yeah. freak the fuck out of so many kids. Is it... Is that it that movie that is, is just a complete... <laughs> tone shift from the original Wizard of Oz, yes. where it's like, Dorothy gets considered, Ill, like, insane and she gets sent off for electroshock therapy. <laughs> like, yeah. What the fuck? I don't know if I've ever seen that one. Spooky-ass movie. Sure. And there's lots of moments where, like, you're just blatantly told as the viewer, like, these people are either dead or about to die and they're probably not gonna <laughs> make it. And you're like, oh. Okay. Damn. Yay. <laughs> Wizards. <laughs> But uh, it was an edgy movie. Rugsy Rugs, you big. Oh. It's a nor. Yeah, um, the, the... The one that... Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, the one that always stuck in my head was a movie called Crawl. It was like a fantasy movie from like way back in the 80s. And there's, there's a scene where a guy gets caught in a door that's slowly closing. Um, and he, he manages to like hold it open long enough to like let the rest of the group through and then it just like slowly crushes him to death and I always, I always remember watching that like that just seems like a really horrible way to go right. yeah um, which kind of reminds me of Final Destination 2 I think someone is getting is stuck in an elevator like their head part and it just slams up and down and it just takes it off I believe also Oh, I remember like, the the predator in Predator Two, the net that just keeps 
retracting until you theoretically will cut them into squares of meat. It um, just cubed you, yeah. Yeah, like, I remember being freaked out by, like, the the experience of that. Like, imagine the net is just getting tighter and tighter and tighter, and you just, you just feel your body parts starting to separate. It's just like, whoa. And AVP had it, right? But AVP was, you know, had to be friendly to younger audiences. <laughs> and so I actually thought they did this, like, specifically for me, but they have the net go on the guy, and it starts to close, and everyone's panicking, and he's like, and, like, blood starts to appear in cuts. But then the predator kills him with a spear. Like, he just dies. Yeah. And, and they have a shot to show that, oh, he's dead. It's fine. I always thought that they were like, he's not suffering. He's straight up dead. It's fine. <laughs> it's like, okay, I guess. <laughs> I'll get over that. It's yeah, better I to go that way. I want to see someone get cubed. <laughs> well, you, well, funnily enough, yeah. that actor who almost got cubed there was actually the one in Resident Evil 1 who did get cubed by the lasers in the hallway. The same guy. Uh, so. Just dependable commander man. <laughs> he always shows up in roles like that. He's got he's got a great voice. He does, yeah. It's very deep. Yeah, and he's very uh, authoritative. AVP. He's good shit. I was I always remember being yeah, sad that he died yeah, in a uh, in AVP and in Resident Evil. Well, I, I loved his his you know his death in Resident Evil because he does all this cool stuff to avoid all these various lasers that come at him, and you're like, oh wow, this guy's doing well, and then it just forms a net thing that just like yeah, you know, he, dices him. <laughs> he, he gives it a look where he's like, oh fuck off. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, fuck. I'm done. <laughs> I'm just finished. <laughs> uh, people are saying Colin Salmon is it? That's his name. It could be. I'm not Colin sure. Salmon. Could well be. Know. Sounds fishy. Mm. So, ah, are we ready? I am so ready for Filmento. I Yay. guess I'm ready. Yeah. This video is brought to you by a mysterious, super hot mobile game. Stay tuned until oh. the end to solve the mystery of what it is in order to win a super duper hell elite. Pr so guys. Modern day mobile game ad. What could it be? <laughs> it's like, uh, well, what, what's clues. that game that these kids are playing? Uh, Pokemon Go? Yes, it. Pokemon Go to They're the playing, polls. They're uh, playing Candy Crush. That's it. Raid Shadow Crush. Price. <laughs> Memorial pretty soon. Are you. Are you alright? This all feels like one. Like something he'd write. Last Jedi fixed. Uh, what? What? Well, I mean, even if, even if it did what the Last Jedi didn't, the Last Jedi's still broken. <laughs> Just <laughs> putting it out there. Knives Out is the newest wonky murder mystery movie from the now notorious Last wonky? Jedi writer director Ryan Johnson. Maybe he means wonky in like an endearing way, like it's uh oh we got the reveal so early. Yeah, yeah. maybe. That's like, wonky like is. Something that's broken and doesn't well, yeah, work definitely properly. negative connotations, but I mean, yeah, it's just strange. <clears throat> hmm. Apparently, Johnson began writing this film right after episode 8 to get his attention away from the crowds of displeased Star Wars fans hammering him on Twitter. And that I mean, you should have made a better movie. I mean, he fucked with <laughs> Star Wars and he would they made the most divisive, horrible Star Wars movie that that there was responsible for hundreds of millions of dollars lost for a company. Yeah, I, yeah very close proximity to his previous film is very much on show here. Because even though Knives Out on the surface is a totally different cinematic beast than The Last Jedi in terms of budget and tone and whatnot, when it comes to the way it is built narratively, these two films are very similar. The narrative right. elements Johnson relied most on in episode 8, those are the exact same narrative elements he relies most on in Knives Out. And the reason this- Okay, so character inconsistency, insane contrivance, uh... <laughs> Message is not aligning with what I will, will building being Ooh. fucking obliterated. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. The reason this should be a very bad thing for Knives Out is because the said narrative elements were the biggest weaknesses of episode 8 that made it so displeasing to many. Now, I know that at this point, there's pretty much an infinite amount. I mean, yeah, I would say that in for six, seven, eight, yeah, yeah. Hmm of individual problems people have stated to have with The Last Jedi. But I'd say most of those individual problems don't really concern it as a movie, but instead specifically as a Star Wars movie. You might not like no. the way Leia... No. If this wasn't a Star Wars movie, that would alleviate some issues. Yeah, because some issues you would have like the do. Luke stuff and backstories for characters. That would make it technically better because it would remove the framework that makes for errors. 
Yeah, removing but all of the history. But it would still be really shitty. I mean, the Hyperspace Kamikaze improves, but it's still like, wait, this is something they can do? It's still oh, like, yeah, okay. why didn't they do this from the beginning? Even within the framework of this movie, Yeah. why didn't just one of the bombers just be like, oh yeah, we're just going to send a bomber that's going to hyperspace into the... The slow chase movie. plan, none of that makes sense. It doesn't need any other movie to not make sense. Yeah, yeah. it's still totally nonsensical. It's just a little bit less insulting because it wouldn't have the characters that are beloved to just take a dump all over. I'm trying to think of what, what the other bigger elements, because obviously Luke is no longer a problem. He might be, depending on what they refer to him as in other parts of this movie, but yeah, again, if he's just he's just this guy on an island, really. Well, the, the, yeah, was... um, the Codebreaker thing would be another oh, yeah, you yeah. Know, ridiculous problem with your... Well, not a problem, but just like a really shitty piece of writing. The fact that the, the entire raid on the Supremacy got discovered by Do a you... fucking droid that just spotted them. Do you remember when people were, like, I don't know if you, you encountered this, but people initially when the film came out were like, You fools! You're saying it's convenient they bumped into DJ in the, in the, in the lock thing, but he was a fucking First Order mole. And it's like... No, he wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't. And even if he was, like, what? How did... What? He was, he was hoping that they would no, not only get imprisoned for a parking violation, but the same cell as him? <laughs> like, what? what? No, like, the issue is that they found someone in the cell that they were placed in who is a a replacement for the person that they happen to be looking for for a very very unique reason yeah it's it's absurd it's kind of like when it happened when you first see the movie you're like wait what like the, the perfect person they need is in the cell with them and has the ability to get out of the cell and he's not asking for anything in return yet interesting yeah he's willing to work Toward the potential reward is insane. And it's like, oh, like, I'll only huh. work if you give me a necklace. And Finn's like, no. And it's like, Finn! <laughs> give him the <laughs> fucking necklace, Jesus Christ. Dude. Get another one. He's using the force, but that's just called exploring the lore. You might not like the way Luke is different from his younger self, but that's just called character development. Criticism uh, like Wait a minute, uh, sorry. How is, how is this being framed right now? I need to roll him back. I don't know if this is the points he's making or if he's saying these are defenses people make. Pretty much an yeah. infinite amount of individual problems people have stated to have with The Last Jedi. But I'd say most of those individual problems don't really concern it as a movie, but instead specifically as a Star Wars movie. You might not like the way Leia is using the Force, but that's just called exploring the lore. You might not like the way... It's a, so he's saying that if you didn't like the way <clears throat> Leia used the Force, the film is exploring the lore of the Force. I, I, honestly, I'm not entirely sure if, if he's making that argument or not. Yeah. No, I, I think that I think, think the way he's framed this, these are his rebuttals to those. Yeah, criticisms. that's what I think. Okay. At least that's what I'm getting from this. Because he's saying, different. yeah, he's saying like all of these criticisms are in the context of it being a Star Wars movie. Like whereas he, if you take that element out, he's like, eh, they're perfectly fine if you just see it as a standalone film that's unrelated to anything else. As if to say, the hyperspace kamikaze without all the other films is simply us, you know, going like, oh hey, that's how that works. Okay. But that's, like I said, that's not though. That, that still presents issues in its own film. Because now we're just like, wait, what? Why, why couldn't, wait, what's, what's the limits here? Can we get like a little X-Wing to fucking pilot their way through? Like just pierce a bullet hole sized thing even through the Radis? Could they have done that with a TIE fighter? And then you get those fucking wonderful counters where they're like, why would Hux want to waste any resources? Why would he want to endanger his men? <laughs> it's just like, oh god, it's, it's hundreds of thousands of men. <laughs> to stop the only thing that's ever going to get in the way of the First Order, because Hux was always so caring, you know? Well, didn't we discuss this once, and we, we had to do some research and find out what the, the crew complement of the Supremacy oh. was, and it was like 2.2 million people. Yeah, it was basically 2.2 million. <laughs> it's like, you're just into ridiculous numbers, just, just make stuff up at that point. Like, no, why would you even don't care train about individual soldiers people? From, you don't so train soldiers from childhood and have a whole armada of fighter ships to use them in battles to fight people. Look, look at this, this is interesting. Uh, Phil Mento doesn't like TLJ, stop portraying him like he does. He's saying that this is the, if this is the original film, this applies. Yeah, so we've actually countered yeah, both of those arguments. We're trying to figure well, out... First yeah, of all, like we're not presenting as though he likes TLJ, where'd you get that from? Yeah. Did anyone actually hear say, oh, he likes TLJ? I thought uh, that he was presenting these as the def as his we, defense of those aspects of TLJ. 
at first because I, I didn't yeah, know. Def- it wasn't well, exactly something you can, I was convinced of. You can defend uh, aspects of a film while concluding it failed or is bad, which, by the way, he said that Knives Out fixes The Last Jedi, so why would he assume it's, it's, bro- it's working, you know? I'm just, it's just, we're trying to, it's a very yeah. odd formatting here, and I don't agree that uh, if you remove Star Wars as a history, um, that the film is is now like like these these aren't problems. It's like well no, there's still problems within its own narrative. From his younger self, but that's just called character development. Criticisms like these are totally valid, but they aren't really objective, universal problems that would apply to other original movies. The true core narrative problems. Are- well, I think. It's almost wondering why you're making the distinction here and what point it raises. I so... suppose maybe he's going the direction of, you see, Ryan, when given an original property, can actually make something good just because when he takes over from a franchise, he fucks it up because he wants to do his own thing. I'm assuming that's where he's going. Yeah, and if it is, then that's a huge um, problem with Ryan Johnson in terms of his talent. Well, I was going to say, I, I don't, I feel like, like if we actually said, like, ah, oh, see, that's, that's the kind of writer he is. He just needs to be given original stuff. I'd be like, oh, well, that's a place he can improve then. Since when was it yeah. established that you're the kind, like, writers either, they're good franchise writers or they're good original writers? Like, why can't, why can't he work on that? I was like, they're only good if you put them in these ideal set of circumstances. And I'm like, yeah, but isn't everyone? Hmm. Of The Last Jedi, I'd say, can be boiled down to just three main categories. <laughs> Which is that's probably subverting expectations, I guess. I, I guess, but we saw it happen before it happened. We we saw it getting prepared before it happened. So I mean, like in I guess in a in a larger scale thing, yeah, I didn't think that there was any way <laughs> that they would do that because that Wait, would be really dumb for them to throw away this potentially interesting new villain. Well, I'm sure yeah, we, we even talked about that. um the potential that Snoke could come back. Right, we were like we weren't entirely convinced that they got rid of Snoke. Uh, they did. <laughs> like, they committed yeah, to that. Thing. So I, my expectations were subverted, and if that's the visual uh, that he wanted to use for that, that's yeah. Yeah, enough. I mean, I didn't think they'd make an incredibly dumb decision. They decided to. Mm-hmm. My expectations were subverted. My standards were too high. High over. It. Oh, and um, if he fancies it, wait for his argument. So the reason I paused is because. He played a decent chunk of clip, and I'm a little bit concerned, that's yeah. all. And, and also, we're trying to be like, when he played the clip, what did he mean by it? Like, that was the subverting expectation thing about Snoke. All right. Yeah, so you didn't even... Uh, so I'm gonna, so, so number two, uh, what, so Canto by Waste of Time? Or Goes Nowhere? Um, is this guess. about Finn specifically? Well, I suppose we'll find out. There's no way that he's not going to explain the three. It's just, it's just interesting to, to I guess, yeah, to kind of <laughs> to yeah, figure yeah, out yeah, what what might be it. implied by the three because they got to be categorically different, right? <clears throat> oh yes, this place is great. See you around, kid. I don't know what this one would be. So when he says "see you around, kid," he didn't though. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Riley. <laughs> of course, it's, it's a one. It's a cool one-liner, but not well. It's an emotional one-liner. It's like oh. Han is speaking through him. Okay, maybe oh, he okay. did. You don't know. His ghost popped up. And he's like, All right, All right. Well, man. I guess if there is an episode ten, God forbid, that takes place after episode nine in this, you know, in this local uni- presentation of the Star Wars universe. I guess Kylo gets to be a force ghost now. Yeah, the, yeah, that he saw him. He's so, in force ghosts, you know, Palooza, where they all hang out. Uh, ghost Palooza. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I guess they have a lot to talk about. Just a big cantina in the sky. Yeah, they're all just like, hey, and, and Kylo's like, ooh, is this this is a bit awkward, isn't it? It's like, ah, it's all right. I, Everyone's I, like, I, how the fuck did you get here? Like, I, <laughs> like I, at least Vader killed, you know, the Emperor. Well. Inconvenience the emperor, but you like yeah, they're, they're what all, you fucking do? They're all confused how he redeemed himself, and then he explains. He goes, "Oh, I saved Ray," and again, no, I jumped on a chain. <laughs> That's not. That doesn't explain it. The subversion oh. of expectations, hey. the multiple points of view, and the oh. payoffs. Oh, Is multiple the... points of view. I wouldn't have guessed <sighs> that. I would have huh. been like, the massive waste of time. Well, you also yeah, called yeah, the yeah. Luke bit uh, the payoffs. It's like you could call the Snoke. 
death and payoff, but, you know, alright. No. Yeah. The core narrative elements are the kryptonite of Star Wars The Last Jedi. I, honestly, I would, I would actually just, it would boil all of it down to inconsistencies. You really can. All of these can be traced back. Like, why is Snoke dying a problem? It's not because we didn't see it coming that, that we hate subversion or anything. It's just like, it doesn't make any fucking sense that he was, like, outplayed by Kylo fucking Red. Uh, mm. the Canto Bite thing, we've already been over how nonsensical Canto Bite is. And then, of course, Luke choosing yeah. to Describing not show up himself to, yeah. kind of, to, to create. There's, you know, you can, you can definitely go on the, um, the foundational level, but I suppose you could call them subcategories. It's fine. Maybe. I wouldn't describe the last one as a payoff. More of, like, you get home from work and you discover <laughs> that your apartment's been robbed while you're away. That's and, a payoff, yeah. kind of. Yeah. Well, it is in the sense that something happened. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, if we're going, it's like, writing thing. writing style thing, I, I would agree with him that that's a... Uh, that is... Payoffs are usually just the, the, the final events that all the story was leading to, right? There's lots of different ones. Character deaths are one of the most common ones. It's like, oh, we all came for the... It doesn't have to be, like, a positive thing. Like, like that you enjoyed it or anything. Jedi. And seeing as Knives Out was written right after The Last Jedi in reliance of these same core narrative elements, it was very likely that they would become its kryptonite as well. And yet, no. Unlike last time huh. here, each of those elements functions just great. Uh, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> you're showing, like, of all the scenes to show, you're showing the fact that this person that, not LeBlanc, just Blanc, uh, in the car, he knows that she's involved with the murder, potentially the murderer. She's with the person, she's with someone else in the family who was there that night when he was killed, supposedly. They are fleeing, actively fleeing from the police after showing up, coincidentally, at a place where evidence was that was burned down in Another an arson. Another crime scene. Yeah, uh, and she then has to go with um, Daniel Craig and he's in his car and just lets her wander off to run an errand after all of this happens and he's in there watch, listening to his music. Like, all of this is just Yeah, there's, there's not a part horrible. of this that I don't think isn't retarded. It's, isn't it, like, very, very bad to, to run away from the police? Like, yes, it's very yeah. bad. That's instant arrest. <laughs> and she had no repercussions at the end. Well, like, yeah, but, fleeing from the police is a huge no-no. And then it's just like, yeah. oh, can you give me a ride? Sure. Oh, can I pick something up? Yeah, sure. I'll just, just, just... Uh, yeah. Because, I mean, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but even just saying, like, oh, well, I was kind of coerced into driving, like, that's not enough for them to just be like, oh, well, it's good enough well, for us, then yeah, off you go. We, we need they to still do... take you in. Yeah, like, he's not it's even felony, curious how it happened. It's like, why are you two together? Well, where did you come from? Why were you at the the fucking place? He, he's He's happy to imagine that Ransom forced her to drive him everywhere. Like, what the fuck? Why wouldn't Ransom just drive? Well, because... <laughs> like, why wouldn't he assume Ransom would just... Like, why, why would he be like, oh, of course, Ransom made you drive? Like, wh why? Why, yeah, why wouldn't he do it? And why did you flee anyway? Because I think that fleeing from the police in a vehicle, not on foot, because those are different things, uh, I think that's a felony. That's a big deal. When the police are on a chase and you're actively running away from them, that's a, that's a big no-no. That should have some serious repercussions. Hmm. Like that they might be the biggest reason behind this film being such a smart, exhilarating ride deserving of an Oscar Oh, no. Uh -oh. Yeah, it did get nominated for Best Screenplay. That is... Uh, uh yeah. no. Oh, no. Nomination. And it's like, what the hell happened? How did Ryan Johnson repeat what he did with The Last Jedi, but suddenly in a way that all the previous problems have vanished? But okay, so this is the thing. If I were to rewrite that statement, I'd be like, how is it that Ryan managed to repeat all the mistakes he did and fail just as badly? It's amazing. <laughs> You'd think you would have learned something. How does a man avoid learning so much? <laughs> Well, let's try to figure that out. Let's All go right. through each of these narrative elements to see why they were problems in The Last Jedi, and then see how Johnson learned his lesson and changed them up All to right, repair let's them. Let's see okay. how to write The Last Jedi, but in a way that's less displeasing and more positively we get it. incredible. Yeah. Is that the sound from Bioshock? I don't know. Um, I don't... It's the sound of activating so. an audio thing, right? But without any of the voice coming up. Yeah, I, I could have sworn that's what it I is. I don't think so. It's similar, but I don't think it's the one. Hey, chat, what is the sound effect? 
uh, it's probably going to be like a record scratch. Is oh, if it's like a generic sound, then uh, it ignore probably me. is. Yeah, like I could have just be a stock clip. I would have thought. But... Like, my Bioshock things are tingling. Don't said I think so. Like yes, it is. It is Mola. No, it's not exactly like that. The sound yeah, of a reel I... rolling. Yeah, Film projector. Yeah. Does, yeah, I mean, I th it could just be that it sounds like it because they're kind of. It does, yeah. yeah. I'm not. I don't think it is exactly, but it does sound like it. Perhaps the most notorious narrative aspect of episode 8 is its unrelenting tendency to subvert expectations. But despite this term now having a negative connotation, the subversions Thanks in of who? themselves are... <laughs> I just... yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't disagree with this. Like, it's clear, yeah. it's clear the goal was to be like, how do I make a story that surprises the ever-loving fuck out of people? aren't actually the issue. The issue is that the subversions don't carry any fundamental long-term effects that would elevate the story. When Finn and Rose never meet the Codebreaker, it is surprising, but it ultimately changes nothing, because they instead meet this other Codebreaker who has the exact same required abilities, and so they go through the exact same journey they could have gone through with the original code. I mean, I agree that that is a funny thing to think about, right? Like, why did you arrest yeah. them just to get them to the exact same position they would have been in anyway? Yeah, it's like, why bother? Um... I, so, the subversion element there is the fact that they get arrested, I guess he's saying, but the subversion doesn't matter because they end up doing the exact same thing anyway. So, well, I guess mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, and, and then it gets into the aspect of why did they just plant their speeder there on the beach like why not a parking lot right next to the casino and i'm not one to criticize alien customs but do you really electrocute and capture people who've got a parking violation yeah yeah like wouldn't you ask them to just you give them a fine and then ask them to move the ship it's like damn like, hey come move your speeder off the well, beach man I was like, yeah, what I mean, are you for all they know they might have crash landed there well it's just you know it like, might have been entirely the, like not their choice so the like... answer to this is that's how it works there it's like okay <laughs> <laughs> All right. What a nice planet. It's a very high profile planet, you see. No parking wrong. Breaker. When Kylo Ren cuts Snoke in half, it is surprising, but instead of raising the stakes and obstacles, it just lowers them, because now we no longer have a single big bad villain to fear and struggle against. So someone who's defending this film would probably say that's Kylo, but then they would be fucked up by the Rise of Skywalker because he, well, not in the first half. He's, he is the villain, mm. but also Palpatine. It's it's all a mess. Um, it is a tangled Ky Kylo is a mess of a character throughout the, the entire trilogy. He's been pulled along by all different goals by different people. He's he's barely a character at that point. He's just a series of like they want these certain events to happen. Mash a mask. No, I want my mask back. Only this kind of bad guy who has already been established to be nowhere near as powerful. All in all, the subversions in The Last Jedi don't work because they're either just empty visual changes there purely for the sake of being there, or they just make things easier for our heroes, which is I mean, a big okay. no -no. convenient um, against all reason. Again, I would want to start with just they're fucking nonsensical. Yeah. But, I mean, I, mean, I don't so why would disagree with the broader universe? point, you know? I guess I'm more curious to see how he says that Knives Out does it right. Yeah, you know? that's what I'm waiting for. Compare these to Knives Out, where the subversions are not only surprising, but they also always elevate and escalate the material to whole new levels. There's a big bunch okay. of great twists and turns in this movie, but what I want to highlight are the main ones concerning our nurse hero, Marda. The first big subversion comes when we suddenly hero? find out that Marda is the one who mm. accidentally killed our mysteriously killed... I think he's using that as a stand-in for protagonists. I, I doubt he yeah, maybe. means... Like she's, I don't know. <laughs> Millionaire Harlan, as well as the obstacles that brings. Your mom is still undocumented, and if this is your fault, she'll be found out and at best deported, and your family will be broken. We're not gonna. Oh my goodness! Wow, the that's the result of coming here illegally and having. Him. Can you believe it? Who would have seen this? Is that something that they would find out when prosecuting her? I guess they would. Probably. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, they would need her history. Security cameras pull off the road before the carved elephant. Wait, was it before or after? Take the side yard path through the little gate. And for God's sake, don't make any noise. <laughs> First of all, this turn is pretty great in of itself, because it takes this old genre of who done it and flips it on its head to keep things fresh, which is usually she a done it? That's not a 
that's not doesn't flip anything. Whenever no one also, knows she didn't do it, it thinking it couldn't be a woman. I guess. Uh, no, I, I think yeah. It's like okay. So he's trying to say right. It it flips your expectations because you know who killed Harlan ultimately because she killed him whether it was accidental or not. But then it wasn't intentional we knew that someone tampered with her gear to to switch the the medicines around we know someone hid the antidote to it so there is someone else behind this that we don't well, we, know who or why they well, did the it so it doesn't change we anything. don't we don't actually well, at know the beginning we don't know yeah at the beginning all we we as the audience we don't know that the vials had been swapped we just think that she made a mistake yeah um but there is the well. There's the aspect of the antidote suddenly going missing, well, which she fact... specifically says many times, like it should be here. I don't understand why I can't find it. I said, um, the, the 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 fact that we were half an hour in and they showed us how it all went down. I was like, so there's obviously going to be more context. Like there's there's more. Yeah. To so this. there's still something that needs to be solved here. Yeah. Is you know is the detective going to find out about her? Um. If so, then what's the process for him doing that? I mean, there's still enough to string us along to get us to watch and stuff. Hmm. Yes, I guess that's the point. It's like it, it, it introduces this subversion of expectations, but again, functionally, it doesn't change the, the plot. You still have yeah. to understand who's behind the entire thing. So it's it's kind of the exact same mistake as The Last Jedi has made. It's, it's a revelation, it's, still, it's a subversion, but it doesn't change anything. It's still a. You still have a detective with a list of who's going through a list of suspects trying to get to the bottom of a mystery. We know the end, but. The process still goes through as it would anyway. Well, I think the intention... So in terms of subversions, it doesn't really change anything. I think like, the intention no one was to make you think a murder... that she's escaping. Like, that's the rest of the movie, is she's trying to escape the detective. While, yeah, like I said, subvert... I never had that impression when watching it. I was like, there's gonna... she Because the whole film's been telling me she's like this good person, so there's gonna be something more to it. I had... Mm -hmm. I thought uh, one, of, one of the first, like, partial ideas was that um, someone had killed Harlan and made it look like a suicide after this mm -hmm. thing with her had happened for some other yeah. reason. I thought it was going to be, like, really crazy. Like, they watched her go in and out, and then they go in straight after. But, of course, they show her go back in, and he cuts his throat, and I was like, how are they going to How are they gonna argue that someone else was involved in this? Like, that was what I was thinking about the whole time, really. Yeah, but I, throughout... Yeah, it's, the moment um, Blanc brings her in as, like, his almost his assistant, I was like, okay, I totally get where she's at. She is trying to discover who's really behind this whole thing while simultaneously trying to keep her involvement um, a secret. So it's like, okay, that's fine. I, I can get on board with that. I was never under the impression that she was just purely trying to cover up her own tracks um, and, you know, there was nothing else to it. Yeah. I, I, it, it, it was always I, clear about that. But I guess... Yeah, the just... idea is that we have... And we have an investment in her getting away because she is a good person and... You know, Harlan is fine with it, and so it gives us the impression that, you know, she's the she shouldn't be discovered and you know, thrown in jail and stuff like that. Um that that's that you know, that's what the film's trying to tell us and all that stuff. So there's that investment aspect the film is trying to put in where again, it's like no one's gonna walk into this and into a theater to watch this expecting a murder mystery and be displeased by the premise, you know, by that technicality of the of the genre. I mean, I think that's, that's, that's what he's arguing, is that you go in and you're like, I'm not going to find out until the end. Ooh, I found out already. Hmm. How fresh. That's the... But, um, I mean, you get what you paid for at the end, I would argue. So, I don't know yeah, that absolutely. it... So, just fundamentally, what does it do with its subversion? And it's like, well, I mean, it goes back on track. So... Did it subvert the subversion? Is that what we're dealing with? I don't know. I mean... I, I'd be curious that next time I uh, see my folks, I'll I'll ask them if they felt like it was a subversion genre. I doubt they'll feel that way. Maybe in a technical sense, hmm. sure. But I mean, I don't think anyone feels like, oh, I couldn't, I didn't see that coming at all. Like, well, I think people are. Like, I just, I yeah, from the get go, I, I was just like, it's not going to be as simple as that. It's obviously going to be something else to it. Like I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't in the camp of damn. We know how it happened. Let's hope she can escape. Like I, I never went into that gear. I guess. Yeah. Don't make any noise. <laughs> First of all, this turn is pretty great in of itself because it takes this old genre of who done it and flips it on its 
Oh, and sorry, I wanted to specify the turn itself is pretty dumb as well because there's so many reasons why she should have been able to spot that he wasn't actually hit with the morphine dose. Um, oh yeah, like right yeah. in the in the first scene when it happens, like shouldn't and, he be like I don't know, lying on the floor, drooling yeah, and, all over himself yeah, or whatever? Slurring his words, whatever. and all of that relies on her having made a mistake that is very bizarre and specific. That she doesn't look at labels on bottles; she relies on the viscosity and weight. <laughs> Which is fucking weird. <laughs> that never makes me not laugh. It's so fucking stupid. That's crazy. It's head to keep things fresh, which is usually a positive. But the main reason for why this twist is so freaking ingenious and truly deserving to exist Jeez. is because it raises the tension of the following scenes up to another atmosphere. Instead of us just casually Does looking it? for clues of what happened and whatever, the driving force behind the scenes becomes whether or not Marduk can outmaneuver the detectives and the clues before she I mean, gets it, incriminated. No, I was just thinking how fucking yeah. stupid those police officers yeah, are. Was, was exactly. Exactly. Well, it does the opposite the effect. Evidence. The stakes uh, were flying all the way back down the chasm when, when they just give her important evidence and she fucks with it over yeah. and over again. Like, I yeah. didn't see this as a tension-filled, sweaty he moment. Knows she's involved. Th this wasn't seen to me as like this, this, these moments of like, oh my god, will she do it? Will she make it? Or, because, um, it's like, yeah, Marta, you can be the one to put the tape in. You can be the one to pocket it after it ejects because the VCR <laughs> is on fire yeah. slash you ejected it. You can be the one to hold it. Okay. Actually, Marta, I want it back now. I hope you haven't tampered with it. It's think, so yeah, terrible. I, I think when, this, when the script is giving her the solution on a silver plate, like, there is no tension there because you know she's going to be given everything she needs to get out of a situation. There would be I... tension if they the police officers were genuinely intelligent and switched on to what she was doing, and she had to be super ingenious to, to try yeah. and get around them. But that, like there's that none of that here. Yeah. Because all we, we learn after the fact that Blanc knew from her shoe that she was, if not the murderer, <clears throat> she was definitely involved. That was what he believed. He didn't know exactly how she was involved, just that she was involved to where he got blood on her shoe. So... Which, by the way, how the fuck did that blood get on her shoe? Like she was. Yeah, that's the, another thing. Oh, um, sure, yeah, that's another thing that kind of blows of the, the whole thing open. Yeah. How the fuck did blood? Not only did blood spray that far, only that amount, a droplet. <laughs> like well, drip. yeah, I was. I would like to point out as well. There's other ways you could get blood on your shoe very easily. Like if you suffer a nosebleed, for example, or you just happen to like, you know, it could have been. It could be yeah, if, yeah, it's a, the idea that Blanc says that he knew. And if he if he's operating under the belief that she's involved, uh, though to a degree he doesn't know yet, the fact that he lets her do all of this stuff, including running errands by herself after a high speed police chase where she's fleeing from the cops and him, you know, all, you put all this together and it's insane. It's the incompetence of characters that is relied upon to carry this plot. Well, to to really sort of frame it, then right, you have up until he read the toxicology report. Uh, Blanc was actually not really sure of what the fuck was going on. And what information do you have on specifically Marta? You know, even though this is not true, but we're saying it from the perspective of Blanc, he believes that she was involved with the murder because of blood on her shoe. That's your first, like, ooh. Secondly, that she's, like, really dodgy whenever she's around you and constantly trying to avoid questions and, and she's already tried to lie mm. to you. Like, she vomited. Um, that she turned up with Ransom uh, at certain points, and she went off to do something mysterious, and it ended up with us finding the maid dead, or dying. Um, and she accidentally ruined the footprints leading to the house when you needed them. Like, I would just be like, you know, the audience following along with a who done it. It's like, who do you think did it? If we didn't get the flashback of her killing Harlan, I'd be like, hmm, seems like it might be the maid. <laughs> or the, the, yeah, the, the all nurse, of these sorry. things are lining up, and you're like, wow! Like, yeah, lots of lots of info to work with here. She must be the red herring, because it's too obvious. <laughs> so yeah, um, obviously the tension, like how, how tense you feel in a scene is pretty much up to you. But uh, if we're going to talk about like how the stakes are running here, I'd be like, they're very low because all of our characters are retarded. Yep. Yeah. It by them, which would we have concur. destructive consequences for her and her illegal immigrant family. And the effect that this carries is so powerful that you're at the edge of your seat. The I like how they treat going back to your original country as like a death sentence. 
I suppose, uh, for, depending on where they're from, what particular situation they were in at the time, maybe they were on like the streets or something in their own country. But I mean, I know, I it makes you wonder what borders are for at some point. Yeah. And entire time. That, that's a live feed there. All right. Well, can we see the actual tape? Well, of course. You God, this seems so bad. <laughs> it's, it's... Yeah. Here are you, Marvin. Hey. You operate this. It's like, hey, you I have the footage. That happens. He's yeah, like, we've got the guy who actually runs this equipment every single day stood right next to us, but no, 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 you do it. No, you <laughs> do it. He has you to literally it, talk you through what buttons to press. But of course, lads, uh, that doesn't matter, because she doesn't know how to clear the tapes, so what's she gonna do? And then suddenly it's like, oh, I usually clear the tapes fully with a fridge magnet instead of just taping over them like any normal person would, because this is... Footage of a thing that's in, like basically innocuous for decades on end that no one cares about, and yet yeah, I we can't have first. just footage of woods. That would be mm -mm. <laughs> that's incriminating shit right there. Also, we record all of our footage on VCR tapes. In twenty seventeen, yeah. this is set, I believe, or eighteen. Sorry. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, they just haven't upgraded their though. systems, I guess. Yeah, I, I feel I like you'd it. have to go out of your way to do this and keep it as it's been. What the yeah, fuck are you guys like, talking about? Her freedom, her family, those are not stakes. Um, so, th she has a lot to lose, but I'm not invested in a tense way if all it relies on is people being stupid. Yeah. If all of it I is lose, just yeah. they're being stupid. I lose like, investment like, in thinking that this is a proper world. Yeah, like because I'm just like, okay, we'll get on with it. Someone's gonna make a mistake, I guess. That's all I'm waiting for. As opposed to... All of these intelligent characters are working toward a goal, and one of them is trying to subvert the rest, and I have to watch how they can cleverly do so. Which is what I think a good... uh, he's, being, he's selling to us right now, I think, but I don't believe for a second that that's what's happening. I think a good example would be, we recently watched Ghostbusters 2016. When you oh, compare no. that with the we, original we did, Ghostbusters... Yeah. yeah don't never forget he. <laughs> but if you, can, if you compare the 2016 with the, with the original... The world of the 2016 version is like a joke. It's not a real place. No one acts normal. Everyone is goofy and otherworldly and just bizarre. But if you go to the original, people are basically normal. It's a normal world. It's very grounded. It's very realistic. So you have a lot of investment in it because you really believe in it. Um... Yeah, I guess I was trying to think of this. Is there anything else about this scene that was fucking bizarre? But I think we're alright. <laughs> the yeah. the VCR gets well, smoking hot, which is funny as yeah. hell. Yeah, smoke and burns. How convenient! Well, which see, but it's a combo. He can't, uh, he, he yeah, can't it's a combo of bad because okay. because the then implication it, yeah, then it's muddled because then like it, she's not fucking the tape up by pressing the wrong buttons. It's just it it somehow starts smoking, and then she uses the fridge magnet to actually wipe the tape later. So it's a combo of things. He, he establishes that it can only be done in bursts because the VCR will overheat, but we're shown her edging toward the eject button, the implication being that she hit eject, and that smoke just sort of, that's just, it kind of happened to be at that, you know. <laughs> and also, if he's the one who says openly, oh yeah, well, there's you gotta operate it a certain way or else the tape is ruined. He's not the one who operates it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. This scene's not very good, what's the point? <laughs> so, anyway. Pick here. Can Oak Street? Can... Can Oak. Can Oak. Yeah, see, but... So, what I think what we said when we first saw this scene, I was like, just rewalk them. Rewalk your prints. Yeah. You're fine. You're wearing the same fucking shoes. The same friends. Even if you weren't wearing the same shoes, you could rewalk them. You, you don't even need to do that. You could just be like, yeah, I've been through here a bunch of times over yeah. the past week. Because that's actually it's been really a week true. Since the guy was killed. <laughs> yeah. So, like, that's all the excuse you need. But no, yeah, I, you know, when I'd play with the dogs, we'd go out to the woods, and this is the path I'd take. And yeah, pretty simple. Yeah, and then we have another incident of the police oh, being man. fucking retarded. All right. But, do... Is that really tense rather than hilarious? It's just fucking stupid. <laughs> the dog brings <laughs> him the piece of incriminated evidence. It's like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And what is her idea? She fucking throws it away because she'd never seen a dog play fetch before. Yep. Sweet beans. 
Another subversion that follows is that Marda turns out to be the one who Wait, what was the first subversion? The fact that we know that it's not a yeah, murder the off the bat? The fact that oh, we... okay. I was just making sure, because that's mm -hmm. a lame subversion. All of Harlan's fortunes. And once more, in of itself, it is a pretty funny turn. Oh, that wasn't right. a subversion. If, I saw that coming yeah, a mile away. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you didn't see that coming, like, 10, 15 minutes before, yeah. you were not watching this movie. <laughs> yeah. I think I think we all caught it was just like it's gonna it's, none of it's going to them. That's the because they set them all up to be proud. They they have shots where each of the family members are like, ooh, so excited, they're so happy to be money. here. They're so yeah. ready for this money. It's like, Plus, oh. yeah, why else would you even have a scene like this where the will's getting read out? Is it unless to deliver really shocking news? Yeah. Like as if it's ever going to be like, yeah, so you're getting this, and uh, yep, yeah, it's all going to pan out pretty much like everyone expected. Nice. Of course. Um, the, like they wouldn't show us the scene if it went the exact way that everybody said it was yeah, going to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it just it, at that point it would kind of be boring, I guess. I don't know. Unless you know, of course they'd done like subvert. half of the family get it and half don't. That could have been interesting. I don't know. You know what would have been a subversion if they all got their normal share and then the letter said, "Oh, she killed me." By the way, <laughs> <laughs> would have been a subversion. <laughs> Deport her family immediately. Yeah. Deport yeah. Her. Her Daniel Craig walks in. I have found the murderer. <laughs> because it highlights the daffy, ironic, <laughs> selfish nature of the family. Did her is it selfish ironic? to want your your parents' like possessions to fall to you when they've died? Um. I guess it depends think, on what possessions in what ways. I it depends on how you. I think it depends on how you frame it. If you think of, you know, inheritance and work as part of a legacy that your parents pass it down to you, you pass it down to your kids, they pass it down to their kids, then it's bigger than you in that sense. And similarly, if you get legitimate satisfaction over the idea that the, the last wishes of your parents were carried out properly, um, it, it depends. Maybe to well, yeah, a degree, absolutely, but something... not in a bad way. Some examples, I mean, right? Thing you could have non... like a father and son carpenter team, and they've been doing it forever. The dad dies, and he gives it over to the sister who doesn't even live in the same country. And the kid's like, wow. That's, you know, and we'd probably be like, damn. And, and it's, you know, for whatever reason. Or like a ring that the father had, and it gets passed to a to a friend to as opposed to like someone being like it's a meaningful yeah. thing there's like all these little well, details that we could probably find out that, that i think have differing degrees of what it would be to be selfish but the idea for example that mm -hmm. walt gets control of, of publishing once harlan dies i'd just be like that seems that seems about right i don't know well i think um is it linda that kind of expects the family home is going to go to her and yeah because she's the real I, estate again, mogul that's... right yeah, and, and and that's the thing where it's like she presumably doesn't need the actual home to sell it for money or anything True. like that, but it will have sentimental value, I would have thought. So, again, yeah. that's a thing that you, you wouldn't necessarily say it's selfish. It's just like this is a thing that has a great uh, emotional attachment for me. But, like, we didn't even get to do that scene where, um, let's say, Linda, someone is like, this is my house, get out, and it's like, it's, it's her house, and then someone gets to explore with Linda, like, why do you feel you deserve it? And then she says, because it was my father's. And it's like, and actually go into that, and be like, so the fact that it belonged to your father means it belongs to you? You know, something like that. But I think this movie's not, it, it's a little bit too comedic to, to have scenes like that, I think, because, I mean, I'm just trying to be a dick, but like, that would make the characters properly three-dimensional at that point. <gasps> like have her explore why it, it is she feels she she oh, she is owed this. Yeah, and it doesn't. I'd, there's no reason for that to be portrayed in a malicious manner. I think it's more interesting if it's you know if if there's a lot if there's a lot of different aspects to it, like we were talking about earlier. Which I don't think Ryan would have. Ryan would have her be cartoonishly bad. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm picturing else. Ryan's scene as, it belongs to me. And it's like, why? Because it was my father's and it becomes mine when he dies. And it's like, why? Because that's how it works. Like, that's what she'd say. And it would be lame. <laughs> We'd be like, all right, well, she hasn't thought about this for more than five seconds, but okay. Harlan tell you he was going to cut you out of the will? Maybe this might finally make you grow up. I leave in their entirety to Marta Cabrera. 
Yeah, obviously. I don't see this as unreasonable. They're all fucking panicking. All of their plans yeah, yeah. and their positions have all just been completely blown up. And there's well, this one person who has everything and they all want to ask her questions. I don't think this makes them evil people, just saying. <laughs> like, no, I think... It, yeah, you would definitely want to speak to her and be like, okay, we, we need to clarify a few things about how this is... Because of course, and, like... um, Walt is probably the the smartest out of all of them in terms of approaching her. Um, and second up would be Meg, trying the call. Because the second Meg called her in the in the restaurant, I was like, oh, are we doing? Is she gonna? Is, is, the the call will turn. You know, it'll go from being like, hey, you okay? How you doing? To if you remember, she says, I think you should do whatever you think is best with the money. And then she like, even by sentences, immediately goes, I think you should give it back to us. <laughs> it's like, uh... But again, the real, actual reason for why this is such a fantastic deserving twist is because it raises the stakes deserving of the movie's twist. entire second half by an astronomical amount. Raises the stakes by having her have the inheritance. Um, I suppose you could- I would argue that you might be right in terms of it now puts them all- she's on their radar when she actually yeah, I... did something wrong too. It gives a reason, especially with the clause they mention about, you know, Slayer if clause, the wrongful yeah. death was caused by her. Um, yeah, that absolutely raises the stakes, because now she has people who, they would have a reason to, if not discover the truth, frame the truth in a certain way. Yeah. Frame her. Hmm. Well, this is kind of, now, kind of an oversight by, uh, by the, oh, fuck, I, I'm bad with the names, uh, the guy who died. Uh, uh, All yeah. Harlan? Harlan. Yeah. Like, he had, like, this whole crazy idea how she gets out of this, but he didn't think about that it. it's kind of weird she gets all the money right the day after he dies. Yeah. You'd think he would have told her about that. He's like, oh, by the way, they're gonna <laughs> fucking... Way. I kind of... <laughs> oh, man, this is gonna be a surprise to you, Marta. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> oh, you're man. about to become, like, a billionaire or some shit. It's like, oof. Yeah, some of my kids will be your employees. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure this won't destroy your life like it does to all the... Yeah, okay, bye. <laughs> Marta suddenly has a motive to have murdered Harlan. Now the family members want to investigate his death as a murder. Now... Um, where he says she suddenly has a motive to kill Harlan, that's, um, not... That would have True. seen that she knew beforehand. Yeah, because didn't didn't the uh, the guy say that no one has seen the whole point was like it hasn't been officialized yet, like no one's seen it yet. It's a sealed thing that was sent directly to him, so nobody would actually know about this yet. Yeah, even the lawyer hasn't seen it. So. I suppose you could argue that the characters assume that he told her. Yeah, but it, does that actually come up? I mean, we can assume well, I mean, it, but well, I, I think it's fair to infer something like that. I yeah, suppose. I think they would they would certainly try and rationalize that as why mm -hmm. they would because they wouldn't see their own faults. They would see that she has somehow gone out of her way to manipulate him, uh, and that's why they're not getting um, inheritance that they're expecting and that they're wanting. Oh, and someone just brought ransom new. Yeah, so there's precedent that Harlan may have told her if he's told ransom, right? Like he could have told anybody. Marta yeah. and her illegal immigrant family are in much more danger of being found out. In other words, yeah, the obstacles Marta family. is facing grow oh, to become much... Well, I don't know if they're good or bad people. We see them once, right after the, the thing he drops, I think. Yeah, I, mean, I don't have any issue at all with her mom being deported. Like, so I, for I me, totally forgot about it just the doesn't... Whole thing with the family. It's like, yeah, that's not an issue I care about right now. Plus, I mean, uh, I don't know the the workings of this, but like if this was discovered, would they just be instantly deported or would there not be some kind of process where they could appeal and and all the rest of it? Like if they've been living in the States for a long time. I don't know. I don't know myself. Larger and insurmountable, which is always what you want to do, as opposed to reducing them. Then we have another twist of Ransom tricking Marta into revealing that- No. No. Not a trick. She can leave. Yeah. No. Yeah, she can leave. Doesn't she work. doesn't because I have no idea why. But um, Wait, I want to. Yeah, I do. I, I do want to put this to bed. I'm done with this being considered a co cool, clever move. Okay, I think even I kind of drinker actually said that earlier. I I refuse now. I'm angry. Okay, it, this is it, dumb. It wasn't, so much, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't so much that I thought it was clever. It was more just like oh, it made me chuckle, the way it was. Framed. Yeah, it's it's just that uh, the threat is as powerful with or without the meal, because she could leave in both scenarios. So I'm just sitting there like, I don't, it's, 
It's meh. It's like saying he's like, ah, you outsmarted her. It's like, no. And I love the idea, by the way, that it was like, oh, he could like keep her there and then force her to answer it. It's just like, they're at a public restaurant. Good luck with that. It's gonna fucking... Yeah. It's not gonna happen. I mean, I think, I, at the very least, he could get one answer out of her by just her well, lack of answers. You know, if he says, like, do you know who killed Harlan? Um, and she, can... she just gets up and leaves and says, no, I'm not I'm not talking to you. It's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, you know, the fact anything. that she's refusing to answer tells me that, like, she probably does know. Why? What are you going to do with that? <laughs> can't just burp. That's not an answer. Uh, this is not yeah, my... <laughs> not me this time. It was me. Me. Oh, I mean, okay. You know, well, but say theoretically she tries to leave then. They are in his car, so she's got nowhere she can go. She called taxi. He could, she has, I mean, he could follow her outside and force her into his car and then drive away. No, with her. there's there's it's, people all over in the restaurant. Yeah, she can just stay and ask the restaurant for their phone and call a taxi. She'll be fine. Potentially, right. he's, if she well, leaves, that proves she's guilty, wouldn't it? No, not at all. It would give him. Well, in he this, would if suspect. We go to the, well, like if he we already were just going in the context it. that he's just trying yeah. to find out things, then it would tell him he... that she knows something, and you know, I, I suppose he's trying to knowing figure out her... what went wrong with his plan. How was she involved with how his plan apparently didn't work? Because he wants her to explain everything so he can generate a new plan. His new plan being the um, implicating her hardcore. Um, because now he knows about the like how everything went down. But again, he only has suspicions, because from his point of view, she went in with faulty vials, and somehow Harlan slit his own throat. But with his, sto his story, everything now is clear to him. When I, I, just, like, I just don't think she had any fucking reason to tell him the entire story. It was kind of insane. And the film tries to tell us, well, she did it because she, she can't lie. It's like, that's not an answer. Yeah. She could have just not said anything. Could have left. Especially with what she knows is on the line. Is like it apparently then, this is piece it, of social awkwardness wasn't... It, this was worse than all of the potential bad things that would happen yeah. in her life and to her family. I guess. So, I guess she's, it, yeah, is it then just trying to frame her as being kind of naive and innocent and wanting someone to help her? And she's almost like desperate for someone to you know, give her some well, guidance see, on this, or to confide in someone about it. I would argue that happened. that's probably the way they should have gone, but instead the film is like, uh-oh, she's cornered, and he's just argued that he tricked her. Like, what? Yeah. I feel like this is a aggressive move that was, if I was in Marta's position, I'd be like, no, fuck you, Well, yeah, you, he's asshole. just threatened you, essentially. He's like, if you lie to me, you will throw up thanks to the meal that I've just made sure that you've eaten. It's like, damn, this seems some shady shit. And again, I just I want to see the version where she goes, yeah, okay, I'm gonna leave now. But oh well. <laughs> the truth, which works great because it locks Marta into this mess for the rest of the no, movie. No, it doesn't. By no, it doesn't. Um, nope. By taking away her chance to just get out of trouble by re D announcing the inheritance, and it also keeps her innocent in the audience's eyes as opposed to her seeming to turn greedy. And then, and then, and then, you get the idea. The reason subverting uh, expectations like each of so the things that he showed and yeah. his and then, and then, and then. Yeah, let's go back part. to those. To her seeming to turn greedy. And then, and then, and then. So, we got the, I know what you did. We've been over the, um, the toxicology report and the bluff. Uh-huh. So, throwing... Um, the Molotov, if you will, modified Molotov, whatever, into the building, burning it. I don't see how that erases permanent records that may or may not even be fucking stored in that building. Melting a camera yeah. does not erase the camera's recordings, that's not how it works. And plus there's the aspect of them being spotted here by the mm -hmm. police and the detective. <sighs> in what an insane coincidence that they should just show up here, where the toxicology reports were stored. I'd love hmm. to live in. I'd love if Ryan Johnson's view of the world was actually real, where like, you know, records are only ever stored in one specific building that you know they're it's created just, in. Just like a yeah, folder. Yeah, computer bits breaks. Of paper. My Steam account is destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like cameras only record things onto their own 
like, There's like a little USB the inside the camera. Of the camera. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, the security guys they get they get a step ladder. They go up to each security camera. They pop it off the wall and then they take it back to their office. And you know, yeah. apparently, yeah, also, geo what? redundancy is not a thing in this universe as well. Yeah. No. No redundancy. It's not in 2018. <laughs> this is the thing. No. They might have been able to have some leeway if this was set in like the fucking 70s, maybe even earlier. Yeah. Uh, with I all think these films, definitely the benefit fucking... from it security they had at their house <laughs> um but zach gilbert said the super chat marriage proposal said yes oh that's very very good that's, that's very fantastic good if they, yeah oh, that's wonderful. congratulations if, if, i don't know what confirmation we have other than that but yay if true <laughs> well it's the um it's the man who uh it's in it's enraged table who sent a super chat he said that she did indeed uh say yes yay um, he, he said, hi, EFAP. I'm the guy who made pickles, bread, lasagna, masks with his fiance. Um, I think we might have misunderstood that originally in thinking that he made masks out of pickles, bread, and lasagna, <laughs> which is very, very strange. <laughs> Instead, he made pickles, bread, lasagna, and also masks with his fiance. Much more normal, I'll <laughs> say. Um, he said, if you can't tell, she said, yes. Sorry, I couldn't answer right away. I wasn't done making the ring. I carved it out of marble. Wow. Um, yeah, that Jesus. is legitimately impressive. Uh, That's cool. Very creates a lot of sentimental value for it. Absolutely. Uh, thank you all for your support. Stay long. Uh, we shall indeed. And congratulations again with that. Yeah, That's thank you for good sharing it with here. us. That's good stuff. Cool, man. So um, we had our first uh, accepted marriage proposal here on EFAP. <laughs> historic Stay. first. Uh, so we need our first rejection uh, <laughs> as well to balance everything out, as all things should be. So. Um. Uh, we need we need someone to actually propose with a super chat. Oh, that's what happened. For I think that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like I, I read like, that. Like actually, yeah. he used he used the function of a super chat in order to propose. I think so. Indeed, and he did it on uh on our on all leaf app on every frame of pause. Wow. We might be destroying art. But we are creating relationships. Hopefully, last the life. <laughs> Bringing people together. And these, and these oh, relationships create artwork, being rings out of marble. So, haha, -ha, we're resurrecting art too. And if you watch yeah. our stream, then you will know um, what movies not to watch on your honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, um, so uh, yeah, we've done. So we've done the first image, the second image, now the third yeah, image. And I'll, I'll oh, also, also, in the second image, this is what kicks off a high speed car chase with the police there are no repercussions right. for yep. um Mario for so the third image we have um for, for chat to make sure we got this right cuz we we kind of we did talk about this earlier a little bit but the maid mm -hmm. saw ransom i'm not I, I, we should probably cover that too how stupid and unlucky well convenient all of that is ransom mm -hmm. wanted to switch the vials back or at least uh take the take the liquid from the one out and put it back in the one it was supposed to be to do that, he needs no one to be in the house, because otherwise it'll be suspicious tisms. And so they're all at the funeral, and that's when he decides to do it. He comes in, he goes upstairs, does the switch, leaves. Unfortunately for him, when he arrived, all the noise he would have made by entering the house and moving upstairs, the maid was in the house, and she didn't actually ask, like, what's he doing there? Hey, who is that? Hey, Ransom, what's up? None of that. She happened to miss him, up until he went in the room that she was right next to, and then she peered in and saw him tampering and said nothing. Um, and also, before you go any further, recall that this all relies on the bag of medical supplies next to the dead man who'd been taking uh, medicine uh, for whom a toxicology report had been taken. It relies on that still being in the room and not, not being, being taken, taken by the police evidence. as evidence. Even though there's evidence uh, tape, all... there's a crime scene still, and they didn't remove the, the medicine. It's fascinating mm -hmm. to me. Um, and also, this relies on, for some reason, the maid not being at the funeral. I think that she. Yep, she wasn't there. invited either. All right. Um, yeah. So fuck her, yep. I guess. So, the maid decides because she's kind of an ass that she wants to get some money out of this instead of just reporting it, and so she needs to prove that ransom has done something. So she thinks cleverly, "I'll get the toxicology report. It'll prove he tampered with the medicine." But how do I do that? Aha! I'm lucky. I have a sister who works in the place that they do it. <laughs> That's real, by the way. <laughs> wow, that yeah. was lucky. Yep, that's uh -huh. just... That's some excellent writing just on top of everything else. This movie's a fucking disaster, by the way. I don't know if we've... We, we can start saying that now, I think. We've, we've talked a lot about its problems. Um, lucky. So, yeah, so she gets the, the report. She finds that it's blank. 
Or, and so she's like, fuck, how do I prove that Ransom has done shit? I can threaten that I have it. And so she does, and she leaves uh, the information out, she just shows him the header. And from her so perspective... I sorry? I, so my question is, if she had access to the report, she knew that the body was clean. Yes. So her impression, after looking at the toxic toxicology report... <laughs> Seeing that it was clean and he wasn't killed by anything related to medicines or his bag of, you know, drugs, she still thinks that he's a bad guy for trying to just, kill him. Yep, just purely based on seeing him trying to switch the vials around. Yep, she. she well, I don't even know I if that's what... assume... Well, yeah, I, I, she can only. I can only assume that her logic was just he must Insane. have done something, and he is trying to I cover think, it up. I think that's what they're yeah. going for because when she sees him, she goes, "I knew it," which is not something you'd say if you knew it, right? Like, yeah, you, the... you actually know he did it. Instead, she's she thinks that him showing up is proof that her bluff was correct. Like she got him with the bluff. She's like, "I got you on this report," and he was like, "Okay, you got me." And she's like, "Ha ha! I didn't actually, but the fact that you're here means that you did do it." Which is and all... if the thing is that, so, I guess, if we were going to be generous, we can assume that she got the tox, uh, toxology report and didn't understand what it meant? No, I'm pretty sure she saw it was blank. I'm almost certain that was the case, and that she just tried to bluff him and it worked, but I don't. she was way too stupid to realize what would happen if the bluff worked. Yeah, she luckily did the irrational thing, and it which weird, is, oh, but... it, the body's cleared. Apparently nothing was messed around with the vials. I, I guess it's weird that he was looking through the bag. Maybe he's trying to find answers himself. I mean, he is a member of the family. Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't go to the funeral. Maybe he's distraught. He's All these other things that make more sense, instead of despite the clean talks report, I still believe that he poisoned him. And this is the thing. She should probably assume that he would know that it's blank, because if if she thinks he did something to help murder Harlan, then surely he would have the information on on brain. It's a really weird move from her, but moving forward, her goal is to get money out of him, and so she wants to meet him in the in the image you can see on the screen is this dark room. She wants to meet him there, and I guess blackmail him. Like I know what you did, oh. and I'll reveal it to the world if you don't give me money. But what does she expect he's going to be able to give her because he's been cut out of the will? He does um, express he's got some money right now, right? Of some kind? Because he says he has access to like, amazing know, like... lawyers despite not having any inheritance. Do you remember I mean... that? He's like, I got great lawyers and I'm going to come after you. And it's like, oh, okay. I thought the whole thing was that he would be in financial trouble if he didn't get any money. That's what I thought too. I'm going to have to rewatch the fucking movie to it's... find that out. Because he was kind of cruising you know, on easy mode. Yeah, I, I thought he was just kind of a spoiled playboy and maybe he, he'd gotten a certain amount of money as an allowance or something from Harlan or, f yeah, over time. Um, well, but, either like, way. he was going to be cut out of the will, so yeah, like, he, he maybe had something, but not not That's much the, that could change her life. I mean. Fran sucks, because, like, not only does she know, not know if she can even get this money, she's just putting it all on the table to get that money. She wants that fucking money. She's not going to try and just you know, report him. <laughs> anyway, he he just walks up to her and chloroforms her. That's it. And she yeah, it's, she, it's really she, funny she, the way they film it. She's like, I knew you were involved. I knew it. You're a piece of shit. Oh, God. Don't, no, 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 no. It's yeah. like, yeah, what? The, <laughs> she shows up alone to an abandoned building with no witnesses with the intention of confronting a person that she believes is a murderer. Yep. And she knows that this person will know that she is blackmailing him. And, and I, then I wanna... she's shocked that he attacks her. I repeat she, this. she goes with no weapon. She doesn't use any recording device to no incriminate one knows she's him. There. No one knows she's there. So, yeah, I, I said this on uh, Drinker's stream, but I just want to repeat it. So, she did the, the... There's two things you do when you're doing, like, a deal. It's super, super public so that you can't be killed, or mm -hmm. super far away and remote so that there's no chance you can be caught. And she went for the worst of both worlds, where it's a secu <laughs> secluded area that no one can quite get you, but it's about five seconds away from real human beings that are all running around. And it's just like, yeah. wow. It's yeah, amazing. this is the kind of thing where I'd want to meet up in a, a public place, a restaurant, or where I'd right? want to bring... Yeah. 
And what would he have done bring if a she had gun all... or something? He didn't know that. He didn't know that's why the, the that she was going to organize it this way. Would he have turned up if she had said, you know, the same fucking cafe that, you know, whatever, a public place? What would he do then? Because this was yeah. all a part of his plan, wasn't it? Like before he even got to Fran, this is what he was going to do. Because he'd already had he already he, had he already sent yeah because he'd already sent the thing to uh, Marta, right? Yeah, he needed to get that set up in advance because she had to know about it so she could get there. He chloroforms Marta, uh, sorry, Fran, and doses her up with. He just assumed presume. that he could do all of that. Yeah. So bad. <laughs> Which he does, and he fucks up poisoning her. So, good job there. He or he in he inexplicably doesn't kill her there. The <clears throat> dose that he gives to her, even though he knows that. The dose that was given, because remember, he orchestrated in his idea or in his mind, his plan was to um, poison Harlan with uh, morphine. So he, he he knows what will kill a person. Why he didn't give that to her, I don't know. But so so I guess that leaves her alive long enough to have Fran bump into her. Yeah, because he's a, he's yeah. aware of the life saving drug, and if anyone saves <clears throat> Fran, she'll implicate him. Yeah, but he also seems there, there to was give absolutely her the... no reason for him to leave while she was still alive. He could have chloroformed her and then just smothered her or something, yeah. and just made sure she was dead. And, and then for off reference, because um, it is in the film, she finds Fran two hours after the injection. Um, yeah, and the injection looks to be the full vial, which I, is something like three hundred milliliters. Uh, I think 100 mil is a full vial. I think it changes. We looked it up. I forgot. Oh well. well what I'll do is I could I could check and look at the. Uh, I'll I'll check while you guys. Uh... But yeah, I was about to point that out too because especially now that we have those three pictures side by side, which is uh, chronologically correct how it happens in the movie. I think on the left is this Rand Rams Ranson or is this Martha's hands? That's like, Martha because she, it's on her table. Yeah. 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 But when we, uh, she picks, I think she picked him up with her car. They drive to the toxicological center thingy. I still can't say that word because I'm retarded. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, then right after that, they get into the chase, which which is probably like 15 minutes long, I would say, in movie time, probably. Yeah, and yeah. how and he is when, able then to... Get, then they get caught. Yeah, Ransom uh, was incredibly lucky that she was able to show up to that yeah. uh, appointment. And then incredibly she, lucky. Then she somehow convinces Derek Craig the, to uh, pick something up. She walks right through a public thing to the back. No one cares, by the way, but that's the whole other yeah, thing. Yeah, no one gives a shit. And she oh. goes in here, finds Fran, who's for some reason not dead yet. So we, find, we later find out what happens. And when you line all these up, this makes no sense time-wise. Like, there's no way this happens. Um, like, like I said, the, the film argues it's two hours between him injecting her and Marta arriving at the scene. So that means yeah, he had to have driven back home, Marta arrives straight away, and <clears> then he drives with her, then the police thing happens, and then she goes to this area, and that happens in two hours, which is feasible. My, my yeah. issue is that Fran should be dead. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. We're basically, yeah. well, dare I say it, we're picking our poison here on which one of the errors in the film are... Because either way, no matter how you slice it, there's going to be a huge issue mm -hmm. with how this plays out. It's just a, whether or not it's a film mistake or whether or not inexplicably Chris Evans just doesn't kill her when he needs to have her dead and he just decides not to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a matter of which errors you want. Um, yeah, pretty bad. Yeah. <clears throat> pretty bad. Then you get the idea. The reason subverting expectations work so great in Knives Out is because unlike in The Last Jedi, the subversions aren't there just for the sake of being there. They're there because they always elevate and escalate the narrative and characters in a way that makes things more... Well, like in an uh, emotional way, but not in a way that makes any logical sense. I agree with him, but I feel we are missing another portion of this where he's like... Two types of subversion, one that cranks the stakes, one that does fuck all for the stakes. And I'm like, which one do you want? And I'm like, oh, crank, please. And he's like, cool, we did it. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 wait. Because the other category that I think we need to include is makes sense and doesn't make sense. I would like to have the one that makes sense if possible. 
Yeah, and you can have both um, a subversion that cranks up the emotion that does and doesn't make sense, and vice versa. You can have a subversion that lowers the stakes, but True. also can or cannot make sense. So you have like four different options here. I was going to have the say, one that cranks up the emotion while making sense. Because it's yeah, it's a little bit complicated because obviously the the one that people will often reference is Departed. A big big subversion happens toward the end of that film that is quite a like fucking hell. Wow, you just did that, but um, it you know if, if someone said like, would you say it raises or lowers the stakes when that happens? I'd be like, I guess it lowers the stakes um, because a certain person that was going to be implicated pretty hardcore can now escape. Um, and so, so like the danger for them is going down rather than up, and yet it's still incredibly uh, engaging. I would argue. So, you know, it's, it's all very complicated. And I just, uh, as we usually stick to, but we and, can assess why it works. That's oh, the thing. We can well, make cases for why it works. When people talk about themes or subverting expectations or, or, or different genre elements stuff, it's like every single thing you bring up, all of it sits upon the throne of does it make sense? It can't escape mm. that. It's impossible more difficult, and thus powerful. Another core issue with episode 8 is that despite the movie being told from the perspectives of multiple different main heroes, it's very clear that Van Johnson only had interest in one of them, which made the others into redundant sideshows that serve no purpose to the overall plot. Uh... Um... I, um, I would agree with that, actually. I don't know that I agree I, with that. I don't know, yeah, because with all the work that goes into Canto Bite and the plot with Leia and um, Holdo like and my, how Poe's... Well, my issue I, I, isn't it, that Finn and Poe do nothing, it's how gonked and bonked that their whole journeys are, because the Finn journey is that he's not fighting for the Resistance, he just wants to get Rey, but by the end of the film he fully believes in the Resistance, that's like his arc, and Poe's is he needs to stop being reckless and start being a smart leader. Like, that's what Ryan talking, was doing with those characters. But then, uh, the bulk of the action which actually takes place, like, in Finn's story arc, it's really Rose who's driving most of that. So, well, that would I would support the, the view that uh, Ryan Johnson didn't really have much interest in Finn as a character. He was more interested in Rose. Well, I, th I think the argument he just made was that Ryan was interested in Ray more than anyone. No, I know, but that, like, I guess, like, out of those three main characters that he he referenced there, like, you know, Finn, Ray, and uh, Poe, Ray was the only one out of that those three that he cared about. But I think he cared about his original creation of um, Rose, and I think he ca he cared about Holdo to a degree, and that's why they became the focus of their, you know, their, you know, elements of the plot. I mean, they're definitely uh, sideline slash. Like botched in a in a almost I couldn't be asked to make it better way compared to Ray I guess. Oh, that but rhymes. this is Ryan Johnson, so yeah. being able to assess his level of care for these things yeah. based on what we actually see is really difficult to get a finger. <clears throat> it is tough. Because I could um, totally believe if Ryan Johnson came to me and he said the Canto Bite sequence with Finn, I I really did care about it. I spent a lot of money and a lot of time getting all these props and costumes and CGI and effects all together to tell this part of the story that had this emotional payoff with the fucking space horses. Yeah. And I would totally believe him. Oh, yeah. Like, he, I, I think he cared about that. I just don't think he cared about Finn's element of it. I think it's, I think it's intertwined with Finn's character from the perspective of if you're Ryan and you're making all of these story threads that have to have Finn in it, and tell messages about what Finn learns, regardless of how bad they are, he decided to use these as the the method to convey that the, that theme. Because yeah, like I, I don't actually want to take anything away from Ryan in the aspect of, I'm pretty sure he did exact like he worked hard to get the thing he wanted. I'm almost certain TLJ is exactly as he wanted it. Like, yeah. He um, cared about all of he it. He was just convinced that it was good. Yeah, he's just got an interesting point of view on on stuff. Because uh, as I played in the um in TFA Part Three, his his fundamental advice is to find your voice and go forward. Which um a lot of you might be thinking, wait, you have a problem with that? It's like, yeah, because it's useless advice. Pretty much anybody would tell you that. Nobody's going to tell you, okay, you need to do everything the way that everyone tells you is the right way. Never do anything the way that you would like to do it. 
So the, the, I, I, it's, confused, it's confusing general advice. You, what you want is it, stuff that's a lot more specific. Yeah, I mean, it's good up to the point where your voice stops telling you good things. That's the, like, yeah, if your voice right? is telling you to do really stupid things, then you shouldn't listen to it. <laughs> like, yeah, this is this is why when we ask, like, could could Disney make a really good Star Wars movie that's legitimately good as, you know, A New Hope or Empire Strikes Back? And we kind of say it's, if they do, it's coincidence because they wouldn't be able to recognize quality if they even made it. They they seem like the kind of people who would stumble into making something good. Yeah. Um, and, and I think Ryan Johnson's the same way when it comes to writing. And I think that people might even want to point out, it's just like, wait, you guys are saying that you would never say that there's rules you have to adhere to? And I'd be like, no, so like, in concept, your ideas go nuts. Whatever you have in your head, you're like, oh, I want to do this, 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 this. But the second you're like, I want to have my main character be a cop, I'd be like, right, stop right there. So the fact that they're a cop now means that they're going to have a, a, a set of information and tactics and abilities. You need to go find out what they are. Where is your cop based? Assuming this is in real life. Like, there's loads of stuff that comes up. It's like, no, 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 my cop is just, like, whatever I want. And you're like, no, that's... You, you can't... That's not how it works. And it's like, I'm going to have doctors, and they're going to be able to save people from blood loss with CPR. You're like... No, that's not. Dun, dun, dun. There are rules that you're engaging with for your own benefit, and you ignore the parts that have to come with them. Like, they're intrinsically tied. You can't just run away. Um, of course, you get to bend this shit with sci-fi. You're like, because you can just invent your own thing. It's like, it's not a medic. He's not a medic. He's a, he's a, you know... <laughs> Why did you post that? <laughs> Um, he's, he's, you know, he's a, he's a triad, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's posted a funny, okay, um, he's, he's a, you know, made up word, and, uh, you, you then establish yourself what these, these creatures, factions, whatever they have as rules, and so, yeah, I guess that's, that's all I'm saying, it's like, be free, but then also, if you want to start appealing to certain ideas, you need to go fucking read up on them, and how they work. Because we've only ever espoused to have basic understandings of a lot of different things that are used, but apparently that's leagues ahead of, of shows like Batwoman or um, TLJ. In terms of understanding just how, like, even physics. It's just like, damn. Basic understanding of physics destroys a lot of these uh, these properties, which isn't something I expect to say. Like, g go ahead and do whatever you want. You might want to adhere to gravity. And if not, then your film better be about why there isn't any fucking gravity, <laughs> okay? Well, yeah, if, uh, if you appeal to real life, but then you also want to break the rules that come with real life, then you just need to provide us context for it. Simple as that. Yeah. Especially if it's something very at the core of normal life. Like, you just, everything is the same, and then you have a character who's 740, and you're like, what the fuck? And <laughs> then, you know, at one point, they're just like, no, this world is exactly the same, except someone invented, you know... An immortality drug. You're like, oh, huh. okay. And then it would be funny if they were like, shouldn't the world be very different if immortality is a thing now? And it's like, no, it only got started like uh, a week ago. And you're like, how is he 700 foot? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, this is why you'd redraft. Redraft, redraft, redraft. Everybody do it. Poe spends most of the movie on the slowly escaping resistance ship where he accomplishes nothing. Slowly escaping? No, they weren't escaping. <laughs> and accomplishes nothing. No, I would actually argue he he is I mean this this it's very complicated. The whole thing is a fucking mess. Whatever I think back to it. Like do you remember I think it was Major Lee who said, Why do you care that he started a mutiny when it didn't go anywhere? Wait, what? <laughs> oh, it's like why do you what like why are you using it as a point of criticism when the mutiny doesn't even go anywhere? And it's like wow, You're like because, <laughs> because things can be boiled down very simply into just whether or not it had a tangible effect on the end of the plot. What happens in the middle? Fuck it, doesn't matter. If if Holdo would have reached into her general dress and reached into her pocket and pulled out a magical pixie, and it and it granted her three wishes. And she wished for a Coke and two bags of chips. And that was all that happened. And the plot played out. And I was like, why would we ever matter. criticize that? <laughs> I and mean, it didn't affect the plot.
You know what's funny? We do often argue from consequence when it comes to like insane fucking plot holes or, or co coincidence or convenience and stuff. And they'd be like, so that would be okay. And I'd be like, no, it establishes that she could have wished for anything and she got a bag yeah. of chips. <laughs> what the fuck? Coke and two bags of chips. I hope you better hang there and enjoy and So yeah, the fact that a mutiny was conducted by a captain. It's just like, well, it didn't go anywhere. It's like, guys, we need to discuss this shit. She nearly got everyone killed. Like, it's insane. A lot of stuff happened on yeah. that ship. And what people do, how they do things, and their thought process behind what they do, that informs their characters. And that allows us to make assessments on what they might do in the future. Even if the plot plays out the same, how characters act and behave, very important. Mm -hmm. Go on this epic journey to this Las Vegas planet, which carries absolutely no significance or consequences to the rest of the main events whatsoever. So, I mean, someone will probably argue too. Again, I'm trying to pretend to be someone who likes TLJ, or at least they would be like. So, the purpose of Canto Bite was to be like, look at the repercussions of allowing something like the First Order to reign. Which, by the way, it's actually the Republic that allowed the fucking Canto Bite and people to exist anyway. So it doesn't really make sense. But oh it's part, it, it's all a part of what encourages Finn to become, you know, a, a resistance, almost zealot, I would say. Uh, he's like, I'm a fucking first order, fuck you. And then Rose is like, no, no, you're going too far. You don't kill yourself trying to kill people. Just, just, just love people like me. And then well, don't then kill yourself doesn't. trying to save what you love. Yeah, like, I think Canto Bite was a fucking waste of time. But people would argue that it's, it's, it's on theme for uh, how... We need to we need to stop fascism. Fascism beard. Because they run casinos. Also, uh, capitalism. The the exchange of uh, goods for service. Well, money for for uh, weapons. Like weapons market. It's all very immoral and illegal and bad. And we shouldn't do it. Well, not illegal, obviously. <laughs> but not in that universe. Not in our. Well, it's it's all it's all very rushed, and it's making many points at once. Um, and a lot of people come away from Canto by wanting it to end. Like that's it's it's almost like it has a checklist of things that it needs to cover, and it does yeah. it as quickly and efficiently as possible. I can imagine it would be really funny if the the fledgling republic or whatever. Well, no, they've been around for a long time. At this point, they've been around for thirty years. So you got the new the new republic, and they're like, "Hey, man, Kenno Bite, they're getting really, really rich. They're building these big old casinos, and they're living <laughs> in luxury." Someone's like, hey, isn't that where we buy our X-Wings from? And I'm like, yeah, but we only bought like 12. I wonder mm. if it's like, they, it's, like for, they're, it's like they've sold an army's worth of spaceships. Man, that's really weird. I wonder. Dude, that's probably nothing. Don't worry about it. The Emperor was fully aware of the First Order. Do you think he was like, he was doing his conjuring tisms and having his army of zealots create these amazing Death Star Destroyers. And then you know he's was like, First Order, you can just buy from the casino people. They'll 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 sort you out. Like, I'm, it's like, hey, could you spare us one of those, you know, galaxy trotting death lasers? He's like, no, nah, you're fine. You'll you'll you no. you're fine. <laughs> okay. I mean that 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 has totally economic usages. <laughs> and think of the my, jobs it created. And when it comes to paying for this, my, my Snoke clone will pick up the tab. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm sure they can conjure money. <laughs> like, why not? It's, they can do anything. So much so that they the could have just cut the whole thing out and have Finn and Rose simply go surrender to the First Order and the movie would have played out the exact same way. Overall, The Last Jedi is like a big puzzle where there's a bunch of stranded leftover pieces that fit nowhere. Which, as we found out, isn't very rewarding. And no, I'm scene... fine with that part. That that scene was totally fine. Yeah, I don't really care about Brew Boy. Yeah, I'm fine with the idea that random people have the force. I mean, we kind of knew that already. But it's nice, I guess, that... I don't know. May, maybe this kid will grow up and he'll get Jedi training. And maybe his future will be way better than the futures <laughs> of all of these characters. He'll, he'll probably call himself a Skywalker, too. Yeah, Yay. why not? He'll think it's a Jedi tradition once you become a Jedi and you graduate Jedi school. <laughs> Everyone's Skywalker. You become a Skywalker. <laughs> no, wait, no, we hate the Jedi. They just start a new cult thing called the Skywalkers. It's just, and it's just true. Oh, the yeah, same that's way. right. You're a Skywalker. Now that Skywalker's like, like, yeah. name is tarnished because of his failure with the Jedi Temple and everything <laughs> like that. Now, yeah, now the Jedi's name is pretty bad right now. Uh. Because people didn't even, like, know the Jedi were real 30 years after one of them saved the galaxy, so, <laughs> eh, whatever. They should just all call themselves Palpatine. <laughs> Easier. 
So if someone would, like randomly names themselves that because they think it's a cool name, and Ray is like, no! Fucking <laughs> no! It's disgusting. Way, Knives Out is also a narrative made up of multiple different perspectives and characters with their own individual actions. But the difference is that this time Johnson seems to have understood that each and every perspective and individual action has to directly affect and build up that one core entirety that makes this movie. I feel like it'd be fucking hard pressed to, to argue every single action comes to like one, you know, all of it was for a reason. Yeah, so like we were saying earlier, um, I think this character has, or this movie has more characters than it should. Um, it's better to have fewer characters that are really more fleshed out and well, that uh, I could believe are, you know, the killers. And... We could have spent a lot more time with them, couldn't we? Yeah, that's the thing. You, yeah. you could, we could learn more of their traits. We could learn more of their motivations. Their motivations could have a lot more, you know, information that goes uh, that goes behind them that we could learn about and discover and help us connect with them and. You know, it'll give us a lot more stakes and investment in who it could be. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of Skywalker. Mace building. <laughs> 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 what it is. For example, the opening section is dedicated to the main family members giving their own recounts of the evening before the murder, which mm -hmm. introduces the characters as well as the situation itself. Okay, um, and your son, Ransom, did he attend as well? Yes, but he left early. Oh, I'm gonna, I feel like this is going on for a little bit. I gotta pause. Just be careful. You never know. Okay, I'm assuming he got rid of it. Right, yeah. I like that fucking Windows XP laptop, by the way. <laughs> I could believe that a boomer in 2018 is... <laughs> He's held on to his laptop, laptop that he bought. I can yeah. totally believe oh, yeah, that. Yeah. It's quite funny because they have VHS tapes for security and he uses Windows XP. Just... Oh my god, it's a theme? It's the theme. Boomer <laughs> technology. <laughs> That's none of your business. I know my daughter and she would want to know. Dad, are you firing me? No, I... So, like, I didn't think this was clever when I saw it. I was like, wow, we are rushing out the motivations, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, all the all these motivations are coming together and being revealed, kind of like all condensed into this one night when they're all together, and then the murder happens. And uh, uh. yeah, well, that's funny. It feels um really contrived at that point in the film, but you realize it's not not quite as contrived because the whole point is that he wants to cut them all off tonight, and that's why he's brought mm -hmm. them all there, and that's what motivates Ransom to kill him. So it's like, okay, so that does follow along, that we would have all of these scenes in the party. It's just that at this point in the film, you're like, alright, who's next then? And what else have we got for motivations? I guess this is how we're doing it. Like, it's, it's a bit overt. Because if someone was well, like, idea... what do you think the motivation is? It's like, well, I mean, it's, it's pretty much spelled out. Well, if you're a ransom and you want to kill this guy, is now the time to do it? Well, it does, doesn't, even, doesn't here, even make sense it, to kill him when... Oh, wait, yeah, because he needs to frame the nurse. That's the big goal, isn't it? I, I assume he feels yeah, it, that uh, this is his only shot of doing that. Maybe. Um, maybe it's just maybe, like, yeah, man, yeah. what a time with all these people around and everything. Hmm. Not, not when yeah, I would have done it. Maybe I, that helps the, in some... You could argue that multiple motivations floating around helps you know, murkify the, the possibilities that it was even him. I, I don't know. But, I mean, something like this... Yeah, I mean, the nurse is always going to be with him, like, every single day. Like, she has to tend to him. And so you could frame her at any point that you want. And True. surely something like this would, in any other respect, take quite a bit of planning and preparation. And that's not the sort of thing you would do on the spur of the moment when emotions are running high. You would have it to is... go away and think about how you're going to do it. It's kind of nuts that he's like... Right then, I'm gonna kill you, <laughs> like, and I'm gonna frame your nurse. It's like, damn, dude. <clears throat> I'm gonna do it tonight because people think I've left because I've ra I've driven past the security. I guess Ransom knew the security cameras pretty well because he knew to drive past so. the other thing. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's not impossible he would yeah. know that. I just don't think we have any reason to think he would know that. Yeah, it's a it's a strange thing to know, and not only know but devote to memory. Yeah, because. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not even sure that I think that Harlan would know. I guess he was pretty concerned about his security. It's fine. It's just interesting. I don't think anyone who keeps their stuff on VHS is really yeah, that in 2018 kind of is really that. bad interested in their security. <laughs> I don't know. 
VHS yeah. in 2018. Like, damn, dude. <laughs> we'll talk details tomorrow. Tuition check, but you must know that this is the last money you... Again, I don't, like I said, I just don't... Whatever, it's fine. <laughs> or maybe yeah, and will get from me. There's the also the fact that all of these motivations are established when the these people, like all of these people, know, like like Joe, what is it, Joe Joni? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, when she was what an odd name. When she was there, she would she knew that he knew, and would you know, <laughs> maybe tell people about it, or he would. It just it's weird that they would jump to oh I gotta kill him and that'll make this go away. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's clear to us. We need more time to explore these motivations so that they're more sense. You well, know, and funnily, it's like what is Linda's motivation? We didn't get one. Yeah. This is the last money you or Meg will get from me. The reason each and every individual recount we hear is so important and necessary Talk is the because they always it. either establish crucial mm -hmm. elements leading up to the murder or they establish motives for the characters to have committed that murder. What doesn't happen is one family member sitting down to explain about a random time they took a trip to Vegas which doesn't... Yeah, I, I mean... That's a really weird way to frame that. Yeah. Yeah, that's odd. Like he's he's saying that um if Knives Out had had someone explain, uh you know something irrelevant, it would have been on the same level as TLJ, but like there are other issues with Canto Bite beyond did we did, like like I said the, there is actually a design with Canto Bite from Ryan Johnson. There's a reason he put it in. It wasn't for no reason. No reason. No reason. <laughs> it's no just reason. that um yeah, and of course we do learn about Rose. We do uh, learn about. Finn and his is strange just now learning that good and evil are yeah, like and the, white and I, stuff like that, you know? I'm actually, like, this feels, I'm kind of like defending Canto Bite and it feels disgusting, so please, like, <laughs> stop. Like, the, the idea, well, is, that's is one of Canto... my traits, is I throw up whenever someone defends Canto Bite. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel like it was pointless, but if, you know, because I remember my section on Canto Bite and the TLJ critique was like, there was just point, 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 because there was so much going on in Canto Bite that was insanely stupid. Yeah, but um, you could ask Ryan Johnson what he was trying to do, and he'd go on a huge diatribe, yeah. I'm sure, about all the reasons and the stuff and the things and what he tried to accomplish and what he did with the characters and how he did blah, 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 blah. He could go on and on. Yeah, there, there was he purpose to Canto Bite, and I would, I would argue the most significant element of Canto Bite was uh, it, for Finn's journey, right? And again, I'm getting ill saying this. He goes from being like wide-eyed about how awesome Canto Bite is, then realizing the underbelly and the way that it the way that it functions is off other people's suffering and it's perpetuated by war. And then he's told there are no good guys, there are no bad guys, don't join the fight, which I guess bolsters him into thinking that there are good guys. When he fights Phasma, he's like the first order are definitely the bad guys. And then he almost kills himself trying to defeat them, and Rose teaches him the ultimate lesson, which is you, your goal should be to protect who you love, not attack who you hate. That's that, that's like the Finn through line, and it is garbage. But it is there, okay? <laughs> it is there. ...doesn't connect to the murder whatsoever, because that would be a pointless waste of time. I know that's just one example, but if you watch the movie, you'll notice that it's the same thing with pretty much everything from beginning to end. The reason Marta accidentally breaks the scaffolding is so that it can return as crucial incriminating evidence... Well, yeah, in a super well, yeah. retarded way. Hmm. What? Hmm. He's, so, he's doing what we would do, but in a positive way, by starting with the event and ending with how it transpired. What we would do is be like, wait, how did that turn up as evidence? Oh, because she just, she just broke it off, I guess. It's like, huh. Wow, that's unlucky. Especially when Chris Evans did it without having it break, but... And he's right. clearly heavier than her. I guess he climbed oh, yeah. better. All right. I guess he loosened it for her. Mm -hmm. Also, doesn't the dog just carry it from, I don't know, somewhere on the lawn? Well, so the question becomes, it? why did the dog what? give it to them now rather than in the entire week? Exactly. Like, Where did the dog get it from? Because it should have been just right there. Like, it, it, it had yeah. to be moved. Yeah, yeah. It should have the dog took that in time fact, to give it to her. You'd think she would have pocketed it. Yeah. Or chucked it in the woods or something. Yeah, I mean, she clearly would have remembered breaking it, so... Yeah, and there's no way she she's putting it, it back up there, so you may as well just take it so that it's less clues. But, you know. 
Yeah, and the dog just straight up gives it to Daniel Craig. Yep, because this film's so well written. Here you go. <laughs> Later on, the reason Ransom pours his heart out to Marta is not only so that he can manipulate her, but also to store up his motivations for later on. The I, I think the manipulation in that scene wasn't him pouring out his heart. It was him trying to use her extremely strange trait in order to get her to incriminate herself, which she does inexplicably. And, he, and what he you could call manipulation is he tries to explain to Marta his motivation to screw over his family and take his portion of the inheritance while she gets the rest. That's his goal, to convince her that that's what he wants. When in reality, he probably wants the whole thing for himself, or for just the family. Um, but even still, I don't see how that's... Like, uh, what's impressive about that? I, I don't know. It just seems normal. But yeah, yeah, how, yeah, and the, of course how it is breaks. that mechanically different than um, Walt going to her house and yeah, you know, insinuating Walt does the same thing, really. She needs to play ball. I mean, really, what what's the mm. difference between those two in terms of you know, what was also? Going I'm on? not sure. Like, it was an interesting turn of phrase, I guess. But he said, "Store up his motivations." I'm not sure what he means by that. Did he mean shore up, as in oh. reinforce? Yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm just guessing. Back. Maybe Turn he just... crucial incriminating evidence later on. The reason Ransom pours his heart out to Marta is not only so that he can manipulate her, but also to store up his motivations for later on. The reason I mean, Marta... I, I guess if you... It store still works as if, as if you are... Yeah, like you have... Like figuratively, you have uh, motivations and you're adding to them like you would store something. You're adding to a stockpile in, in a sense. But it sounds like he's... so he's going to use them for later? Well, he's just building up a supply. Or he's protecting he's his motivations? Something. I don't know. No, he's just... I think he just means he's adding to his... Okay. Um, yes. Harlem play a board game is so that it can be used to progress not only the plot, but also the characters pushing that plot further later on. If yeah, the Go board actually has a lot of relevance to the, the film. There's like three significant sort of aspects. The... The whole, Daniel Craig says it was so weird that um, Ransom changed the conversation to how he gets beaten at Go. That like that clues him onto Ransom being uh, motivated by wanting to win or something. Then of course you have the um, playing to win versus playing to you know be a good person, just being nice, being happy. And then of course the he uses it as an excuse for the thump uh, on the on the roof. Which you'd think would have Artist woken so, up. So amazing that even when she doesn't want to win, she still wins. Oh yeah, that's, I think that's win. a part of the theme of the film, is that be a good person and things just work out anyway, because you're a good person. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that you could to life take that sure. lesson and apply, yeah, yeah, totally I was say, yeah, apply <laughs> that to real life. <clears throat> Sign up for that local chess tournament and uh, let me know how that works out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, though, I just thought something, wouldn't the, um, the thump from when Marta fell over, um, it, it, it alerted, if you remember, uh, Joni, and then they're like, uh, Linda was woken up three times from three people, uh, rising up the stairs. Wouldn't the thump have woken up Linda as well? Uh, it depends where her bedroom is located. I don't know if she just happens to be right underneath the stairs and that's what wakes her up. Maybe, yeah, because they say she's Maybe. a light sleeper, so I figured yeah. that the thump would get her. And also, Maybe. logistically, if she's under the stairs, then she would be under Harlan's room, because it, doesn't it like go up and then up again, and he's in the attic room? Yeah, yeah I'm not sure what the sort of geometry of the room is. Yeah, so that could, I, I could be wrong about that. Think about it. Well, I, I, I'm willing to bet I'm wrong about it, but we, we could... Uh, we could check it out. Every scene, every moment, every character choice and action, it always serves a clear purpose in the grand scheme of things. I would argue that TLJ is, every choice in TLJ is clearly serving a purpose. It's just that it's botched, and I would argue the same for this film. Mm -hmm. For each and every what, there's always a why. Take Odd place to keep know. your, uh... Yeah, so, so for anybody who doesn't know, the idea here is that uh, the maid keeps a weed stash in a clock, and then the characters say, well, who's going to check a clock? Like, that's why she does it. And then uh, the, she's, later on, she tries to give a clue as to where the toxicology report is, and it turns out it's in her weed stash. I think she uses the, the word stash. 
uh, when she's goggling Tisms, which we we need to bring that up too. If this video doesn't bring it up, we will. The um, <clears throat> the, the 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 maid's choice of words upon death. Oh yeah. <laughs> Basically, mm. told me where it was. Warning. I mean, yeah. The uh, so he picks up the <clears throat> ball because he's he doesn't like Harlan and he's now protected the affair and he throws it out, which. Is the only part of that that you can really be like, would that happen? And ha but then he throws it out, and of course, um, it is picked up by Benoit Blanc by happenstance, and then it is replaced. Like he throws it to fetch with the dog. The dog has it, and then Linda finds it with the dog. Linda puts it back in the office, and then she finds the note. That's probably something. By that the I'm way, the, willing to the praise. dog returns the piece of the lattice that broke off. The dog does not fetch the ball. Well, in fairness, the ball goes out the window and Blanc picks it up straight away. And then Blanc throws it for the dog once he sees the dog. Oh, yeah, yeah it did happen Linda, right after. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I got you. When she finds the ball later, it's like chewed up and stuff. Yeah, like the, the dog's, dog's been fucking with, with it. it and while. she's she's like, wait, what the fuck? This is Harlan's ball. This shouldn't be, you know, and she puts it back and then she finds the letter. So, to be honest with you, that's probably that's probably the best thing that happens in the movie in terms of writing. Yeah, timeline-wise... <laughs> It kind of all meshes. It's just the weird, mm -hmm. the, the weird dog lattice. Give to the detective. Here yeah. you go. Sort of man. Lucky that happened. Yeah, there's things surrounding it that are like, eh. yeah. But there's a little yeah, stuff in there. Well, well, you have ransom in there. That's the kind of thing he says. What do we have here? Oh, he didn't even mention. The 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 ball has a longer story than that. It's what we just talked about, but that's fine. Yeah. Oh, well, that's all right. Do you, do you really have to explain this to us? <laughs> yes, yeah, so because of the blood on his shoe, Daniel Craig knew from the beginning that she was involved, which we've got over how stupid that is, and it doesn't affect his interactions with her basically at all. He doesn't take advantage of that yeah, at all. This yeah, this should totally change how he behaves around her, especially when he believes two things. She can't lie without throwing up. She's directly involved in a murder. Also, can you guys appreciate how fucking small that droplet is? It's very, <laughs> yeah. very insane. Like the it just it just that I don't even know it's possible for that amount of blood to travel across the room without air resistance just stopping it. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, <laughs> like, that was the only drop that went that far. It was a. Uh, it was a uh, yeah. like a what, what's to say? What's to say? It's not just a spot of paint or well, something. Well, it could like, be anything. It could be anything. Right. Yeah. Well, he listen. This is Benoit Blanc. He has seen many a blood splatter in his long and illustrious career. As he, well, you could smell that it was. He hard. would recognize a blood stain across the county. What if it was at her blood? Night, uphill both ways. What if it was just from her giving him the morphine and stuff? Well, yeah, normally, there's like a thousand ways. Possible. It could li like. There's so many. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> when did you know I had something to do with Harlan's death? Oh, from the first moment you set foot in front of me. If Marta doesn't have blood on her shoes, there is no reason for Blanc to keep her around, and this movie doesn't work. If oh, this just creates uh, different problems. Yeah, I was gonna say, why would you highlight this as a plus? Yeah. This is a he negative. He shouldn't trust her ever. And he should be grilling her because she has this insane convenient trait. Yeah. Did you kill him? I don't, I don't know. Uh, 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 this is the exact same argument Patrick Willem made. He was like, if Holdo tells Poe the plan, then we don't get a story. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> if Megan doesn't tell the others about Marta's illegal immigrant family, there is nothing they have over Marta, and this movie doesn't work. No, they don't have to know that. They could come up with all sorts of uh, the, conniving, the whole goal is the Slayer and clause. try and frame her. Ha, ha, I mean, the, the mother... whole plot of the evil guy's motivations here for most of the film is trying to frame her. Yeah, I was about to say, they, so we they know want to take that advantage doesn't of work. The, they want to take advantage of the Slayer Clause. The idea that they can... We already know this doesn't work, because she says she'll just fucking fight them with lawyers. Uh... Also, this is just an indictment on this character. That's all it is. 
If Walter doesn't show up to Thren to expose Marta's family, there is no way for Marta to realize that she can use the fortune for that positive purpose, Bullshit. and this movie doesn't Bullshit. work. What, are you, what is happening? <laughs> 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 But because those things do happen, it does work. Because Knives Out is like a two-hour collection- Oh shit, sorry, I wanna show you guys something. I can't remember if I told you this already. Yay. ...purpose, and this oh, movie doesn't shot. work. Yeah. But because those things so, do- here, right? When we were watching yeah. this, the mug says, My house, my rules, my coffee. And yes. uh, yeah. when she's holding it, while standing above the entire family, all of us were like, Ugh, with the overtness. Um, yeah. When they originally shot this, she had her fingers between the words, um, and you could see it fully, and they said, nah, that's too obvious. <laughs> oh, <fuck> off. <laughs> it's just funny to me. And those are CGI-ly moved fingers, just so you know. You can, the, yeah, the left-hand <laughs> side of the coffee cup doesn't align with the bottom of itself. Oh, yeah! You could see how the... Yep. Oh, yeah, that is your bench did. Yeah, the coffee cup... Uh, that is a CGI protection of being too overt with your themes. <laughs> it's like, wow. At least it's not on our face. <laughs> Wait, I just, I just thought it was funny because it's like, oh, is it, is it not fucking very clear? I, 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 all right. Especially because in the scene before this, you just explicitly show the coffee cup in her hands saying those things at the beginning of the scene. It's like it's already <laughs> obvious. Just commit. <laughs> To happen, it does work. Because Knives Out is like a two-hour collection of tiny individual puzzle pieces that that are all broken and spat on and ruined. <laughs> you shove them <laughs> in. Like... All eventually fit in to form one grand no, entirety that makes it what it is. Because there are oh, no it... sideshow <laughs> pointless points of view. That's why it's rewarding. That's why it works. Uh... Huh? Inclusive <laughs> conclusions. Oh boy. The third big problem with The Last Jedi was that the ultimate conclusive payoffs at the end left a very bitter, unsatisfied taste in the audience's mouth. And even though you could say that the payoffs are bad just because of the story choices made with them, I'd argue that there is a more is there any other way objective to reason have underneath. Payoffs? Oh, he, he said he'd rather appeal to an objective reason. Let's do it. <gasps> oh my god. It. The fact that the payoffs don't actually conclusively resolve anything. When the fake codebreaker betrays Finn and Rose, for example, he just vanishes off the movie without ever being dealt with in any way. When what is there to deal with? Yeah, he's gone. He's, he's taking so his he's, money he's and he's mirk, fucking right? off. He does shit for money. They yeah, gave him a higher there. price than you guys. Yeah. I mean, unless like, you just no happen revenge. to bump into him. There's no yeah, revenge there's nothing to else get. He can... Yeah, there's nothing else he can do in the story either. He's got no motivation to stick around. Like, if, let's say there's an episode 10, they burst into his house while he's watching TV, they put guns on him, and they're like, we're gonna fucking fuck you up because of all the, the pain you caused by selling us out. And he's like, I mean, they're gonna kill me. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, is it better <laughs> that we all died instead of just it's you like it's, I mean... You guys fucking blurted out your secretisms while you're on a phone call. Like, yeah, what? Yeah, did it save my life? I mean, what do you, what do you want me to say? I should have just died there with you? Fuck that! Like, why I don't, did I don't the first know the, order let him go at all? Like, why didn't they just shoot him the moment they got the information they okay. needed from him? I'm actually about to because that would be. I guess the idea here is that, if I'm being very generous, it's that the first order is competently understanding that if they kill everybody who helps them legitimately do things, then people are not gonna want to help them if they're just going to get killed <laughs> afterwards anyway. If they show that they reward people who help them, then people will be keen on helping them. I mean, I, I'm willing to, to say that I think that, especially the situation they're in, they would have just tortured them immediately. They torture, like, everybody in, in Force Awakens, right? Straight away, but for some reason they just don't Yeah, they there. kill a whole village. Yeah, like, I, I would think they torture him. However, if he said, yeah, I'm not going to tell you, but if you offer me, like, 100,000 credits and a ship, I'll tell you everything. I could see them being like, ah, fuck it, whatever. We can spare it. Yeah, but... Like, oh, really? Do go on. I would argue... Like, wouldn't he, like, he tells them, and he's like, right, where's my ship? And they're like, huh. <laughs> like, Yeah, we're gonna... <laughs> yeah, you'd think that... I don't know, I mean, I'm fine with... There gets to a point where an evil faction is so evil, it's kind of silly. Like, they're always oh. just killing everybody and like massacring everyone and stuff, to where you're just like, okay, calm down, mm. right? And then there's the, the... Like, this seems like a... 
like a, a maneuver that they because they have the contacts in the Force Awakens in the bar, right? That one chick. So and also they have the bounty for uh, the droid that they've sent out, I guess, to just bounty hunters and smugglers and people randomly that there's a reward offered for this droid and the first order is looking for him. So clearly they work with, you know, non first order entities to get things done. So in that case, this seems to be consistent with that. I, I think my my only criticism of that choice, if that's what they did, is like this is a guy who successfully broke onto their their um, <clears throat> flagship and was poised yeah. to basically destroy their oh, tracker. Oh yeah, that's right. If it, if it was a guy yeah. who offered his services to them right off the bat, I'd be like, oh okay, well it makes sense to do business with him because he's willing to help you. But this guy's only doing it because he's forced into it, and he was about to fuck your entire plan up. Also, it would be a you great know? idea to hire him and have him fucking fix your systems to prevent people like him from breaking in. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> just so yeah. I like how much we're thinking about that. this. They're just when... sending him on his way and just being like, "All right, take your money and take your ship. Off you go. Good luck." Oh, man, every every time it's been years, and every time we talk about TLJ, a new issue popped up it's that we it, haven't ever talked about before. It's probably the, the very <laughs> every time we've peeled back just a few layers of how interesting this, this this could be and what we got in the film. Which, by the way, this is going to double as a defense against Filmento's point here. The point of DJ is that he's not with a faction, he just goes with the flow. He, he, his, whole, his name is Don't Join, Live live Free, Don't Join, something like that, right? DJ, Don't Join. You don't join the good guys or the bad guys, just just be. Just, just you, You're in the universe, you're just going with it. And so people are saying, like, well, surely we need to see comeuppance for the bad guy. It's like, I think the point of TLJ is making about him is he's not a bad guy. He's just, he's just flowing through the universe. Yeah, uh, maybe the point they're going for was if not that, then maybe sometimes people do bad stuff and they get away with it, and they win, well, they profit from yeah, it. Which, they profit from doing the wrong thing. Which I think is a valuable thing to explore, but the, that would be bolstered, mm -hmm. by the way, the whole don't join thing of um, where he's like, the First Order, the Republic, burn it all, <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> it's like, okay, alright. I think that's something that they were going for, you know. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't consider that like a loose, a loose end. I, I just I was just like I don't know, and when the people were like I hope he comes back in the third one, I was like why? Uh. <laughs> Listen, DJ will return in Avengers Endgame. Oh, <laughs> nice. When Ray's parents he bumps are into the to Guardians him. in the third Guardians movie, they just like meet him at a place. That dude, would be dude. hilarious if he was just in a background cameo. I mean, living it up. He's got be... all that money. <laughs> You, like I'm assuming, <laughs> do you remember he is in uh, Infinity War? He's just a different character. It's uh, Benicio del Toro. Oh, the collector. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I forgot about that for a second. I was I was running away with my little my mm -hmm. my head cannon. <laughs> Take it away. He Mendo. just vanishes off the movie without ever being <clears throat> dealt with in any way. When Ray's parents are revealed to be nobodies, it's just left on Kylo Ren's word without ever being solidified. When uh, well, here's the thing. If they were consistent with what Ray learned from the first movie, it didn't matter if it was true or not. <clears throat> well, yeah, that's what the that's what TLJ's going for. It's your parents and nobody, so stop trying to derive your identity from them, which again we didn't there's all there's problems that come with all of that, but I don't he's like they didn't solidify it. It's like do you mean like show a flashback of them being nobodies? What does he mean by that? Yeah, and it's her reaction to it. Instead of like crying and everything. What if she's like, yeah, well, that's okay. My parents don't define me. I learned it from a orange Yoda yesterday. <laughs> Literally. <yeah>. So <laughs> like, uh, this is um, weird. They can't decide whether she really cares or not, or how much value she places on that. But yeah, it, uh, I don't know. I I just, just, uh, when you've got a character with so little personality, then you have to hold on to these tiny little like <laughs> motivational factors. Like, uh, what do we know about her? She wants to know who her parents are. Okay, just stick with that. Well, let's think they spend all three movies telling us where we will not find information on Ray. That's all we ever got. <clears throat> like, thanks. <laughs> just vanishes off the movie without ever being dealt with in any way. When Ray's parents are revealed to be nobodies, it's just left on Kylo Ren's word without ever being solidified. This is a weird criticism because most people just went with the whole, um, the, the, her, be, her parents being nobody was the problem, not that it wasn't solidified. <sighs> you know, I've not really heard this one before. Yeah, I mean, I mean, TLJ, if I was gonna... 
Because in the Force, or sorry, in uh, the Rise of Skywalker, if they they could have still had her parents be important in some aspect and said, oh yeah, Kylo was lying to you so that you would join him. He was banking on the fact that they were actually nobodies. Yeah. Then again, it'd be the it just it just bring up the point of why are we still talking about Ray's parents? Yes. <laughs> um, because the reason instead we of making it... her a fucking Palpatine. No, we wanted that. That's what the fans yeah. wanted. Oh yeah, we didn't then... like the Last Jedi, so we wanted them to overcompensate in the exact you know, opposite direction. To you an know what you wanted degree. instead of this scene with Luke and Kylo, you wanted him in a mecha suit firing lightsaber grenades at every single ATAT. <laughs> That's what you wanted. I want Bib Fortuna back. I need to see what happened to Bib Fortuna after Jabba got killed and he was just sitting there in the palace and no one came back. He's like, well, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, I'm sure they'll be back sometime. I guess, I guess like, I'm good. the boss. <laughs> uh, anyone here? There's just a couple of like pig guards around. Yeah, that and the dead poor rancor. guy He's still like, in hmm. grief. Well, I, 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 don't, I don't know. What, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> they have to cobble what, it together. What did Jabba oh, do? How to rhyme. <laughs> so he just Jabba ate did. shit. <laughs> if Jabba was here, what would he do? And they'd all <laughs> look up to the ceiling, and the, you'd hear the the, you know, the tingling sound, and it would cut away to a little Jabba uh, doing stuff. Little Jabba flashback. Remember, Luke talks sacrifices. About these are revealed to be nobodies, it's just left on Kylo Ren's word without ever being solidified. When Luke sacrifices himself in battle against the First Order, he doesn't actually resolve or change the situation in any way. He uh, the argument that TLJ people would make is that he delayed the First Order so that the heroes could escape. Um, yeah, because with all of the First Order's resources, they they didn't yeah, it's, it's have nonsense. Like, it's fucking the nonsense. entire place, yeah. It pretty, the whole film is predicated pretty... on a hyperspace tracker. They escape the First Order through hyperspace. It's like, well done. And before anyone fucking says, but Mola, the tracker was on the Supremacy, and the Supremacy was in half. First of all, you don't know that the, the tracker is thus broken. You don't actually know that. Secondly, no, it's on all the Star Destroyers. They just only use one at a time because they're really stupid. But because either way, they can turn another well, one that, on. That was... Yeah, I mean, that was explained right at the beginning when it's like, you can't just blow up the supremacy because it'll switch to another tracker or another Dude, ship. as if they could blow it up, though. Like, I know. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> when Poe's like, oh, so we blow it up. Like, that's a thing you can no. just... Yeah, yeah, Poe, that's what we do. We, we, we just blow it up. Fucking hell. He just allows the resistance to flee in order for them to resolve it later. And even though... In a I, can, I can imagine Poe as a general. He's like, guys... What if we just won the war? <laughs> Everyone just looks at each other. Like, Holy fucking shit. That's brilliant. How'd you come up this with that? Genius, this man. <laughs> I can see what Leia sees in you. Balls on this. In the guy. middle chapter, oh, wait, you can solidify. When Luke sacrifices himself oh. in battle <laughs> against the First Order, he doesn't actually resolve or change the situation in any way. He just allows the resistance to flee in order for them to resolve it later. And so I would actually argue if you believe that's what happened, then Luke had a purpose in that scene. Any disagreements? How you, now, how you get there <laughs> well, is totally fucking it, nonsense, this is what I mean. but Phil, at Phil least Mento if we only consider that. those points. Phil Mento believes sure. that he delayed the First Order from getting to our heroes, but the lame part is that the heroes will, you know, they'll, they'll make something of it while Luke died, and that that's... Like, that's lame. And I'd just be like, if you believe that's what Luke did, then surely you believe he served a purpose there. He saved them. Because I don't believe that. I think it's dumb. <laughs> you know, this, I think he, he fucking gave himself up for no reason. No reason! I'm pointing at this comment in the chat. We're talking about Bib Fortuna. He says, no, Bib, Bib uh, he would remember what Jabba would do, and Jabba would appear and says he forgives Bib. <laughs> <laughs> Bib just got a fucking awkward face the whole time, like, what? And he's just like, I He just turns around and there's this life-size apparition of <laughs> Jabba the Hutt there. It'll be the who, but you the And then the subtitle's just like, I forgive you. He puts his hand I on forgive Bib you, Bib. face. <laughs> <laughs> you were my favorite son. Force. Force Hut.
Uh. And even though in a middle chapter you can and should always build toward the third movie and set up stuff for it to resolve, you still have to make your movie resolve its own narrative threads as well in order for it to stand on its own. Or it can feel pretty unsatisfying. What threads are unresolved in TLJ? I thought the problem with TLJ was that they, they cut everything off. It was complete, you know? All we had yeah, left I was... Like, was... I guess... Our yeah, it's it's all away. broad stuff. Like, I guess there's still a first order. Yeah, I guess there's still a rebellion. So I guess they'll do something about that. Like the so I can't believe I'm doing this again. Fucking hell! Why are you making me do this? So the the, <gasps> the conflict of Ray and Kylo in this film is resolved. It's a resounding no from Ray. Right. So they they introduce it, they build it up, and then he offers. Then she says no. That's a completed thing. The thread of like I, we already explained Finn. And this is the thing. It's not. The, the, these things don't exist is my problem. It's how poorly done they are, okay? Like, the... So, like, I'm curious... Because his example of a thread that was never completed was Ray's parents aren't confirmed to be nobody. And I just, like, what... The, 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 the DJ is never, you know, captured or given comeuppance. It's like, what are these... What are you, How are these threads, like, what... I guess if I was <clears throat> going to be generous with the conflict between Kylo and Rey, you could say that, um, you know, it's moved into a different stage now well, yeah. at the end of DLJ, because it's like he's given up on trying to recruit her, and in theory, now it's just full-on war between them. Yeah, but because he said, you need it to, like, leave it open for a third in the trilogy, but you also need to wrap up what you did in this film, and I would say they did that. Yeah. Like, the, the idea in now. this... Yeah, in this film, yeah. they were playing with what, what is Kylo going to come to the good side? Is he? Is he? What's their relationship going to be? Oh, and, and and the end is pretty final. She shuts the door no, on him. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> There's no way Kylo's coming back from no, this. No, he's a bad he's, guy. He's yeah, absolutely he's a, a bad guy. He's a bad guy. dude. And he will be defeated in the third episode by Rey. That's what's probably going to happen. Um, Except something else happens. <laughs> like... Except, yeah, something... Yeah, uh, we got yeah, a thing. Um, so yeah, I don't know. This... It's so weird to like watch a video critical of the Last Jedi, but regularly disagree with it. It's it's odd. Yeah, I mean, but <laughs> we've seen this time and time again. People will criticize things that are bad, but do it in a bad way. So we have to criticize it properly, which comes across in a way as a defense of the thing, which is strange. I and, don't feel um, like myself. <laughs> um, the the other thing I guess is worth highlighting is. <clears throat> Never let it be said that I didn't defend TLJ at some point. Okay. 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 Well, I asked for projections hard, and he dies for no reason. You have Luke commit no suicide. He just doesn't kill Luke. That's what Luke Skywalker. His legacy is just another fart in the wind. And if there is, I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fart. Hmm. One lesson like... Ryan Johnson took from The Last Jedi when writing Knives Out more than anything else, it would be this. Because whereas in his previous movie pretty much nothing gets resolved, here the entire third act is dedicated solely to pinning all of our loose red strings up to their ultimate I mean, it is a murder point. mystery. Yeah, I was about to say, that should happen. <laughs> it better. <laughs> that would be just like Ryan Johnson to just be like, I'm going to subvert your expectations. <laughs> who knows well, who remember, it was? Oh, it's so we weird. were pretty deflated it... when... Um, he drove up to the house with uh, Marta after she'd explained everything because we were like, well, guess it's time for him to wrap it all up with the detective scene. <laughs> we, we were like, whatever their answer is going to be, it's going to be fucking lame. And we were still surprised in the lameness. <laughs> yeah. Exclusive destinations. Essentially, the third act consists of Detective Blanc returning to the house with the family to finally, once and for all, assemble the events surrounding the murder. In other N no, doesn't he assemble them because he she's about to describe to them that she's gonna uh, deny the inheritance? Then she stopped, and then because uh, Blanc only does what he does oh. because of the toxicology report being blank. Yeah, because it's the only the, the first person who thought about looking at a report <gasps> yeah, because this whole what? time Blanc has been confused he doesn't know why he's been hired and he manages to piece it all together once he finds out the toxicology is blank so he didn't come here to do that so in other words it's like a ceaseless 25 minute stretch of dopamine release straight I mean no we had a lot of problems <laughs> and we had a my, lot my of dopamine questions. was locked away at a chest at the bottom of the fucking ocean I couldn't get to yeah, it yeah it's more like <laughs> nopamine <laughs> 
Oh, oh shit. Fucking five. nice. One payment. Nope, I mean, you can buy it in the EFAP store. Off <laughs> after another. He wasn't talking about me. She said you did this. You did this, cause you. Made he thinks that releases dopamine for you. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, notice that during this stream, the only thing we've been calling this character—well, I guess the two things—is Chris Evans, the actor, and Ransom. Yeah. This the character is called Hugh. Called. Everyone, his name is Hugh. Yeah, because dude, there Hattie are people. Lee there Ray. are people in this chat watching the stream who've not seen this movie because they like EFAP. So here it goes. If you hadn't understood this previously, his name is Hugh Ransom. Uh, what's the Brimley? <laughs> what's what's the name? Brim, Brim, yeah, it Brimley. <laughs> yes, so, Brimley. Hugh, I'm gonna go with it. Hugh <laughs> Ransom Hugh Brimley. Brimley, right? But he goes by <laughs> Ransom because he's not a fan of the name Hugh. And at one point during the film, he walks into the house and the, the, the detectives are there and they're like, are you Hugh? And he goes, oh, like, are you Hugh Ransom Brimley? <laughs> and he's like, uh, just call me Ransom. I go by my middle name. Like, okay. Now, when Marta discovers the, the poor maid who's been injected with a more than fucking lethal amount of morphine, but whatever, uh, the maid needs, the maid at this point knows that Ransom is the one that did it to her, that Ransom's involved with the death of Harlan, and that if she can simply implicate him, we can set everybody in motion to catch him. So what do you say if you're the maid, everyone? You of course say, you did this. <laughs> And then you scare poor Marta, because she's like, what? I did this? Oh, jeez. But then in the big reveal scene, it turns out she wasn't saying, you did this. She was saying, Hugh did this. But I'm bam. Isn't that a miracle of a piece of writing? That she referred to him as Hugh when it's so close to you when nobody calls him Hugh? Yeah. Oh... Yep. Uh, exciting. Yay. Who, uh, hmm. What? Wait, someone in chat just said he specifically says he makes the help call him Hugh. Is that true? But even still, why, that wouldn't matter. Why would he specifically have only her call him Hugh, the name that he doesn't like to be called, but she gets a... What? Well, why? it wouldn't matter. Everyone else refers to him as Ransom. Besides, why does everybody ignore the fact that he was named Hugh because it rhymes with you? <laughs> Nobody ever, like, <laughs> recognizes this. But, uh, yeah, why would you do that? Instead of Ransom. Because, nor because a lot of normies will watch that and they'll think it's so fucking clever. Ransom did this. You did this. Also, she does it in an accusatory manner. I always have to bring that up. Like, yeah. You. You. <laughs> <sighs> but hey, that's something actually. I, I didn't actually know that. I, I I've seen the film twice, and I didn't catch that he said that the, he makes the help call him that. I just checked the script. Uh, apparently, it says uh, to help call me Hugh. Okay. Wait, does he does he say that he makes them do that? Yeah, it's uh, it's a uh, Hugh Drysdale, and it's like Ransom. Call me Ransom, my middle name. To help call me Hugh. That's, why? Yeah, I, why? I don't know. He doesn't like being called Hugh. That's so he, weird. So the help keeps calling him something that he doesn't want to be called, and... And these why, are the though? people that he can kind of order around? Well, this isn't even an ordering around. It's just like, I go by Ransom, everyone calls me Ransom, no one calls me Hugh. Why? Why would? How would it have even yeah, started that they would have called him that? Because I was gonna. And the first I was time gonna they called him that, he'd be like, "Oh, I, I go by Ransom. I don't go by Hugh. No one calls me that." Uh, the help don't like him, so they call him Hugh. The help call Nobody him likes him. <laughs> That's a yeah, big thing. Never... Everyone hates him. Why do the Why do the help not like him? Well, for the same reason that apparently everyone doesn't. He's an ass. He's mean to people. He shouts. I don't know. Oh. Also, apparently, in the first scene when she says, you did this, she ex actually says you, and not no, you. No, you. You. No. But I can see why he's an ass to his family, because his family are fucking insufferable. <laughs> what did the help do to him to where he'd behave like that? That's weird. Wait, and Marta says, you did this, because you made the help call you Hugh. 
Because you're an asshole. But, okay. Well, wait, why is he an asshole if he makes him call him Hugh? I don't know. But that's his name. So they were going to so call him the thing that he <laughs> to be called, and he's like, no, you'll call me the thing I don't want to be called. What, what the, the fuck, fuck dude? See, the script's like, Kelp call you Hugh because you're an asshole. I was like, what? I don't I don't is the is the meme there that like he doesn't like being called Hugh, so the the help call him Hugh to spite him? I guess. So why but not refer to him as fucking like... ransom still when you could? Oh. He's definitely not getting called Hugh anywhere between this because we have Hugh Ransom Drysdale, blah blah blah, and then the next time is when everything gets cleared up. <laughs> it's nothing else in between. The name Q is seven is seven times in the script. So funny. So weird. It was called Hugh just <laughs> just so they could have that dopamine rush of you. <laughs> That's so odd. I hope you all felt it. I made the help call you Hugh. Damn. Are you? Oh my god! He actually put in a reaction of how cool that is. Damn. Oh. Back again already. Cause earlier that night. Yeah, and hi. Damn. You gave him the correct medication because you are a good nurse. Damn. No. No. No, that is, this is fucking not a thing. That shit insane. It's yeah. an incredibly reckless thing to do that you medicate. You could accidentally give him a hundred milligrams of fucking morphine. <laughs> like, that's not what you do. Don't even look at the label. Fuck it. It just feels you, right in my hand. I'm just such an amazing nurse. I could tell the difference between a bottle of this and a bottle of that without even looking at it. And even though a man's life is in the balance, fuck it. So much dopamine. <laughs> um, uh, again, I just remember we sure, heard this the first time and it was I, just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I feel like, chat, in case chat I've followed, right? So there's two vials. Let's just call them poison medicine, okay? For the sake of this. Um, ransom takes an injection of the entirety of poison out, and the same for medicine, and then he injects them back into each other, so now the, the, the potions are swapped. Now Marta picks them up, and of course you're thinking, she checks for medication, puts the needle in, gets it out, and gives it to, to Harlan. And of course he dies. Um, but no, he doesn't die for a while, and it's kind of weird, but of course it makes sense because he was never injected with poison. He had medicine mm. the whole time. How did that happen? Because she, she picked up the bottles, and if you watch the scene, they're very careful to do this. She has her fingers over the labels, but she recognizes mm. the liquid. The, the difference, as, <laughs> as Daniel Craig puts it, in viscosity. <laughs> That's how she gave him the right one instead of the wrong one. Oh, it's insane. The dopamine hits are coming thick and fast, man. <laughs> he considers this a great payoff. Are you kidding me? Nurses don't do this. Great nurses certainly don't do this. Did, didn't we have someone in your stream drink out that said, if I would do this, I'll get fired? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, straight up there, like, yeah, I'm a nurse and yeah, I would be struck from the register for doing this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's insane. Well, I because I know a nurse who um, I asked about this and they said, like, it's, it's, this is the kind of shit that's like criminal negligence. But of course, she's a great nurse. She's a caring heart. She's a great soul. She's it's fine. so good. She checks a vial after she injects. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're giving her too much credit. She doesn't even check. <laughs> she just lets. Well, it she. Well, afterwards. Oh, I guess you're right. She did eventually look at the vial, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she's like after she injects them. She's like, oh wait, I fucked up. Who could have seen this happening? <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. Um, the reason she spotted that was because she was getting the like, is it three milligrams of uh, morphine out? And she grabs the other vial, and this is one where she wasn't covering the label, I guess, and that's how she discovered that. But it weighed the, the same, so yeah, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. All those puzzle pieces we've been gathering throughout this movie, this is- I'm sorry, there was- there was no indication that they were going to reveal she is such a good nurse, she gave him the wrong drug. <laughs> that was <laughs> insane. <laughs> she covered up what she believed to be a death by her own incompetence. She was trying to cover that up. 
is where they are each put in their final places in a way that reveals their true ultimate purpose in the big picture. The true ultimate purpose? How about that? Every narrative ultimate thread actual. still hanging in the air gets concluded in a way that has a clear effect on the ultimate outcome. From the tiniest details to the main thematic character arcs. Marta, for example, throughout this whole movie has struggled with her kindness that seems to all... She struggles struggled with, with her kindness. kindness. <laughs> How? <laughs> she is so pure, she struggles with her own kindness. Oh, that's good. Always throw her in trouble. It doesn't matter how good your heart is. You gotta face the consequences. And of which she does not. Except she doesn't. Yeah, she <laughs> she does can not. literally flee the police in a high-speed car chase and nothing happens. It's fine. Don't worry about it. You're too pure. You, yeah, how can you argue that? She gets away with so much fucking shit in this movie. Holy... Ugh. And now we finally get the conclusive answer that her kindness is actually the very thing that makes her overcome all her troubles and obstacles. With Ransom, we've... So he's arguing that because um, she chose to save uh, uh, Fran, it actually turns out that that's, that was the best thing to do. But we've argued since the fucking beginning, I don't know why it wasn't something she would do. She knows she didn't poison Fran, so whoever did is involved. So the so let me, let me clear this out for you, right? The argument is, she's not going to save Fran because Fran is the one who's threatening her with a toxicology report that she believes will come back dirty that'll fuck up her, her mum's place in the USA. So, if she lets Fran die, that means she dies with the toxicology report and no one's going to find out. However, if she's a good-hearted person, she will save Fran. And the key information you're leaving out there is that someone poisoned Fran. Who wasn't Marta, and Marta knows that. So if Marta was acting purely selfishly, she would still save Fran so that Fran could tell her who the person who poisoned her was. And this person is probably fully aware of the toxicology report. Otherwise, how the fuck did any of this happen? Fran was left with a, a burnt copy of it, you remember? Like, it's so badly written. <laughs> but, but the, all they're trying to do is tell us that Martha is an amazing person. I've <sighs> always known that he's a bit of a selfish douchebag, but here we finally see just how far it reaches and how it's Please that unkind selfish while. arrogance that makes him lose. As in, kindness defeats selfishness. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's bullshit, though. Kindness defeats yeah. selfishness. She saved what, her, what she loved while he tried to hit, destroy what he hated. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it just keeps coming back. Thematic question fully resolved. I mean, even when we're at the end, Johnson still goes that I like how the police are never... Uh, I like how the police never go to Marta and you're like, so you tried to cover up what you thought was... Yeah. You know, a man's dead yeah. kind of because of you. <clears throat> this, We're gonna have to take you in and ask you some questions. Yeah, so so it'd be like, let's just get this timeline straight. So you did that, and you chose to try and cover it up as a suicide in order to protect yourself from, like, you know, I guess, uh, what, what was it? Sorry? And then, because she can't lie, she goes, oh, protecting my mother from being deported. And he's like, ah, okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, hmm. Let's look into that, Jeffrey. And Jeffrey's like, okay. And he's like, so moving on. What were you doing? Why weren't you telling us, uh, like, 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 more information? And, 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 and when you were with us, you know, that security tape, it just, it just got damaged randomly. Was, was that you? Yes. Tampering with evidence. <laughs> was like, oh, okay. And you, you, you deliberately walked over your own footprints then, I assume. Yes. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> tampering with evidence as well. And then when you were with what Ransom, you know? your goal was to destroy the evidence that would have implicated you in order to have the money for yourself and for Ransom. Yes? Yes. Huh. You're not really a great person, are you? <laughs> there's, there's, there's a lot going on here. It's, uh, hmm. But the man I accidentally killed wanted this. He's like, oh, oh, okay. Oh, all right. Well, yeah, that makes it all okay. You're coming with us. If you put it that way. <laughs> A mile to give conclusive payoffs to things we didn't even know we needed conclusive payoffs to. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What the That's assault, by the way. <laughs> Who cares? He's an evil man. Yeah. Oh, look, he's having the reaction I was telling you about Mel. See, he's already like, ooh. That means she's lying! That's right. Fran's dead. And you just confessed to her murder. And because. <laughs> so let's talk about that. <laughs> Um, at this point in the film, it's discovered that Ransom 
probably killed Fran. We'll try to. The, the good thing is, no one can prove that shit, because, you know, Fran's dead, right? They're just like, no, she's not dead, she's in hospital, and the, if she wakes up, she can implicate him as attempted murder. And then he says, well, attempted murder means I killed it, but really, I didn't, he, he it's this fucking clunky-ass line. It's insane. He yeah. says, I guess I killed Fran. Oh, wait, I didn't, because she's alive, and that means attempted murder, and that means I get out of prison and I can destroy Barter's life. He, like, he's, he goes super villain cartoon show straight rem away. Remember, yeah. remember, just to be clear, these two police officers are here <laughs> listening to this, yep. as is the detective, as is Marta. And he, instead of just sitting there in his chair, not saying a fucking thing, like a smart person, well, like well, someone who would even a slightly intelligent person would say, a normal person would do. I got a do, reference for you, Rex. Nothing. A reference to a show well, that we were pretty critical of, to be honest with you, but we still thought was pretty good. Uh, Fargo season one, when um, the police officers keep trying to ask Lester Nygaard his involvement with... Um, you know, different parts of, of the events, and he keeps trying to sort of squeakily lie and go, oh, I don't want to talk about it, oh, no, no, no. And then once he realizes he's actually in trouble and that they have enough evidence and positions on him to, to, to get him in trouble, he just, he nuts up and just goes, I want a lawyer. Yep, I want a lawyer. That's what oh, you yeah, see in a lot of TV because humans aren't stupid enough to be like, I did kill him and I'd do it again. <laughs> You're like, okay. <laughs> Um, anything to reduce your prison sentence should be your goal, which, by the way, he says explicitly in this scene is something he wants to do, and yet he's like, yeah, I killed her. Like, oh. <laughs> and of course, the reveal is, she lied. She's not actually alive, she can't implicate Ransom, but he just admitted to killing her, so that means he's going to jail for murder. And this is one of those instances where she lies, time passes, then she throws up. Yeah, this is the longest yeah. amount of time in the whole film that she manages to go without throwing up, and I don't understand if it's a reflex, how is it not happening, instant bleh, happening instantly? Every other time it seems to, but you know. Whatever. It's such a good film, dopamine. 100 milligrams of dopamine. Because it goes that extra payoff mile, mm. the ending here just feels <clears throat> so satisfying. No. Which is what every movie at the end of the day in some way should strive I'm to I'm looking be. at a man with vomit all over his face. I'm actually disgusted and I don't want to look. <laughs> um, he, just, he just said it's really satisfying and that's what all films should strive to be. What a worthless fucking line. <laughs> yeah, fuck that shit. As so clearly shown by The Last Jedi. And if there is one conclusive payoff to take from Knives Out, it's that Are maybe they it's a brick time wall? to... <laughs> it doesn't seem like they hit him much of the fire. But... I was like... I don't know, man. Keep, keep, maybe that's, keep the maybe that's cool. a thing. Maybe I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Because I, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm just watching him spray a brick wall, and I'm like, huh, I wonder if that actually helps. That, that's, <laughs> that's where you have to do multiple takes, and it's like, oh shit, we don't want to put out the actual smoke. <laughs> the actually put the fire. Fire. <laughs> We're just going to do this again. Oh, no. <laughs> To let all things like the last jedi die maybe it's time to finally forgive ryan johnson <laughs> nah someone right said there. you spray the smoldering wood it's a thing like no 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 he was spraying the unburned brick wall yeah, i was gonna exterior. say rags did say brick not wood as far as i could we even we even paused it on it how did you miss this and start embracing him as what he has now proven he very obviously is one pretty Terrible damn writer. good writer <laughs> <laughs> You just say one talented writer. What? No. no, no, he's good at he's good at fooling people like you who aren't critical into thinking things are good. So that's a talent of a kind, I suppose. Yeah, and we're not dealing with like um a five or a six that's been elevated to like an eight or a nine. We're dealing with like a fucking what? What? What, what do you think this ranks? Rags three. Uh, knives out. Um, two maybe. It's kind of Batwoman level. Well, I would rate it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this kind of plays out like an episode of Batwoman. I was gonna say, like, don't... I, I can't yeah. really distinguish it from Batwoman outside of obviously the actors are way better in this, the cinematography yeah, is way better, production the production values, is the better. acting is yeah. way better. <laughs> if we're strictly talking about writing, I would say it's on about Batwoman level. Yeah, Batwoman's are two, right? Yes. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking two ish in terms of writing. This is really bad. There's a lot of problems here that are, I might... they're not just like, Kind of problems. They're like very, very core fundamental problems with a story. 
I was about to say, sorry, I thought about that for a bit longer. I was about to say I'd give it a three just for those few bits that we pointed out that were actually like, oh, that was good, that was good. But I was like, oh, wait, Batwoman has like one or two things that we do point out that are good. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, but that's one or two <laughs> moments across a that TV are show across or... like a whole season. And this has one or two moments. Well, but like, does that matter if it's the it... same ratio? Oh, wait, well, I guess it I isn't th the same ratio. Yeah, I, I feel like this movie, if, if this movie and Batwoman season one had the same amount of good episodes, I... I, I feel like in terms of, you know, time to good moments, you know, good, then this one squeaks out ahead. All right. Should we give it a three, do you reckon, then? Three? I, yeah, I'm fine with giving it a three. Same. Because I, I, I think the... Yeah, I'm fine with giving this a three. All right. <laughs> embracing him as what he has now proven he very obviously is. One no. pretty damn good writer. Ugh. Oh no. Alright detectives, time to name that mysterious mystery oh, sponsor. Boy. If you can put these highly difficult clues together, you'll win a prize. It's a super hot free-to-play yeah. fantasy <laughs> there you go. mobile game yeah. that works both Imagine on mobile our as well as on desktop. It so people are uh, predatory, pay-to-win. Yeah, I mean, uh, you can go bullshit. ahead and Chill for yeah. for for, for get, uh, what are the possibly money. worst types of games that exist? It's yeah, pretty damn solid reviews. It's all about this pretty damn solid reviews from IGN. <laughs> like I, I assume that Which was a joke, but it's just it's just awkward because you know how bad this is. Yeah, everyone knows it's bad. No one thinks it's good. All of the reviews are overwhelmingly negative, and yet <laughs> mysteriously, it has like a flawless rating. What do you know? <laughs> how interesting. And it's like the third most played game. It's a massive world where you choose from a dozen of playable heroes Whoa. and do a hella cool battle against other characters and bosses. Dude, you choose characters and you fight bosses. Have you ever heard of this? Was the king's warring folly prompted by the will of the Lord of Darkness? I don't even fucking know what that means. All within this high-stakes <laughs> storyline, so full of subversions and points of view <gasps> and payoff. Subversions. Listen, subversions, oh my god. <laughs> It's like it was written by Ryan Johnson. Hang around oh, in the no. main hub. Upgrade. I would wow, be, Ryan I, Johnson, I don't believe your writing's as good as Rage dude, Shadow Legends. I don't believe for a fucking second that Phil Mento has consumed the storyline of Rage Shadow Legends. Like, really? Who would have played this game who's actually Here's chilled what happens. for it? What, what happens is, he said yes. When, when this company said, we want you to shill our shitty product, he said, ooh, money, yes, please. Well, it, it, and they no, sent yeah. him a pack of assets that included stuff like this to show yeah. off. And one of them just happened to be snippets of the story. We got two almost nonsensical statements. And so he's like, wow, so many subversions, such incredible storylines. Well, I just like that he didn't put like just a generic commercial at the end of his, uh, his video. Like he actually like, tailored this to his, he tied it back to the Ryan Johnson stuff. I, well, I mean, isn't that the standard uh, at this point? Minuscule amount of work. I was going to say, that's what most... That's what most channels try to do, to appear as though they've put more effort into the shilling than, you know, zero. Like, yeah, look, I, think, I tied yeah. it into my video, and you're like, uh-huh. Yeah, because I, I wrote a little thing on a script while the pre-packaged asset stuff that they sent me in an email plays in the background. Like, this isn't his video that he made, he's just playing the shit that they gave him and said, we're oh, gonna yeah. pay you to show this on your video. Radio champions battle against other players, just do like whatever and entirely for free. So, with these <clears throat> clues, detectives, do you have any idea? Entirely for it's free. not actually Raid Shadow Legends, it's gonna actually turn out to be Pokemon Go or Candy Crush. I just, I just want to highlight though, entirely for free. It's such a oof. it's such a fucking lie. Uh. You know exactly that this game is you know that this game isn't free to play. This is free to dip your toe in, but to do anything approaching meaningful. You have to shell out money. I think, so don't, I don't give if, me that bullshit about how it's free. I think Jay, technically. Uh, I don't know if he's making a video, but um, when playing Raid Shadow Legends, apparently in the first, like, I, I think it was an hour. I, I, I'd have to ask him again, but the, the, uh, the there was, like, something like 17 pay pop-ups or some shit. It was fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, by the way, chat, it's not like Honey and It's not Honey Pop. Honey Pop is totally i i i don't know if i paid for i don't, I don't even know where i played it i played it though it didn't have to spend any money inside of it I did, no microtransactions in honey pop 
How dare Shadow you take Honey Pop and stoop it down to Raid Shadow Legends? Oh yeah, level. let me let me just say, not all microtransactions are created equal. Okay. Oh yeah, absolutely yeah. Legends. Oh, you already know. Okay. Well, you win. Now step up and claim your prize. Click the link below right now and get the game for free as well. Oh my wow, good I get the game God. for free. If I click the link below, I get the game for free, as opposed to everyone else who had to pay for the game. It's a bonus of 100,000 silver. Oh, 100,000 silver, dude. Pieces. Wow, 100,000 silver? Oh, 50 uh, emeralds, gems. I get a, I get a green bottle, and I get 50 emeralds, is that and a, I get one... Dude, is that a vial of uh, morphine? Is it 100 milligrams? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, 100 oh my God. milligrams of green? Is it you dopamine? You by the viscosity of it. <laughs> oh no. An energy refill, plus a super fantastic totally free champion whose name alone will scare off your- Oh, Executioner? Executioner. Dude, that's wow. like my favorite character. Um, okay, Remember, Executioner He's, he's from great. Batwoman. He's the guy with He looks the... nothing like an Executioner, as far- It's not a very stereotypical- But he has six purple stars, and he's level 60! Shit. Wow, attacks oh, a, one enemy, has a 15% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. <laughs> stun. Go to the video description and click on the special links, and if you are new... I think I won't. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, I, would I don't think I will. <laughs> so shit. I would never, if, if I ever do a Raid Shadow Legends video, just someone... Kill I me. need help, <laughs> and you need to call the police and say, this man, has this been replaced. doggo... <laughs> The Pope, Pope. He's been okay, yeah. he's been kidnapped and replaced with a clone by Palpatine. Oh no! I think Palpatine's I'd rather play Last version of, of Two again. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Player, you will get a hundred thousand silver plus fifty gems plus one. And Shit, how much is a thou? That's the thing. If if this is an earnest advertisement, I'd be like, man, here's what a hundred thousand silver means, though. Because if you've never played. Guild Wars 2, and I told you, oh yeah, I'll give you 20 gold. You have no idea what the actual well, cool. value is. You could have said 2 million is. gold, and I'd be like, oh, that sounds like a lot, and you're like, <laughs> Like, oh, actually, the, the, the in-game economy is totally inflated. 2 million gold is like yep. $3 of real-world currency. <laughs> um, and that's the thing about these games, right? So, I'm a, I've never played Raid Shadow Legends before. I picture the gameplay loop is you go through, like, a, a corridor, and you knock out a bunch of grunts, uh, all level one is probably all grunts. Level two is probably all grunts, but a, a couple of like big dudes. Level three is probably the same thing. Level four ends with a boss fight, and it's really hard to beat, and you're about to lose your health. And it's like you can heal your team for just uh, you know uh, ten thousand silver, and you use. You some can of your... save the princess. All you have to do is show your heroes your credit card number and the three numbers <laughs> on the back. Well, yeah, and, and they like, can we all push the evil dragon. You all know how this works, right? And, and and of course, it gets to the point where you run out of your silver or whatever free currency you had, and it's like, oh, if you beat that next boss, you unlock Galaxinator, and you're like, oh, and it's like, but that boss, oh, he's not dying. Oh, you, your team is dying. Uh -oh. oh, uh, the, you know, the ex executioner is has been knocked out, and he's gonna recover in one day of time. You can speed up the time with just one pound or one dollar, and you're like, oh, one one dollar, that's a fucking bargain. Hell yeah. Go. Yeah, I want to win for a dollar. That's cheap. And then you get him up, and you kill the thing, and you get this this new champion. You're like, yes, now I can use this champion to do the same thing I just did. <laughs> you're like, okay. <laughs> And it goes on and on, and apparently now they're implementing stories like that. Shit sounds hilarious. Can you imagine how bad the writing is in Raid Fucking Shadow Legends? <laughs> oh, I cannot imagine. I'm I'm still considering doing a, a review of it because it's I'm pretty I'm sure it's going to be shit. Yeah, this is. Um, it's funny he mentioned the dopamine thing because this is like they, they build this shit in a lab. <laughs> like yeah. the whole point is like to why get do you think these mobile games are the scourge of gaming? Why anybody who get if you're out there and you play games. If you have any shred of concern about the state of video games, the biggest blight on video games right now is bullshit like Raid Shadow Legends that is designed to suck as much money with its addictive game mechanics and its, and its dopamine hits. This is the fucking problem with games right here. You think yeah, EA's yeah. bad? <laughs> you think that shit's bad? Fuck that! It's mobile games are well, yeah, the if, ultimate answer. If we're talking about how the mechanics in La The Last of Us 2 have problems, and someone said, well, the mechanics in Raid Shadow Legends are worse, we'd all look at you like, we're talking about games. Yeah. <laughs> like, these are, these are Skinner boxes and gambling uh, in a 
uh, what I call slot machines. And these are these are um, like marketing tactics dressed up as games. These things fool you into thinking that they're games. This that's how they get <laughs> you. It's just like when I uh, years and years ago when Plants vs Zombies two came out, and I was like, oh, I like the first one. I'll play this next one. And it did the same fucking thing yep. where you play through and you play through, and then all of a sudden it gets super. Once you're once you start to get invested in the game, it, the difficulty spikes really hard, and you're like, oh shit. And then they're like, well, you know, if you, you can just buy pay these little brains, they'll let you increase the da 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 da. And I'm like, yep, I'm out. Fuck you. You, you can just tell they used like teams of psychologists to predict, <laughs> like, okay, what's the optimum amount of time it takes for a person to get really into a game? And yeah. like, that's when we'll hit them with the paywall. Well, that's what the it's real value that. is. The real value is knowing how to make these games. Be because the actual game itself, you could just copy and paste that and clone it and reskin it a hundred times over. That doesn't matter. The real value is knowing how to make these. It's like, yeah, meth is meth, but knowing how to make the meth, that's where the, that's where that's breaking the bad. value right there. And uh, it's funny because... I'm assuming you would have seen it, Rags, maybe, I don't know, but uh, Jim Sterling had that video where um, like a, an email got leaked from people who make games like this and, and whatever other uh, sort of predatory aspects of bigger games as well. But they were like, that they love whales, uh, not the country, not the animal, but, well, the, the metaphorical representation of a, a person who just shoves dollars into games like this. Like, there are rich people out there who will plug, like, all of their fucking revenue into this into these fucking games because they're just like ah oh, I just love the winning it's so it's so much and you need to pull them out like it's okay because you know we joke but like you can get seriously addicted to this shit yeah that's how they're designed I mean there's a reason why it, it's just like with it, it's just like with drugs right that first one's free those first levels to get you interested they'll they'll free for a couple days maybe a week. You'll be plowing through the game, having a gay old time. Things will be great. Life's just right as rain, having a good time. And then all of a sudden, whomp, you hit that wall. It gets super difficult, and you're like, shit, what the fuck happened? If only there was a way to progress. Oh, I could buy 100,000 silver if I watch this fucking video on Knives Out. That's amazing. That's great. And then that just, what does that do? It builds and builds and builds. Once you spend that first bit of money, now you're even more invested. And if you're in for a penny, well, I we all, we all know how that goes. I'm not just going to give up my Raid Shadow Legends account. I'm not just going to stop playing. I've already invested so much time and money into it. I'm not going to stop. I hope and you appreciate you're on the street this, this random fucking <laughs> rage that Rags and I are having against Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> It's just like like someone said in, in the chat, like, well, Flash gets his, his ads on him are good. It's like, yeah, that doesn't change that he's shilling for a shitty fucking product that no one should ever advertise. Yeah, it's pretty awkward, because obviously, if you talk to the creator, they'll be like, well, I needed the money. And you're like, ooh. Ooh. Like, I've gotten emails from them wanting to advertise with dog bites. And I look at the money that they offer for that, you know, and I'm like, damn, well, the I most can only I've imagine had is, uh, for what they offer for these that. pictures. Yeah, well, this is the thing, like, um, you just have to do some hypotheticals. You'd be like, just take everything to the logical extremes of, of like, what kind of unethical... Well, so, uh, we had examples, right? The, um... Fuck, what was it called? BetterHelp? Remember that? Everyone remember BetterHelp? Yeah, yeah, BetterHelp. That was a big old fiasco that and, blew up. And the, the YouTubers that were desperately trying to be like, look, it's... I didn't know. And it's like, oh, It's oh. your responsibility to know what you are advertising. That is, if, if, some, if your favorite YouTuber comes to you and says, oh, I didn't know, I, I, didn't, I, di I didn't have this basic knowledge of the product that I had, I didn't look up reviews, I just didn't know, it's your responsibility to know. Well, if I mean, you're going to show something, <clears throat> that, that's up to you. That's something that you have to take responsibility for. When I had my Tay Rock watch ad, I said, you got to send me one, I got to know it's good, I got to be able to vouch for it personally. And they did. And I still wear that one. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like, it's the same criteria as like, you wouldn't review a movie if you haven't seen it. You know, you can't, you can't uh, shill a product yeah, and, if you haven't tried it and, and dude, liked right? it. You consider it bad enough to do that on its own. Imagine doing that for money. 
<laughs> like, yeah. how, does, how does that improve it? It's like, well, because I need the money. It's like, really, though? Like, were you dying without this? Are you serious? And, and like, and I just, just, just so we're clear, like, you're not a bad person or anything if you show for Raid Shadow Legends. That's just not a good thing to do. Agreed. Right? And obviously, every scenario is going to be different. But it is what it is. And I mean, this, this is probably I mean, a long I mean, time coming. We've never really properly explained why we don't do ads on EFAP. Uh, not necessarily, that's not exactly a reason for why we don't do it as a whole, but that's why we don't do it for uh, Raid Shadow Legends for fucking one. So, yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah. Um, I would, this thing, I'll, I'd never show for Raid Shadow Legends. Now, if it was the only thing keeping me off the street, uh, 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 but even then, I'm not jumping on yes. I feel like, yeah. surely you can find, there's loads of sponsors, and they react to, like, people contacting them. Yeah, I mean, that, that's like, when, when you get a, when you have a YouTube channel, and you have a channel email, you get emails all the time, I still get them. All the time, and oh, they're wow. almost, by oh. the way, almost all mobile games. Nick S said, you make so yep. much money from Super Chats anyway, so, yes, that, that's why we don't do it, because we make enough money anyway. Obviously, if we... We didn't, yeah, that's much like in no, the yeah. first set of EFAPs, we, we were obviously running ads back then because we needed them, but then we stopped. Oh yeah, yeah. We, I, I remember when we got to that pivotal EFAP, when we, 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 we went to the, our counting house uh, together, we opened up the coffers and we counted it all and we're like, you know what, I think it's time to finally turn off advertisements and our sponsorships for every frame of pause. We did it. We can finally have some level of intent. And, and then again, we high like, five. It's not. It's not. Not all sponsorships are like a, a bad move at all. In fact, Dollar Shave Club looks like something that's pretty good from what I've seen. You know, Audible. Um, yeah, some things I I have. Yeah, I have Shield for uh, like I said, Tayrock, uh, makers of uh, Watchmaker, uh, and I. There's a reason I did, and I didn't just say yeah. They, they didn't just email me. I said hell yeah, I'll do that for the money that you said. Also, in fairness, like, it no, makes a lot of sense because you and I both were watching basically every Total Biscuit and Jim Sterling video back in the day. So it's really hard to follow all of their shit and not conclude that mobile games <clears> are the <throat> cancer of the fucking gaming world. Yeah. Yeah. I will gladly shill for. Like, there are products that I recommend. The Logitech G600 mouse. I will. If Logitech sent me an email and said, hey, we want to pay you to promote this mouse, I'll say, fuck yeah, I've been promoting that shit for free for years anyway. <laughs> I have a spare G600 at the side of my desk. I, if Zotac contacted me and said, hey, you've, you know, we want to pay you money to recommend our graphics cards. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I've been doing that anyway for years. I, your, your cards are great. Fuck yeah, absolutely. I want people to buy your stuff. It's good. Um, someone said you, I mean, you use ads on YouTube, though. So we don't actually personally approve any of those ads whatsoever. Yeah. I don't tell you oh, that the oh, things we... on those ads are good for you, and that everyone should play oh, them, and that they're free. I... If we could, there's no way YouTube would allow that to happen, because think <clears throat> of all of the advertisements that would be on, like, like let's say, um, Brandon Herrera, or, um, Forgotten Weapons, or, you know, Iraq Veteran 8088, and all those, the, like, a, like a gun channel. Think of mm -hmm. all the companies, from Glock to Six R to anyone uh who would love to put their ads in front of their stuff like youtube wouldn't approve that because it's yeah. fucking youtube so you know if we could actually choose our ads that would be so good for us it would be, it would be unless pretty, i'm not thinking this yeah, through all the way but as far yeah. as i know that would be great for like if you were deemed a controversial channel like you know like gun channels are uh especially in youtube's eyes Oh hell yeah, that'd be great for them. Instead of having no ads because it's oh it's con it's gun content firearms related well, I, content. Dude, there must have been like a Rise of Skywalker ad on one of my videos at some point. Like Well that means surely. that you endorse. Well that, yeah, that's the thing. It's YouTube's the one that the buck stops with that one. But if I have a baked in ad that I've personally done and you hear my voice like approving it, then I gotta be really fucking careful with what I'm approving. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, Rage Shadow Legends. Plus one free champion executioner. Do it, and I'll see you in there. 
detectives. No, you won't. Yeah, that's another thing that the no, ads do. They're like, shit. play with me. And it's like, oh, that's... Because no. all of these things are required um, by, uh, I think, the raid deal. You have to, like, there's certain phrases you have to say. Because, of course, you can make a compilation of every single person who has ever said, uh, it's free. It's the top... Th Don't they usually say it's in the top three most played games? It's It's got over a million users or some shit. I can't remember all the different blurbs. Yeah, well, that'd be people that play it once, and then they're like, no fucking way, I'm done. <laughs> well, it's... The ones that really get me when they're like, this game is very good. I'm like, oh, do you... <laughs> But, but really though, <laughs> All right, and that was Knives Out. It was better than, yeah. Knives Out was better than Last Jedi, which, wait, what do you think of that statement? Last, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. it made me less angry. Mm -hmm. Like, writing-wise, yeah, with... they're, they're similar, but like, at least Knives Out doesn't destroy what came before. Yeah, if the writing was totally equal on both, well, then what, what, what's the next thing that we have to move to? Well, I guess it would be the fact that one of them shits on canon and creates problems for stuff outside of itself. Like, The Last Jedi, like, even Knives Out is terrible. Knives Out ruins Knives Out. The Last Jedi doesn't just ruin The Last Jedi. It's infectious garbage creeps out and infects other things as well and drags them down and then it creates problems for the following films too Knives Out at least is a self-contained disaster yeah I think that's the best way of looking at it and <laughs> a self-contained disaster I don't know if we covered all of our issues with with um, with Knives Out but you can go and check out on Drinker's channel that all of us discussed it for like two and a half hours, just specifically the film, if you want to know more about what we thought was really dumb. Sure, surely between all of us and these two like streams that we've done, we must have covered most of it. Yeah. Uh, I, Knives I, Out I say, is though. overrated as fuck. Um, I was told again and again by people a collection of different ratings, and none of them went below like, you know, a 6-7 a, a sort of range when I think that the film falls apart in, like, almost every aspect in terms of how it's building up all of its big twists, turns, and motivations, and, and, and reveals, and stuff. Um, and yeah, uh, after watching it, I was really encouraged to uh, make a video on it. That was actually my plan, um, which overtook a different idea I had for a different video that I had began uh, a Weird Dog 4. But that... And that video came as a result of me deciding I didn't necessarily want to do Joker yet. And that came as an example of me being like, I want to do something between parts three and four of the TFA video. And that's what I meant on stream when I said, it's a fucking giant perpetual circle of me like interrupting myself with projects. But right now, <laughs> I want to work on the Last of Us 2 video. So, and this is just an expectation, it's probably going to change as time goes on. I want to make a Last of Us 2 video, then a Knives Out video then probably TFA part 4 and that's as far as I could even begin to try and predict because I think everything will change by the time I complete even one of these videos well next five years are sorted then <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah that's uh, I guess that brings us to Super Chats uh, yeah looks like it unless there's anything else anyone wants to say about how great Knives Out is I love Knives the, Out I love the, the movies that things become my own personal like cinematic purgatory. I just can't seem to escape it. <laughs> it's just more and more streams I have to do on it. Neg He's never gonna watch another movie with us, Mahler. Well, yeah, He's gonna you, be like, oh first, no, well, I'm, first you, I'm not you, watching a movie with Mahler and Rags. I'm gonna get dragged <laughs> into a rabbit hole of talking about this on endless streams or hours and hours. You gave me Ghostbusters 2016, the fucking extended cut, and then you <laughs> that was it. fun <laughs> to watch because it was terrible. We laughed at it. <laughs> well, we had some laughs at Names Out. Yeah, right? we we enjoyed. I that film. I'm glad I watched Ghostbusters 2016 because it was bad in a bizarre kind of way. Uh huh. Um, it was like aliens made a like a movie designed for humans, <laughs> and they didn't quite understand human culture. <laughs> I would watch Ghostbusters before I would watch Knives Out again. Oh wait, someone said, uh, really? Kept saying he wouldn't do a TL OU video to video. Wow. Um, I know. It doesn't quite make sense. The, if you watch my streams of it, it'll all make sense. 
<clears throat> Let's just say. So it. you're not going to make a Last of Us Two video? No, no, I, I am, but I wasn't. Oh, you are. Oh, okay. And, uh, I was, I was just making sure because you have the knives out thing, um, and you're gonna make a movie <laughs> or you're gonna make a video on. Uh, what was it? Uh, we are back. A dinosaur's tale or whatever it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah talked to me. Yeah, you really like that. Um, um, you talked to. I, I know you told me not to tell anyone, but but, but since, I did. I guess a lot of people may have been confused about um all of it because they were like, like why wouldn't you have known you were gonna make a video before you'd even necessarily played it? Because and and this is the miracle. I really didn't know like even five percent of the leaks. Uh, shit tons in that game surprised me and. Let's just say I've, um, my mind has been quite changed. I was not happy. Uh, there are four videos in total of, uh, of the stream, but, um, And yeah. also from, like, a creative perspective, not always a good idea to commit that you're going to make a video on something that you haven't consumed yet. Yeah. You can always reserve, you know, you don't have to commit to making anything. Like those people who say, I didn't want to have, I didn't want to make this video, but I had to. He's like, no, you didn't. Like, oh, no, <laughs> that drives didn't me know. nuts there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I was just being completely honest with you. I did not have a drive to make a Last of Us 2 video. I just didn't. <clears throat> and then I played the game and I got pretty upset at several moments. I, I, I even, I think I shouted at the game a few times. Yeah, so there you go. Now you know it's coming from the heart. I mean, yeah. It's the labor of the <laughs> And uh, there are some... You know what? The highlights what? of the streams alone are enough reason to make a video. People need to see what happened in that game. Is there a highlight of the stuff to look at? Because that's quick. No, I'm saying, like, that's oh, reason, the that's reason right. enough to make a video that I can show you guys what fucking happened yeah. in the streams. Because <laughs> I, I gotta watch the third one. Um, I watched the first two. Um... That yeah. game, I am so glad I didn't uh, find my PlayStation and bust that shit out to play this. It doesn't look fun to play. It looks miserable. I'm so unhappy with the story. <laughs> it's frustrating to watch you play it. <laughs> um, wow. I, ugh, I All the people who saw the leaks didn't spend the money. Talk about dodging a bullet. And the person who leaked that story is a goddamn hero. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, anything else anyone wants to talk about? And of course, um, I think, I don't know, Metal, you, you're probably needing to go to sleepy to them, right? Uh, yes, it's 3 a.m. <laughs> Stupid. Oh, is the German government going to let you sleep? They didn't <laughs> no. let you watch the video. Yeah, that's true. Those bastards. He's going to watch pillows out. Pillows out. <laughs> Sheets out. Um, huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, so Metal runs a, uh, a fucking a Twitch channel yeah. where he streams video games. Yes, and um, there's, there's a, a, a link of Rooney in the description. Um, I don't know, do you want to try and sell it to these people even though they know you pretty well at this point? Uh, uh, tisms. No, I just pretty much uh, stream there. Almost every day. Not in the next week, though, because I'm moving into my new flat on Friday, so there won't be any streams. Uh, oh, yeah. You're gonna give of... blood on Friday. Nice. Blood? That's Move noble. into my flat. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I, for some, same I don't thing. know. For some reason, that came. I, I, <laughs> Your mind went to a strange place, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. I thought. I, I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll probably do one stream tomorrow because I'm still uh, here. You gonna stream Last of Us Two? No, absolutely not. Because I don't give a <laughs> shit about any of those games. Oh. Uh, you can stream yeah. Honey Pop. No. Stream Rage Shadow Legends. Yes. I'm telling you, go for the the Indian gal first. Okay. I'll, she's I'll got them. Mind. She's got that quality bod. Mm. She's a she's a nasty. She she's shy at first, but you know that's just because she's nasty in the sack. You, know? <laughs> you just doesn't want to give it away. Nice. They had us in the first half. Not gonna lie. <laughs> uh but yeah but normally i'll, I'll uh, stream there pretty much every day uh just tism around hang out uh but also uh my john wick 2 video is up again on my oh. archive channel uh it's been untouched for two weeks it has not been nuked uh people could watch it without problems uh, so I'm just gonna put a link in here as well. Merch? No. 
I will. Yeah, uh, that's a. Uh, it's a good video for those of you who haven't watched it. It is a. It's very good. Yeah, thank you. I would. Uh, um, yeah, if you want to go. Yeah, check everyone should go watch out. that once the stream's over. Okay, or during, either way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm uh, pretty hopeful now that it's not gonna get uh, fucked over this time because it's already up uh, d uh, double the time than before. <laughs> Last time it was a uh, flooped like after a week or something. Uh, but yeah, seems to be fine now. So uh, go go check that floor out. And yeah, I think that's about it. All righty. Well, uh, I guess we'll catch you next time and around and in between and all that stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, it was fun. I'll I'll uh, I'll catch you all later. Sure. See you later. See Bye. Later, Bye. Just adding What's it to your, the description. Uh, John Wick Two. John Wick. John Wick. Did you did you I'm like going John to Wick Two? Because uh, I uh, drink a lot of. Okay. Hey, Drinker, did you like John Wick 2? Uh, John Wick 2, yeah. It was alright. And th and 3? Uh, not so much. <laughs> well, you you have wrong feelings on both. They're both terrible, and now you're going to internet prison for having bad opinions. Uh, I can handle that. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Because you're, you're, uh, you're tackling uh, Watchmen next, aren't you? I am, yeah. I'm working on the script for it right now. So, yeah. I'm coming at it from the point of view of it got an awful lot of shit back in the day, and maybe it wasn't quite as bad as people made it out to be. I mean, so, in terms of timeline, I remember it being celebrated quite well, and then it sank miserably. Like, I I remember feeling a bit of whiplash. I was like, oh, we don't like this. Oh shit. Okay, because I didn't know anything about Watchmen. I just saw the movie and thought it was neat. Yeah. Um. I I don't know if people went into it like general audiences just expected it to be more of a like upbeat, you know clear-cut superhero flick you know kind of like the mcu was starting to become at that point um and obviously what you got was something very different mm -hmm. uh, but yeah i just it, it disappeared from theaters pretty quickly i don't think the, the the critical reviews were great at the time either but yeah i just I remember talking to my friends and we all loved it and um yeah i've always wanted to talk about it and finally i've got some time that's like the one advantage of yeah. You know, all this bullshit that's happened over the past six months. It's like, oh, okay. I, like, I like the pause there. You're like, oh, this is going to sound a bit awful, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, what, what terms am I allowed to use? Like the unspecified illness from a different country. Um, but yeah. Oh, it's like, okay. We it's get me, demonetized it's a given, lot. So. Yeah. Well, it's, just, it's given me a chance to work through like my backlog of films. So that's one I've wanted to talk about for a long time. I mean, yeah. I'm oh, looking forward to it. Uh, I haven't rewatched it in a long time, so I have to rely on you for a recap and shit. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, like, I don't go into. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail with the plot because I would be like four hours long just trying to describe everything that happens. But I'll cover the main points, and hopefully, it should be up tomorrow, if not the day after. Um. So yeah, do, uh, do you want to do you want to hang out with us for a bit while we uh, check out these super chats or? You, uh, I would needed. love to, but I'm probably gonna have to go to bed as well. Uh, yeah, that's because I do have to get up <laughs> uh, Yeah. Right then. Well, uh, we kind of were just doing the thing that I was gonna ask you to do just then. That was kind of like a plug. Are you guys excited to hear about that? You should go and check out Critical Drinker at criticaldrinker.com/youtuber. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> definitely where you find it. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, you, plenty of videos to to consume, and while you while you're waiting for uh, um, the the video on the Watchmen, like I said, you can check out the uh, the stream we did about Knives Out. That's an easy entryway. Uh, yeah, that's that's on Critical Drinker Live, like my, my sort of archive channel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm glad you did the plug because I always suck at plugging my own work. I hate it. Um, <laughs> I can never think of anything relevant to say. I'm just like, oh, I review movies. I don't know. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me just... Right. Hello, Rex, how are you? Hi, hi, hey. Have you emptied your bowels? Um, no, I didn't. Oh. Bladder? Yeah! Alright. And, because the vicious cycle continues ever onwards, the bladder has been emptied. The thermos has been filled. See, I see, a, it's all pointless, really. You, it's just a cycle. What's the point? No, the, the theme is that it's a pointless cycle. Oh, okay. Which is, ironically, the point. 
So, um, I Brian Johnson want, wrote my life. Didn't want to keep you longer than I have to there, Mr. Drinker. You're, uh, thank oh, you so you much for joining us. It's been wonderful. All right. And, uh, oh, yeah. As always, um, hopefully next time we have something to talk about that's not Knives Out. <laughs> no, ne yeah, next sure, time man. we'll watch The Last of Us 2. You, you excited? Talk about The Last of Us 2? Is that what you want to do? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Alright, well thanks anyway, guys, and have a good one. Yeah, See you, you later. Yeah. See you, you later. So, that leaves us, and uh, I suppose we will get on with the Super Chats. I, um, I gotta mute the third age. We keep getting in trouble with Howard Shaw. <laughs> I can't oh. know. The e Howard Shore. Yeah, Howard Shore Please songs, no. of course. Howard Shore, leave us alone. Um, and for some reason, this game doesn't have options to mute sound versus effects, because obviously I would just keep effects on, but uh, hopefully our voices can carry the, the everything else, I guess. Yeah, because you get surround is the only audio option you have, I guess. Oh, it doesn't let you choose between sound effects and music well it just it's turn surround sound on or off that's it oh well <laughs> which like, do you prefer i just i find that so funny like of all the options you could have it's like surround sound yes you're like uh, well, I, it's like yeah i guess okay, yeah sure. I mean, no, sure it's neat yeah. to have surround why, sound why not surround um, sound sounds yeah sounds great sounds fucking baller also, this was this, was this EFAP ninety six? Jesus, we got seven eight nine. That's all we got left before hundred. Seven eight nine. Mm hmm. Oh my God. A crime. Uh, yeah, we can't. Wait, what know. EFAP is this? I'm lost in a daze. I have to put my clues together and discover who who done it. Who done Which did EFAP it? number is this? Um. So yeah, I guess I'll just uh, start reading them out. The, the thing is. We got Super Chats to catch up on from EFAP after today's ones that we'll try and chip into, and I've got ones to catch up for The Last of Us 2. I think my plan will be to stream tomorrow, probably solo, doing all the Last of Us 2 ones that I missed. Solo. And then, um, uh, EFAP will be Saturday. Again. This one got pushed forward, that's why, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit, it's, we're gonna have a double dose of EFAP this week, I guess. Um, Hopefully you guys are okay with that. I th that's probably going to upset them, right? Um, well, we wouldn't be able to do it without our sponsor, Raid Shadow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. great. We're back in the game where everyone's missing. Feel right at home. Um, so yeah, uh, that's probably the what, what, we, what we're expected to be doing. Um, and next week, there may or may not be a Batwoman. I'm not sure how our... Um, our backlog of things is right now. Uh, but uh, there's only three left for Batwoman, as far as I know. How fucking sad is that? Brings a tear to my eye. Mm hmm So, uh... Um, I, wish, I wish Batwoman was gay so we could just let it go. Let it go? I'm super gay. Oh. EFAP on my birthday. Nice. That was the first one. I kind of must have been real happy about that. Nice. nice. That is nice. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Moller, over and over. Guys, I don't want to make a video game. Oh, I will make you hate me until you want to make a video. Me. I knew the game would convince you. There was, there was, I did notice that some people were like, I'm pretty sure you will by the end of it. I was like, eh, but, uh. uh if, if you ask me, what's the game that wants you to hate it? <laughs> eh, Life was too, uh. It's kind of. I, okay. I feel like the developers outright have said something along those lines. Like, um. Well, like, we are games aren't supposed to be fun. It's like, yeah, oh. Yeah, that's not what games oh. are meant to be. It's just like, oof. Damn. Hmm. Wilford Good Brimley for EFAP 100. <laughs> do you think if we could get e Wilford Brimley on EFAP that we wouldn't do that instantly? Like, that would. I would love to have Wilford Brimley on EFAP. Dude. We'd watch some of his films. We would learn his, uh,. His career, his cinematographical career. That would be so good. Oh, it'd be great. Uh, I was just asking him, like, all the stuff he's seen and done in the industry, all the movies he's been in. Mola, when will The Last of Us 2 Review Part 3 come out? That's, like, 2684 03. Like, that's, that's, some, that's some alternate universe shit right there, but you don't give it time, anything can happen. Uh, finally caught up and can watch EFAP live. Hi, Rags. Hello. Hmm. Uh, 
Who do folks say high rags all the time? Oh no, why do folks say that? Sorry. Also high rags. <laughs> oh, hey! The Y goes all the- that's more of a fun thing for them to go and discover on, on efap.me. Link in the description. It can go to the origins page and you'll find a lot of memes are in there and then you can discover where they were started. <coughs> High Rags is possibly one of the longest running, right? That's definitely up there. Um... Mm. Finally caught a live one. Your content keeps me entertained at work, so thank you. Love to you and the collective. Aww. Aww. I like it when the collective receives love. Uh, Fat Geralt and the Dawn, greatest heroes of our time. <laughs> Fat Geralt is a fucking legend. Favorite character. <laughs> um, hey everyone, EFAP movies, Bionicle, Mask of Light. You know, I don't see why we can't do it. We a, gotta, we gotta. Movies Bionicle, yeah. Oh man, I remember Bionicle. They were, they were, they were cool. It's like you have Barbie dolls, Ken dolls, and you're like, ew, gay. And then it's like, ooh, yeah, Bionicle. Yeah, but it's for men. Yeah. Men played with Bionicle, okay. I remember the ones that were kind of like Bionicle, but they made, um, they, they're like, circular little guys who were like little monsters in the universe uh, and they they would roll up and move around and they had different colors too i i forgot i just remember like i remember the very uh, the very first bionicle ones and they came with comic books they were really shitty the hmm. shittily drawn comic books and they had like i i got because i think we we got one each me and my brother i got the fire one i think his name was tahu I can't remember though. I think it was Tahu. And he was the fire one. He had the fire sword. And my my brother uh, got the ice one and he had like mechanical eyes and stuff. You got Bakugan and Borok. Borok? Borok? Uh let me check. Borok. Yeah, I remember these things. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what they were. Wait. The ball ones were called Borocks. Huh. Let me look up the, the fire bionicle. Oh, well, no, they were called Toa, right? Yeah. Fire Toa. Uh, the Toa fire. Um, the, the original one. Oh, I even remember some of these promo images where he's like surfing on lava. And he had the really simple hand where it was two black fingers sticking forwards. Um, it is named Tahu. Now, now let me look at the ice one now. Um, uh, Kopaka. Yeah, he had like that thing on his eye. Shit, that's that's fucking taking it back. And <laughs> that shit is no. He had yeah he had yeah he had the sword and the shield and he had the. I found the. I found the. This is like a blast from the past, man. He had the shield and the sword and there was like two blades on the sword and he had the little eye stuff. On Bionicle is 100% yeah. pure nostalgia, Beth. <laughs> it actually is. I know basically nothing about the 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 Bionicle lore and universe. I just sort of cool. I remember the toys and playing with them, um, with the Legos and everything. Um, dang it! At work, I always hated Knives Out, so this I am looking forward to. Hopefully, you guys will still be on for this poor working girl. Um, well. Hang in we, there. We're like, what, five hours? We went nine, ten, seven, twelve, one, two. Yeah, we're, we're at five, so. Possibly. Uh, possibly there. But yeah. Um, be all right. we, we weren't a fan of it either. <laughs> Being yeah, it's kind of poopy. It's better than, uh, better than Batwoman, just a little bit. I guess we never addressed um, the obvious thing that would be said about us. It's like, well, of course you didn't like it. It's by Ryan Johnson. You were never gonna. And it's just like, I feel like we gave pretty good arguments. For why we yeah, don't think it's I, very well made, uh, written. Yeah, um, it's not like we said, oh, I think knowing that it was written by Ryan Johnson certainly informs a lot of what we saw, but yeah, it, it wasn't it because it. he wrote it. <laughs> it's because it was written, period. Like, it was so easy. To, if, like, if you hadn't told us it was written by him, I'd be like, oh, there's a very good chance this was written by him because <laughs> of the way everything goes in the movie. Bum, bum, bum. 
Uh, hello, EFAP panel. I think we'll call them the Subversive Greats. Uh, the Subversive Greats, about um, Ryan Johnson films, or...? The Subversive Greats. Oh, the selection of films that, like, we hate. Little content that's, like, ruining everything <laughs> for media and stuff, or IPs. Uh, we can call them Subversive Greats. I get it. Um, hey, Mola, do you know the YouTuber Curio? If you don't, that's okay, because he's a typical bread tuber uh, who has a major hate on towards you. He did that video on objectivity that we covered, which is really oh. shitty, that I'm going to actually respond to. Yeah, that Superman. video was awful. Yeah, um, that was a really shitty video. All of their videos on objectivity are fucking horseshit. It's kind the, of shocking. He had, to, like, he had to change the writing in Superman to make a stupid point. <laughs> it was some funny shit. Really, uh, and the whole, really not impressive at all. They'll believe Superman can fly, but they will not believe a woman can beat up a man. It's like, what... What are you doing? <laughs> like, what? They'll believe that an alien from another planet who draws his strength from, you know, the fact that he's not even, he's, he's a foreign creature on Earth, planet, the fantasy universe. Yeah, yeah, those, those, are, those are compatible. I mean, it's my, because I started a response to him, in fact, and I'll, I will get to it again. It's a great video to cover because it's so terrible. It's a learning experience for everyone. That that's what got Mahler and myself to watch the original Superman movie. Yes. And I liked it. Yeah, we had fun. Yeah, I did have fun. The fucking slap. <laughs> <laughs> it was so great. You lost your shit. <laughs> I I didn't believe it had happened. <laughs> what I told you about saying stupid shit. <laughs> like, oh my god. It's like, holy shit, Jesus Christ. Get Fuck wrecked. Uh yeah, it's, um, what did you guys think of James Cameron's Avatar? My friend says it's not that bad, and I'm just, no. Also, hi, Rags. Long live Christmas. Hi. Uh, yes, indeed. Long live Christmas. I haven't seen Avatar in a years. I haven't seen it in years. I, I don't imagine it, it really. <laughs> but I, huh? don't, I remember liking it, but I was never passionate at all, and I remember people shitting on it, and I was like, eh. It's probably bad. Yeah, I, I I totally agree that it's probably terrible. I don't feel any like emotional investment either for or against it. Yeah, if we were to rewatch it, maybe for refab movies, we might uh have some fun with it. Uh, I'd be down for that. There you go. No, had hotties dead. No, no. Um. But yeah, uh, you know, the obvious is that it it has uh groundbreaking or, or industry changing effects it um it's made the most money in the box office of all time outside of avengers endgame and the story everyone always says is a ripoff of dances with wolves um so that's about it um i don't remember a lot of it at this point because i think i watched it when it came out it's been a while but of course um you know could give it a rewatch Completely unrelated, but what are your thoughts on 2001 A Space Odyssey? It seems to break every writing filmmaking rule, but I think it's great. Have you seen it, Rex? With what? Uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. I have, but it's been so long since I've seen it, I couldn't comment on it. Yeah, I mean, I've always remembered liking it, but I don't... Um, it was never something I was that passionate about. So, I'd have to rewatch it to be able to give more extensive thoughts on that one. But, um, yeah, I mean, everything to do with Hal was fucking awesome, I remember, at least. The, um, and just, it's, it's kind of hard to explain the atmosphere of the movie is, uh, fucking awesome. Maybe we should watch 2001 A Space Odyssey and Avatar back to back. What a weird two movies to watch. They're both sci fi, right? It counts. Where's, uh, yeah. Resurrect the Dwarf. Um, Gimli, I never thought I'd die wanting that hobbit to rot, Legolas. What about wanting that hobbit to rot and also his friend, Gimli? <laughs> I, I could do that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's about right. Also, fuck, I'm out of AP. Whoa! I'm gonna need a lot of elf medicine when I fight the Balrog, I reckon. 
Rags, my dear Massive, as you are clearly the sexist member of the Toxic Brood, I would like you to do your own face cam reaction video to Henry Cavill building a PC. Get some LGBT rep in while it's still a hot topic. Um, it's pretty hot. Not interested in repping for LGBT. But um, I did hear that he was a PC Master Race guy. Uh, I know in one of the, the Witcher promos he had said that. And um, yeah, I, I, he seems like a really nice guy. Probably cool, fun to hang around with. I wouldn't mind playing some PC games with old Henry Cavill, mm -hmm. but I'm not like super interested in covering it. And I don't know what I'd say other than, you know, yeah, good job. You made a good decision. Because uh, he probably knows what he's doing. He sounds like he is. Uh, he does. So. And I'm sure if he did a horrible job with it, I would have heard a whole lot more about it. Yeah. Well, I wa did you watch um fucking Jay Longbone's video on it? No. You should. It's hilarious. Yeah. All she right. Goes, she, I will. she goes nuts for that for that Superman tisms. He's awesome. a talented, handsome guy who uh, plays games the correct way. Oh yes. None of that. None of that clown stick bullshit. <laughs> nope. Um. Hello, Raggleton. Your cameos Hello. in The Last of Us Two were the best parts of the game, and Mola made sure to save you. F for Jimmy, still the best character. Always happy to um, always happy to help make Molotovs and all those uh, other things. Molotovs. Molotovs. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so many times I am stocked fully on rags, and I'm like, no, stupid no. game. This is my first live EFAP. I love your content. Also, I'm a veterinary nurse and wouldn't dream of just picking up a drug and giving it to an animal without looking at the label. Hi, rag. Hey. It's kind of amazing that that's something they actually argue is, like, a good thing in the movie. Uh, kind of nuts. You are a good nurse. Oh. Painful. Uh, John Wick 2 was good, Metal. No. No. It wasn't. And it's, it's quite suitable that I said no, because Fringy used to love that movie. He now thinks it's terrible. Ruining art. Ruining art. Everywhere you go, ruining art. <laughs> um, Can't help yourself. Rags, do you use Rags brand's rags from Menards? From Menards? I don't know what that is. Menards? I don't know what that is either. Menards? Menoir? Menon? I do not know what that is. I don't know what brand my rags are, actually. Hmm. I'm I'm a big believer in paper towels. <gasps> you don't even use rags. This might upset I do. I do. I just people. also use paper towels as well. Rags are amazing, though. I will sing the praises of rags anytime I can. <laughs> you know, it doesn't surprise me. Not even a little bit. I would also do that. Why can't I have a super sword that just gets me through everything? Explain to me. Didn't explain it. I'm upset. Nope. Um, a super sword. Happy hump day. Also, hello, rags. Oh, hello, and happy hump day to you. That's very kind. One of my dogs is named right. Abby. Her name is now retroactively Tism because uh, she's a bit Tismy herself, but still feel bad, but still infinitely better than that Abby. That's yeah. fair enough. Um, my summer school teacher, College, made us watch The Secret of Mario's Jump, unironically saying it would help us become better game designers. Oh no. <laughs> I hope you can get your money back. <laughs> Uh, I'm starting to think that because I there's so many people who've mentioned this. I'm like, damn, what a what a free day for them, you know? They'll just turn that video on. Be yeah. Like, oh, fucking oh I'm it. sure they'll get something useful out of this. Fuck it. Talk amongst yourselves about how meaningful the video is. Okay. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay. Thanks, teacher. Um, please help. The rope keeps appearing in my hands. Oh no. Don't you do it! That's just what the secret of Mario's jump wants. Oh god, Adriel's low on HPs again. Oh no. Um, I'm deeply sorry for recommending Knives Out. Uh, it's alright. It was probably something we were gonna check out eventually anyway. But I appreciate the apology, you know? It's, it is tough to be responsible for such horrors. 
Can't help but just you you wanna you wanna apologize, I get it. Uh well, I saw the title to this. What fresh hell is this? I swear, I feel like I have a ma masochism fetish at this point. Well, a lot of people like knives out. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've seen a lot of talk in the um in the Discord and in the subreddit, I think, as well. Like just uh knives out is good shit, and I'm always like, eh, I mean makes no fucking sense. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, knives out for Last Jedi. <laughs> Um, there is an objectively awful 0 out of 10 film. You must choose a button to subjectively enjoy it 10 out of 10 or 0 out of 10. Which do you press? Also, are you fat? <laughs> in the, in the scenario? <laughs> I'm, I'm not fat. Um, I don't quite follow the, um... I guess they're saying, the question... would you prefer to thoroughly enjoy or not enjoy at all a film that is objectively fucking garbage? Oh, I'd rather enjoy it. Yeah, I would pick thoroughly enjoy. Yeah, I can thoroughly enjoy something and still say it's terrible. I mean, that. But I'd have a good time. That's what Batwoman is, honestly. Like, I thoroughly enjoy Batwoman. It's so bad. And if someone was like, "Would you prefer to not enjoy it at all?" I'd be like, "No, I like uh, I like the setup right now. It's funny." Mountain rage. Possibly put that in my giant folder of questions that may be answered by guests one day. Um, if ever we sort that out. Uh, wait, people are effing. Is stream down? Uh, let me I never check. know if it's for a meme or not. Rip eats his big F. Is it, we cancelled by raid. We back. Cancelled by raid. Uh, looks like it's all good. Yeah, looks like it's all good. Uh, the movie mentioned that the servants called him Hugh for some reason. I think it's because they're not worthy. <laughs> not worthy? It doesn't even... I... You'd think it would be the other way around, right? That the help would have to call him Mr. Um, Thromby, or whatever the hell his yeah. name was. Yeah, and I don't know why he wouldn't have everybody calling him the thing that he wanted to be called. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, my barn burned down. Today is my B-Day. Hi, Rags. Hey! I mean, it sucks about the barn. Um, hope it's, hope it's, it's an actual barn burned down. Uh, who gave this five-year-old a mic and editing software? Also, hi, Wags. Looking forward to hi. your The Last of Us Part 2 Unbridled Rage. Oh, no. Well, sometimes a ragu just gotta do it. Gotta make that video. Uh... But yeah, I mean, I can't, I wouldn't be able to guess how old that kid was. But, um, they got to express their favoritest movie of all time. And hopefully they move on to, um, you know, brighter things. Like, like, any other movie. Because you're probably gonna look out and it'll be better. It's a good movie, baller! I think this is in reference to John Wick again. Sorry. Nope. Well, John Wick 1 is pretty good. I'll agree with that. Yeah, oh yeah, the first one, yeah. The yeah, others. High five, first one. Um, who do? Who actually started the subverted expectations meme? Was it just something that emerged from video essayist crowds, or do we actually know Patient Zero? <laughs> well, certainly, nowadays, it's because of The Last Jedi. I think they're asking, like, which of the video essay community started using it to describe stuff like uh, TLJ. I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of hard to pinpoint, and I, I don't think it's unreasonable to assume that a couple of people got there on their own, because it's a really great way to try and avoid the disaster that is The Last Jedi by being like, it's using a technique of writing called subversion of expectation. You establish an expectation, and then you subvert it. It's wonderful. And you're like, I don't... It's great. Uh, hmm. They try to really make this very simple, almost pointless concept, extremely grandiose. It's just, if you can describe it that way, you might convince a viewer that it wasn't that they felt, that it wasn't that it was bad, it's that they misunderstood it. Oh yeah, you just needed to be in the right mindset and understand that to that to da and it turns out it's good, we can make it good retroactively. Uh, Superman's logo 
E letter before Y with rags. What? E letter before... So y. Superman's logo, so an S. Okay. And then E then letter before Z. Y with rags. I will paste it to you because I'm a little confused. Um, X? Oh, Superman's logo, sex. Oh, sex with rags. Oh. oh my goodness gracious. I was reading that all wrong. I thought it meant you take Superman's logo and you put an E in it instead of the S, and then you put the letter before Y with it, and then rags, like, wears it or something. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, you, you just gotta know about, you gotta know about the sex talk. This oh my is what, god. This is what they mean when they refer to that. Deciphering super chats. Yeah, I mean that's it's, it's part of the territory. Deciphering super chats. The big S. Um, recently watched the Hobbit extended editions. After watching the Lord of the Rings extended editions, they were okay in comparison. I would love to hear your thoughts. The Hobbit for EFAP movies. Uh, not impossible. I remember the first one being all right. I don't remember much of the second or third. I remember the third was just. Uh... Yeah, like I, I'm not sure how it would go. Uh, Hobbit EFAP movies. I really don't know how like how we would sort of riff on it, or would we, would we even want to? Would we want to pay attention to know if we think it is poorly constructed or not? And then at that point, you can't really. It's not really any fat movies as much as it just you know. Yeah, I think there's other stuff that we've had on the list that we're more keen on watching. Mm -hmm. Um, Ryan Johnson should get the Joel Miller treatment. Oh my god. I don't think anybody should get that treatment. <laughs> even, yeah. even like Rose Tico characters where you just don't like them at all. It's like, no, no. No, I don't do that. No need to beat them to a pulp and spit on their corpse. That's, that's some... It's a bit I, much. I guess the question is, what, so Abby shouldn't get that? And it's like, oh no. Why would you Why would you question that in such a way? Why, you're making me rerun my whole principled system. Uh, PP, Poo Poo, an objectively great movie, was John Wick 2. Pee pee poo poo, poo poo pee pee. Another great movie was John Wick 3. <laughs> well, I mean, if you can make, you can deliver a message like that, I really don't see how we could possibly say that uh, it's. We're clearly true. dealing with someone whose <laughs> intellect far surpasses our own. Hi, Rags. Hey. Who's a dirty doggo? You oh, are. I am. <laughs> I am. Oh, they ended with no Maybe bone for you. Me. Damn. Oh my goodness. Um, thank you for this EFAB near the end of the workday. Really helps. Hi, Rags. Oh, hey there. And uh, oh. glad it does help. Yeah. Hopefully, next one's soonish. Mm hmm. Uh, buy Outer Wilds. Which uh, I keep getting recommendations for that game. A lot I'm of people talking about Outer Wilds, yeah. Gonna have to check it out. Some. Um, I remember, I think I checked the Steam page. I need to do it again now, because. So many people saying to get it. It's like, I mean, if this many people talk about a thing, it must be good, right? Right. That's how it works. I think the math checks out on that one. Sweet. Um, have you considered reviewing Belated Media's What If Star Wars Episode 3 Was Good? Well, I mean, I ask that question to myself all the time. What if Episode 3 was good? I mean, if there, um, if there's a video where they just sort of go through their ideas on how to, f you know, fix up the writing in the prequels, I, it's probably not the kind of thing we would cover on EFAP. Because, uh, you know, we would probably just, that's the kind of thing we would end up talking about, I imagine. We'd be like, hey, what about our ideas for how to make a good tism? How about that? Um, and we talked about, I mean, that's what our uh, Attack of the Clones EFAP was largely based around, was... You know, the changes we'd make and where it went wrong and stuff like that. Yeah, we like often that. like to try and suggest uh, improvements, kind of like the critique series I make. Try and take some opportunities yeah. to be like, you know, you could have just done this. Just saying. It's valuable to come up with examples of good things to contrast them with the bad things you criticize. Yes. Yeah. And that's how Jesus gets to... to that's... It's good. Yes. Booty dooty pooty. Damn it, Mola, how dare you make Super Chat catch-ups interesting to watch? As an audio only, it makes it hard to sit through. Oh, it's that it's that third age gameplay that really uh, that really sells them. <laughs> I was I was sort of like 
You really? I mean, footage is that good? All right. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, it's it's cool visuals, it's all Lord of the Rings tisms, but um, yeah, I hope it's not too bad without the audio. Uh, hey, chat, how are you enjoying Lord of the Rings Third Age gameplay in the background? Is, is, how, how's it going? Is it good? Okay, good. I'm glad they're enjoying it. It's good. Um, ever played The Last of Us Two? I hear it's got great writing. I have oh, no. played it. I have. What a coincidence that they would ask that. Yeah, it uh, it's like I, I don't know what's primed him to ask this question. Like it's been in the new the gaming sphere recently. Or yeah, dare something. I say it's almost suspicious. Have you mentioned it? Have you talked about it? Have you? Uh, I mentioned it three weeks yeah. ago. I said The Last of Us Two is a game, so that must have prompted the super chat. That makes sense. I don't know who could disagree with that. Um, or you could just publish a book the Ryan Johnson way and buy a piece of cover art that has nothing to do with the contents of the book. I, uh, I wouldn't know about that. Ryan Johnson has released books, has he? He bought a piece of cover art that has nothing to do with the book? Apparently. Uh, again, I don't know nothing about it. Sounds interesting, though. Yeah, you, someone in chat's gonna have to fill me in on that one. Mm. I don't know anything about it. Um, rest in peace, Red Letter Media. What do you think of the drama? What drama? Rest in peace. I mean, it says Are RLM. That, drama? Wouldn't, that wouldn't be anything else, right? Yeah, that's the only thing that I can think of for RLM. Oh, are they talking about um the thing with William Shatner? Oh, I haven't seen that yet. What's going on with it? So, it's just embarrassing. It's, uh, I guess, someone sent... William Shatner, like, a, a clip of a video from Red Letter Media to, saying that he should, like, do a podcast with them, or or an interview with them, I guess. And he was like, I don't do podcast shit. And, and like, the video he was talking about was Nerd Crew. He was like, I don't do yeah, that. Yeah, the parody? Yeah. But he didn't realize it was a parody. And he said that yeah. um, Red Letter Media, like, make fun of, you know, people for shilling, apparently. And yet, look at their fucking set. It's filled with toys. And, yeah. It's, and it's, it's like, the point. oh, no... And yeah, it's definitely like it's just everyone's referring to like boomer moments and stuff. Um But of course, uh they, they tried to clarify. And I guess Mike thought it'd be funny if he said like uh because he said like we, we I don't want to do podcasts with them and of course they don't they don't consider what they do to be podcasts. All of it is like a show, I guess, or Yeah, a, and it's highly edited. Yeah, um, like it's it's very much crafted what they do. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's not even though they're doing that stuff like quote unquote live, unscripted, it takes more than that a podcast to make. Yeah, because like what we do, I would absolutely consider because it it's it's as is is streamed and then placed down. Yeah, and you can listen to it. It's all live. It's all kind of just it goes with the flow wherever. We're not going to go back and edit this and cut things out and add things. Um. And so his response on Twitter, I believe, was, uh, what's a podcast? Like, as the Red Letter Media account. And I think he said he'd want to do it for funnies, which probably wasn't the best idea, because it just confused people even more. And apparently there's, like, loads of back and forths, and he, like, looked into the channel more, and the video that was recommended was their review of Star Trek, the original motion picture, which is actually a video Red Letter Media would want him to, to sort of use as a gauge of, um... Their quality, and I think they make a joke about Patrick Stewart near the beginning, and um, like William Shatner was unhappy with it. He was like, "Nah." I think he called them ageist as well, <laughs> which oh. they totally are. But like, like, it's like funny. A... <laughs> the old people jokes are always sound like really a funny. thing I'd I'd hear from William Shatner. But no, right. well, yeah, this is the thing. You just just watch the video; they go over it all. It's just it's just funny, but of course, it ends with like, uh. William Shatner's like posting pictures of like Mike while it during Nerd Crew stuff and being like he's like it's like embarrassing. And then obviously he doesn't get that his parody of Mike, I think at the at the end is like, I, I don't I don't like the William the like, Captain uh Kirk is making fun of me on Twitter. <laughs> like it's a weird <laughs> weird fucking world. Um but yeah, it's pretty funny and I guess sad at the same time. But uh, easily solvable, I guess, drama, if you want to call it that. I don't know. Uh, some lack of understanding and miscommunication. Mm -hmm. and 
It's a shame. It's a shame. Uh, thoughts on the Nurse Ratched series coming to Netflix soon? I just heard about it and it made me one mad boy. Rags high. Hey! I have no, I've not heard of Nurse Ratched, the series at all. Um, and I'm assuming there's a reference to, uh... Ratchet and Clank? No, uh, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, but, like, um... But I don't know if it is that or not now. I'm, I'm kind of, like, what... What would they be making it? I don't even know where to begin. I should probably just Google it. I've not heard of it, is my point. Because <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on with that one, but okay. Um... But yeah, I guess I'll uh, make a note. I'm interested, because if it is about One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, I want to know about it. Oh my god, is it? Iconic villain. Oh, it's going to be played by Sarah Paulson. Yeah, apparently that's a real thing. Okay. You're asking, people are asking how much I've had to drink. And the answer is none. Have you been giving them reason to assume you've been drinking? <laughs> Apparently, at least one person is asking, huh? Not, not, not even has Rags been drinking. How much has he had to drink? Yeah. He's, he's, he's getting hung up on the details. Um, it's never too late to start, though. Or it's never too early to start. Yeah, I guess we'll see what happens with that show, assuming it's a show or a movie. Um, EFAP, more like poof, woof, woof. Uh, oh. Nice. Got him. Uh, Got us. EFAP, more like poofs, woof, woof. Why is the two different accounts? So what, what, do we, what do we do? Puffs? To... Isn't it poof? Poofs? Well, woof, I mean... woof, woof, woof. Because there, it's both a consonant, two vowels, and a consonant, but they're pronounced differently. I mean, poof and woof. I think because uh, the dog doesn't go woof. Well, wait, maybe they the do in Canada. Go poof? Woof. Um, <laughs> if we got another one. Hi, Rags. I saw your face for the first time. You're one handsome Homo sapien. Oh, thank you very much. That that was just my owner, though. I'm not a Homo sapien myself. Mm -hmm. I'm a Felis Domesticus. Represent. Uh, I'm almost caught up. I started at 1, watched the minis, the movies, the gaming, and the EU. I'm at EFAB 90. Hi, Rags. Hi! Man, it's quite, it's quite a journey to make now, going from EFAB 1. To, it's such a, there's so many arcs, there's so much storyline. It's kind of hard to keep track of all the characters, too. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but at least Come the on, budget buddy. has stayed the same. You know, like they haven't they haven't lost uh, production values. They're all pretty much the same, except that. Well, we had those, those, those raid thing. shadow legend sads at the beginning. You know, <laughs> the sponsorships, but I got those super chats, and we had to turn them off. Uh, listen here, Dumbo's hardcore Henry, watch it. Huh. Hard granite is that some kind of a film? I think it's a game. Or is that a care? Is that a an actor? And he, that's what they go by. That's their pseudonym oh. is Hardcore Henry. Is that a porn star? You want us to watch a man called Hardcore Henry in a in a porn film? I mean, we can. I think we could probably swing that if, you know, might not be recorded, but, you know, we can check it out just for you. Knives out, more like ha. I subverted your expectations. You thought it was going to be a hilarious, gut bunching, gut gut bursting, busting yo mama joke, but I only wanted to say hi, ra metal. Ha, I did it again. I'm smart. Ha. Damn, so many expectations of it. But we've subverted your expectations by telling metal he had to leave. Oh, yeah, you guys thought he had to go. We made him leave. Yeah, we made him, but we said, fuck off. I sent him a message saying, you are disgusting. And he, he, he said, I understand, and then said he had to leave. Like, it's really just the natural way, but... I mean, he agreed with us. Mm-hmm. Can't really blame us if uh, it's agreed upon, you know? Uh... EFAP 55 plot hole. Jay can't whistle, but you're all misogynist Nazi misogynist whistles when they use sexisms toward women. Jay must learn this skill to be consistent with law. Hi, Rags. Hey! I refuse to believe there is a plot hole in EFAP law. It all makes complete sense. Yep, you just are, you're understanding the lore wrong, you, you it's haven't... It's subverted your expectations, and you're all mad because you don't understand what's happening. 
You need to familiarize yourself with the sacred texts. Yes. Oh my god, I just opened a chest and they gave me Elagost stuff. Like, why would I... Why? Uh, why in the world? No wonder they locked it down here in Moria. <laughs> Nobody had any use for it. Uh, saving a zebra... Zebra's a genius character trait for The Last of Us 2. Absolutely. There's, there's no question. You saw that, right? It was in part two. Do you remember when he saved the zebra? Yeah, I saw him saw oh. him save the fucking zebra. He's such a good person. He, he is fucking such a saved person. the zebra. You know, most people wouldn't save the zebra. They would just fucking eat it because it's the post-apocalypse. And those people are bastards. What if zebra steaks were striped? <laughs> like they're like... striped on the inside too? Yeah, I feel like they do that in something like Monster Hunter probably. Just be like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> A little icon for your for your inventory. And then someone would be like, that's offensive, and Monster Hunter wouldn't give a fuck, because they're Monster yeah. Hunter. Monster. I nearly died Monday. Thanks for putting a smile back on my face. Love you, massives. Oh. Oh, love you too. I hope whatever nearly killed you didn't do any permanent damages or anything. And I'm glad it nearly killed you and didn't kill you, though. Yeah. That's, well, that's, that's where I stand on the this subject, there. too. Uh, many crime drama shows who did it halfway through or even at the beginning of the whole thing. That's the other thing. Um, I haven't seen a huge amount of whodunits, but I feel like there must be some that have done what Ryan Johnson did before. That they give away something pretty huge early in terms of, like, you have the answer. And then at the end they're like, no, you didn't actually have the full answer. Can't be that new. But, um... The idea of having done it, I don't think should just give you a free pass to, oh, your film is good now because you tried that. It's like, but how well did he execute it, though? We talk about that, and it's like, no. Oh. Nah, it's setting the bar awfully, uh, awfully high. Um. Evening, gents. What franchise do you think modern cinema will ruin next? My money's on Back to the Future. Also, high rags, give yourself a head pat. No, oh, thank you. I shall. And yeah, oh, that was nice. Uh, Back to the um, Future is definitely in danger. Um, I guess can we say uh, Ghostbusters, or has it already been ruined? Well, I would probably, I would more just judging from the trailer for the Ghostbusters film, which I think looks so much better than 2016. Oh, we'll, absolutely. We'll probably be considering it like a fuck me. That's probably going to be really bad, isn't it? Just because of how everything goes, it's probably going to be horrible. Just because of how everything goes. <laughs> but then, you know, conversely, uh, the Lord of the Rings TV show, that's something I'm very concerned about. Lord of the Rings yeah, has I'm gone pretty untouched. Yeah, I'm morbidly curious about it. They'll ruin it. It'll be terrible. Like, of course. Lord of the Rings has been perfect for ages. and Well, hyperbolic perfect, obviously. See, I had to clarify it. The guy in the video didn't clarify it. He even said not to be hyperbolic, but it's perfect. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? Um, so yeah, I got big concerns for Lord of the Rings. I think everyone does. We'll have to see what happens with that one. Also, Gremlins and Back to the Future are very, uh, likely to. <sighs> it's sad this movie is so bad. We could use more murder mystery stories going on, or mystery stories going on. I remember enjoying the remake of Murder on the Orient Express. The movie fails on every level as a mystery, though. I hate it. Damn. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't help but agree. Like, everything they're trying to achieve in Knives Out is crippled by something being really fucking stupid. Like in an Which is kind way. of a big deal in a murder mystery. The one genre that, if anything else, apart from maybe a documentary, should adhere the most towards logic and reason. It's an uh, interesting choice for Ryan. <laughs> it's like the last kind of fucking genre you think you should be tackling. Uh, every time I saw the two cops, I thought generic white guy, generic black guy. Well, I mean, their characters were, um, one of them is like a super fan of media and pop culture. The other one is like your everyman. He is the most everyman, everyman character. He's just reacting to everything in a very normal way. So th there you go, they're characters. Appreciate them. Um... The kid is probably just a run-of-the-mills conservative, for all we know. Well, that's the thing, we don't know anything about him, really. 
They just pull yeah. the alt right. And it's he like, doesn't okay. do anything really political. I mean, he could have gone really overboard with this guy, but he didn't. So uh -huh. I guess it would have been even worse if they made him over the top. Why have him? Oh yeah, it's pretty much my point. Yeah, just like, why have him? Such at all? a tiny little role. That's the thing. There's too many characters for this film. They just don't flesh him out well enough. It's like, why bother? Uh, just arrived. Plan on covering just right. Uh, well, we may haps perchance be covering the last of us two videos and i've heard oh, wow. he tries to make a very strong argument in favor of the game so it'll be interesting to have a look see oh my goodness oh yes Who? rags what is your episode of monk and why is it mr monk takes his meds i, I don't know if they were trying to say what your favorite episode is Oh, I, I can't remember. It's been ages since I've watched that show. Hmm. Have y'all seen Netflix's Kingdom? It's a 10-hour, 1500s Korean Game of Thrones familiar characters and mixes the main two political and horror stories better. No, I had no idea. Uh, yeah, I've not seen it and not even really heard of it, uh, but it sounds like it could be cool. Oh, you know what? Better get my my peoples upgraded before they fucking die. Fucking dead. Fucking dead. Who can dude? One. Uh, ooh, Idriel, you're looking close to dead. She's like impossible. I am <laughs> overpowered and immortal. Well, that's the thing. I haven't upgraded her immortal powers. Only her other powers, which. So it turns out, not the smartest thing to do. Who'd have I'm thought? I'm OP both in and out of universe. Of, uh, Kingdom is pretty cool, but you Dumbos have an obligation to see Hardcore Henry. Oh no. They really want that porn to be seen. I guess, you know, one day we're just going to have to give in. Watch some porn. It's going to be weird, but, you know, that's how it goes. The kid sounds like a drone. Yeah, that'd be another element to maybe, uh, Keep away at for future videos. Get it sound a bit more uh, into it. I don't know. Um, Ransom was singled out by the story in such a way that made him obviously important. So he was clearly the killer. I was hoping he was a red herring. I agree. I mean, that's kind of when we learned that he was the big bad. We were like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Being immortal is a useless power baller. Like, yeah. I guess uh, you, you gotta have something else, you know? That's how I feel about it. What's the point, otherwise? That was the thing. That was the thing. Knives Out was good, but it's really just a knockoff of Ruthless People, the classic Danny DeVito movie. Uh, TLJ was a total pooch screw. I am afraid I have to disagree with the statement that Knives Out is good. Nope. I'm gonna have to give that a big thumbs down. Saying it? Um, but yeah, fair enough. I hope if it's got Danny DeVito in it, it's probably good. Uh, the way DeVito handles wrong numbers in Ruthless People, epic. I've not seen it, but uh, good stuff. This one just says greetings. Hello. Oh, hi. Ryan Johnson masterfully craft crafted is an oxymoron. Uh, you gotta, maybe one day, you know? Maybe one day. Good old Ryan will come on through and make something that just blows us all away. How about that? You can do it. You can do it, Ryan. You can do it. Um, this kid is better than the Lord of the... This kid, it's better the Lord of the Rings. Um, hmm. Hmm. Well, hmm. <laughs> it's like, all right then. No. Yeah. Ana de Armas made me a lifetime Mr. Skin member. Oh. That's the thing from, um... 40-Year-Old uh, Virgin? Right? And I'm pretty sure it's like a real thing, too. It's like, um... Uh... An encyclopedia of, like... Movie and TV show nude stuff? At least I think that's how they explain it, because they're going to make that in 40-Year-Old Vision, but then turns out there's a different one that exists. 
But yeah, all right, fair enough. Or encyclopedia of nude scenes in films? I think so. Like, uh, because that's what they're trying to make. Hmm. That seems like a thing that a bunch of virgins would do. I mean, why not? Isn't it? You could probably make quite a quite a bit of money off something like that. Making. Yeah, money. maybe people always want to see the nude scenes from films and stuff, and sometimes that's where you could see naked celebrities. So yeah. Uh, we could bring Max over, set him on the long path. Oh, the 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 guy we're covering. I mean, sure, yeah. Make a video that's ten minutes long. Do it. That'd be nice and long. Can't wait for the EFAB bully to kid, Re. Luckily, Rags has some experience on the situation. Um, Rags, you, you, you beat children up regularly. Is that something you do? Yeah, whenever I see him in the street. I gotta run away really quick. Don't they ever catch me. I bite him <laughs> in the ankle. And it then totally I makes leave. sense. I take one of their shoes off. Not both of them. Just one. Because you only need to take the one. Hmm. More. I'd love to see you and Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers do a live stream with Brie Larson. That would be epic. <laughs> I would do that in a hobby. I think it would be really funny. Yeah, I'd gladly do a live stream with Brie Larson. I mean, you know, we joke, but it would probably end up pretty going pretty well as long as she's like relatively amicable. I don't see why I wouldn't. Yeah, I agree. I wouldn't want to ask her too many things that would uh, come across as hostile. And I figure I would try and direct the conversation to be more like, you know, just tell me what it's like in Hollywood. Go for it. So yeah, could, you know, could be, but there's no fucking way in the world she would ever talk to me. Um, maybe Jeremy, you know. I heard he helped grow her channel. What a legend. Uh, when will you be doing an EFAP on Guy's video on Ruby or his Climate Change Deniers video? Why in the world? <laughs> I have I don't know anything about climate change, and I've never seen Ruby. Yeah, like there's no, it, ain't nothing for us to be doing about that. Isn't Ruby like super long right now as well? I don't know. I don't. I've, I don't know how long the show is or how many seasons there are. I always well to be honest with you, if it was any anime, I probably would have said that. Is it an anime? I Ruby. I. I it's spelled R W B W Y. It's got a. That's, what? That's, oh yeah, it's probably an anime because that's fucking stupid. Um, that's such an anime thing to do. What? Have a silly name instead of something have gay like the Lord the, of the Rings. The Lord of the Rings. So the, the Virgin Ruby versus the Chad Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Anal Rings. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, boy. <laughs> it's like, where's where's the problem? I don't understand. Uh, who just came back from watching Vsauce prove that Air Bud should not have been allowed to play basketball because he's a dog yeah there's probably some kind of rule about species when it comes to playing basketball probably probably I'm not going to say there is I, I, I wouldn't know for sure I, I would guess I would I'd guess give a strong guess you can't show dead children in gym and media, so there are no children in some games. It's weird to see a medieval village with only adults on it. Yeah, ironic for the country that came up with concentration camps. That's probably why. <laughs> They're like, oh god, we gotta get away from that image. But, uh, it's funny because there's some games, and I don't know if you discovered this, Ranks, but... Bioshock Infinite, some for games. example, where you shoot, like, a kid, and they, like, steal. they like, bounce off, and you're like, wow. And then um, I hit one with a wrench uh, when I was playing it on back on Twitch, and it like made a clank sound. A wrench? Yeah, like they so, just made them bulletproof oh, sorry. in Universe Two. I hit them with something. I don't know if it's a wrench in that game. I, I can't remember what what I hit them with, uh, or if it was like a hitting them with a the butt the gun or whatever. But they, it clanked and sparked, and I was just like, Jesus. <laughs> but that's how it works with uh, with some games. You get the um the Last of Us approach, which is that when you aim your gun, your character automatically puts it down. It's like, whoa, I wouldn't shoot with them. And you're like, wouldn't I? Wouldn't I now? Yeah. I think I'll be the judge of that. Who's the player? Yeah. You or me? I think it's me. I think I'm the player. I miss agency. So how about you let games. me massacre this child? <laughs> uh, 
Drinker, will you do a recommends for the thing? I think he should. But uh, whether or not he will, who knows? I saw aliens when I was four, and the land before time when I was six. Kids these days are pansies. You saw aliens so when I was four? So the land before time, I do remember watching that as a kid. And that was kind of hardcore. It had some scary kind of imagery in there for a kid. Um, Why would you address that before aliens? <laughs> um, well, chronologically, a land before time takes place before aliens. I don't think they're in the same universe. I'm pretty sure that... Um, let me see if I can remember their names. So there's Ducky and Spike. Right? They're always a pair hanging around. Spike didn't talk, though. Ducky had to kind of do the translating work. Uh -huh. So you had Littlefoot, right? He was a long neck. You had Sarah, who is the, like, the only person who had a real fucking name. She was a Triceratop. She didn't take anyone's shit. She was kind of a dick. I didn't really care for her. Mm -hmm. um, we have, oh, one of the movies had a little baby T-Rex, Chomper. He wasn't from the original one. He was from uh, A Land Before Time. One what, what of the sequels. Um, that was the one where you had the two vegetarian dinosaurs and they jumped into lava and it was really fucking stupid. And as a kid, I always thought that was dumb. Um, there was another one, Journey to Big Water, which was their name for ocean. Uh, but their dinosaurs are fucking dumb, so they just call it Big Water. Um, they didn't even call it like the, like, the, like the Romans called the Mediterranean, the Mare Nostrum. And stuff like that, but yeah, I don't, I don't know the name of the the swimmy guys. When I don't think he talked either, he just made chirping noises. Um, there was a let's see, there was Petrie. Petrie was the one who flew. He was like a little pterodactyl. He had brothers and sisters uh, canonically. I think I don't know if the other ones did too. I think uh, who else was there? So we have Ducky, Spike, Littlefoot, Sarah, Petrie. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anyone else. I think I think that was it. I think that was uh that was our main cast. And Littlefoot is raised by his well, he he's taken care of by his grandparents because his mom and dad got fucking killed in the first one. Uh it was pretty pretty metal, not gonna lie. Um, Let's be confused with Mel Commander, right? Oh yeah, totally different things. Uh totally mm -hmm. different things. I would be curious to rewatch them. I know I, uh, you and I are going to rewatch Little Nemo at some point because I want to see, you know, how that holds up and how it is based on, you know, now I'm an adult and everything. So. Well, mostly an adult. I'm technically an adult. Technically, still a yes, fucking yes. goofball. I have to grow old, but it doesn't mean I have to fucking grow up. Fuck that shit. Too true. Yeah. Too. So what's this true. about aliens? Oh, just that they saw it when they were four, apparently, which. I don't know say, how you'd even like understand it. If can't you say it recommend. Yeah, I don't see. But I don't know. think you get the uh, you don't, wouldn't get a lot of appreciation for all like the character work and the mm -hmm. mini arcs and stuff. And you're four, you'd probably watch Land Before Time and get more out of it. True. Um. Yeah. So. Um. So that Littlefoot was an orphan is like he was made an orphan. However, he was he had grandparents to take care of him. And if you're raised by your grandparents, you're not an orphan. Like even grandparents has the word parents in them. So that still counts both in technicality and in the principle of they are the parents of your parents. So they're like super parents. They're grandparents, you might even say. Neat. Very. I can see you would definitely want to go to the next super chat. I can tell. <laughs> I was interested to hear about Littlefoot's the grandparents. orphanage. Little, oh yeah, he, he went to go live with his... Um, I think the Great Valley is where they go to. So it's basically like... Remember uh, DreamWorks uh, made that movie Dinosaur? With yes. Aladar and the monkeys? Yeah. <laughs> I do. I just... Now everyone else is thinking of it too. Wasn't that... The, didn't it like not do too great? I can't remember. I don't think so. Money-wise, I guess, but yeah. Um, Drinker, how's the weather think. back in Scotland? I'm sure it's uh, probably pretty pretty cold, drizzly, perhaps. 
Who could really know? Does anyone really... Has anyone even been to Scotland? I don't think so. Damn it, why are land. disappearing? Die more often, you bastards. I want to cast more Whoa. spells. He's not playing The Last of Us 2, guys. <laughs> oh. Uh-oh. Look at the health. I wonder if someone has, uh, like, made a body count for The Last of Us 2. This Not that that would be, be, like, thematically relevant or anything. No. But, uh, I mean, if there was one person you'd spear, it'll be the one that you'd started the whole rampage for, right? That's oh, yeah, that would make sense. I mean, I wouldn't go through all that shit just to get at the end and stop. I mean, that would be the most ridiculous thing, especially because I've killed, like, hundreds of people along the way. It would be weird. I would never... Yeah. Yeah. I certainly wouldn't be worried about them seeking out revenge for me. Not that they have a history of seeking out revenge at great lengths and distances. And, uh, Don't you love stories? I certainly Writing do. is amazing and wonderful. Watched the OT with my mother for the first time a few days ago. Really should have got to them sooner. Cheers to y'all. Keep being long and girthy. Ooh. Oh, we'll do our best. And I'm glad you checked them out. Mm -hmm. Good shit. It holds up really well. Yes, it do. It very do. Uh, Mullet, remember when World Class Bullshit has told you I don't understand why people want the Snyder Cut? Justice League is 6 out of 10 and better than Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman? I really don't remember that happening. What did I say? Because Justice League was really bad. And if you ask me which I think is the worst out of Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, and Justice League, I would say easily Justice League. Like, it's not even... Like, whoa, you know? Like a big whoa. Big whoa, dude. Like, you guys know, whenever I say big whoa, I'm very serious. Someone said, definition 1A of orphan would include Littlefoot. It's like, no, it wouldn't. Someone who, someone who has grandparents who take care of them is not an orphan. They've got grandparents who take care of them. They function identically as parents. It's like if someone is adopted, they're not an orphan anymore. Yeah, that is... Is that right? I'm, for some reason, I'm questioning my own understanding of the word orphan at this point. Yeah, you're not an orphan if you're adopted. And same thing if you're being taken care of by your grandparents and they're acting as your parents, then you're not an orphan. Well, there you go. Um... This is simple shit, people. Stop letting me down, chat! The O Q. The o -Q. I'll school them on the O Q. <laughs> uh, fuck! I'm just gonna take advantage of this one goblin being low on health to cast all my spells because my team is gonna fucking die to a drum fucking person. Die. Can you imagine dying to a drummer? Is there anything more embarrassing? Yeah, like imagine being like if like of all the people that I wouldn't want to lose an arm wrestling contest with. Ringo Starr. Eh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 800. Oh, gosh. God, I need. A... It was a mistake not casting spells all the time with the drill, wasn't it? It was a mistake. Uh, keep casting Company Valor, I guess. Do do. The video of the Koreans attempting the Iron Lotus in Blades of Glory freaked me out when I saw it. I was eight, though, so probably not the movie for me. Yeah, that I could see how that would be pretty mm -hmm. unsettling. Again, though, it can be anything. You never really know. Kids can it could get be, freaked but, out by all kinds you know. of things. You know, like Nightmare Before Christmas? You know Oogie Boogie? Oh, yeah, like, the monster shit. hiding under the stairs fucking freaked me out. Well, this is the thing. None of it freaked me out. I loved all of it, but I could totally understand anyone getting freaked out Oh, I loved it too, but I liked kind of, of being... I liked being spooked a bit. Yeah, yeah. I think I think in the moment yeah. I was like, ooh, that's kind of scary, but then it goes along with the song, This is Halloween, this is Halloween. And then I was like, Yeah, it's fucking Halloween. It is, because Halloween's cool. Which is almost as good as Christmas, but I mean it's it's still great. I mean, Halloween's great. I mean, yeah, Halloween is great. I agree. I agree with that portion of the statement. Great. Uh I'm currently watching all Resident Evil movies and they are so bad. I hate Afterlife for copying stuff from Resident Evil five and just ignoring the context. I rag. Hey! God, we should actually watch the Resident Evil movies, because they do actually take stuff from the games, and it's always shocking. You're like, oh my god, that's the games, isn't it? I can see what you're doing. And it's awful. Oh wait, I just gave a stone shield for no reason, didn't I? Oh well. We're gonna be in this fight for the rest of the fucking stream, because I have to keep slowly healing my team back 
to, you know, not dead. Otherwise known as alive. Wolford Brimley style. Do you know he asked on Twitter the other day what his wrestling name should be? Wilford Brimley? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Mm. <laughs> I, uh, I, re I responded the Brim Bomb. Lots of other suggestions are floating the around. The Brim Bomb? I think it works. I give it seven uh, Brimleys. I don't know, I'm trying to... Like low cost, affordable diabetes medication isn't the only thing being delivered to your door. <laughs> the best. Um. Wow, this is so exploitable. So, the idea here is that um, if I kill all three goblins in front, I get to attack the one in the back, but only for one turn, and then he spawns another three. But if I just keep this one. Here, I can just cast spells almost infinitely. Um, you know, healing and mana and protection spells and stuff. So, I guess I'm just gonna do that, if that's okay with you. Go for it! Okay, you've approved. And my team is slowly getting back to full everything, it's kind of funny. Alright, who's not got a stone shield? Um... I saw Movie Bob when I was 23 and it traumatized me. Oh. I'm gonna watch when you show a child Movie Bob for the first time on YouTube. It can, it can do some serious damage. Hi, Rags. Still never hey. forgot, forget the bully hunters. No, yeah, I, I don't forget the bully hunters. Nobody. I think that was the first video I made in, uh, in Not Movie Maker, if you can believe it. Good times. Um, Ryan Johnson? What a poof name. Woof woof. Damn. Uh, woof woof! I don't know, that huck sounds like a poof woof. What is this meme? <laughs> I feel like I'm out of the loop. Hmm. If you're out of the loop, then... Yeah, so am I. Luke being a ghost was a real homo move. Woof woof. Keepo suspicious. Uh, episode 10, Ghost, Kylo, and Luke argue for hours. I mean, it would probably be better than TLJ. Jedi so. texts. Yeah. And other things. You know Jedi. They, you know how they do. Talking about the stuff they talk about. Yeah, you know. It'd it be like it do. Uh, marry, bang, kill, rock, paper, scissors. Um, marry a rock. Because I feel like a rock would always be there for me. Uh, definitely kill scissors. I think something that's designed to cut something is going to turn on me eventually. Just It's just because of its nature, really. Um, I'm going to fuck paper. But I could roll that up and just do all kinds of stuff with it. I could Damn. fold it in a million different ways. I was asked that on the Last of Us 2 streams, and uh, my answer was almost the same. I said, rely on the rock. Or, you know, the rock's going to be there for you. Um, and yeah. you can poke a hole right through the paper, so you can have some fun with that. So that's gotta be bang. And then just kill scissors. I don't think I even justified it, I was just like, kill scissors. <laughs> that's like... the exact answer that I gave, Mahler. No, it's not actually. You gave, uh, you said scissors gonna cut you, and that's why you're gonna get rid of it. While I said, just yeah. kill scissors. So they are different answers. Yeah, we're answers. both killing scissors. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a broad stroke. So you, could, you could say that someone who answered completely differently still answered the question, couldn't you? But we were being specific, so very no, different we, answers. We gave this... You know what I mean. You know what I mean when people <laughs> say that. You know what I mean when everyone says that. I didn't oh, know I didn't I mean the know, exact do I? I know it's a different answer. To what depth? I'm from Welshland. I'm very clever. I don't believe you're from Welshland at all. I think that's a lie. Is... Is whaling legal where you're from? <laughs> what, killing the Welshman? Like, I, don't, I don't know. A whale. <laughs> it's like, you just it's go not hunting murder, them whaling. with a fucking... And it's illegal in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hunt Welsh people in Japan. You can do it everywhere yeah. else, though. If, if two Welsh people meet in Japan, they could legally fight each other to the death. <laughs> That's where Welsh people go to get euthanized. <laughs> and, it, and it does the little sound. It does that. Yo, yo! <laughs> the, the, the drum sound and everything. What a bizarre world we'd be living in at that point. 
just, uh... Be difficult to explain that to anyone, wouldn't it? Be like, yeah, that's just how it is. I don't know. Uh, Star Wars Episode Ten. Something happened. You you all pretend as if you wouldn't watch it. You would. Star Wars Episode Ten. We're gonna fix it. That's the subtitle. I'm gonna fix it. I swear I'll do it. All right, my team are mostly back up. In both, this is how long it's taken just to get my health, my armor, and my my mana back up for everybody. Like that's all I've been doing. Let's do endure flame. Why not? Uh, the car in Lord of the Rings isn't a flaw because it's Lord of the Rings. Something there that has no reason to be there is a flaw in any movie. Um, I'm sorry. Say that again, because you might have to walk me through the logic on that one. The car in the Lord of the Rings isn't a flaw. Because it's Lord of the Rings. Something's there that has no reason to be there is a flaw in any movie. I don't understand that at all. Yeah, I don't actually understand what you mean. Um... Don't know if meme. <laughs> I'm stuck all the way back at... Wait, what? Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Um... Knives out, more like poofs in woof. <laughs> For a million bucks, would you make a kid watch Cannibal Holocaust? Yes. <laughs> I mean, think a million of the dollars can buy a dollars. lot of therapy. Yeah, like it's a few sessions, you'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be maybe good. you'll like it. You give that kid's parents, they say, "Listen, I made your kid watch Cannibal Holocaust." Hannibal. Hannibal Holocaust. <laughs> Cannibal Holocaust. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's so terrible. It's horrible. Oh my god. It was like, but and then you fork over like fifty thousand dollars. And you're like, I'm sorry, but hopefully this will smooth things over. And of course, they'll say yes, because mm -hmm. it will. Dude, company might work on perfect mode, I think. That's insane. That's the little spell I cast where I deal more damage as a result from now on. It's just like, on perfect wow. mode? Jesus. I should have known this, probably. Oh my god. Restore some action points to the whole group per round. Let's, let's do it! Um... Do, do, did Ryan Movie 43, these amazing actors... So, Movie 43 is probably some of the worst shit. Like, we're okay. It's not, it's not like that. We should watch that movie. Forty three. Movie forty three is so fucking bad. It's got loads of famous people in it. We've talked about this before, but it's so easy to forget. It's basically a series of skits, um, and and it's all with famous people. And I don't know. There's like a whole production nightmare behind. Oh, it, it has that really groovy looking cover. I think so. I, I don't remember. It looks like a seventies sort of cover or something like that. It's like weird and abstract. Yeah, it could be colorful. I think I might know what you're talking about. Dude, 2,000 damage, Hadhod. What are you doing? But each strike... Oh my god, he's so angry. Jeez, and that's not even a double or triple critical. Yeah, I know, he's just... He's just... Fucking raging. Immune? That's just an average, ordinary, everyday critical. Did I just get an immune to a fire attack because of Endure Flame? That's what it does? Jesus Christ, I should have explored more of these moves, I guess. I'm just so busy not caring. <laughs> well, what does the tooltip say for Enduring Flame? Because that seems like a really appropriate thing for a skill called Endure Flame to do. Well, I'll tell you what. I thought it said reduce. I didn't realize it was make immune. Well, I mean, they're, it's one of those they're technically correct, but he's like, hmm, the specifics would have really helped. Him. Yes. Though I hate it when games do that, when they don't give you specific tooltips. It's like, I'm not an idiot. Just tell me what the fucking thing does. Oh, dude. This ability mm. makes you do more damage. It's like, fucker, tell me how much. 1%? 5%? 10? Just, just 300%. You're like, oh, wh uh, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, see, reduces flame damage done to the group. And she said immune. Seems like quite the reduction. Again, not exactly inaccurate. You're right. Boom! Oh, you missed, you bastard. My wife did a racism. She thought you was the spiffing Brit. Sorry you had to suffer The Last of Us 2. You, sir, are a gentleman and a scholar. Oh, hi, Rags. Oh, hey there! 
Um, yeah, that's okay. British racism is is still allowed. You're still allowed to do that, so keep at it while you can. Mola rags, I'm drunk. I feel like I'm spinning. What are your opinions on Paul Blot Mole Cop? <laughs> I remember laughing at it. It's fucking terrible, but I remember laughing at it in this dumb what the fuck is this kind of way. Um, I think I watched it. I don't remember hating it. <laughs> if that's worth anything. Yeah. I haven't watched Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 Electric Boogaloo or whatever it's called. So I don't know if it's any good or I don't know anything about it other than it exists. Well, there you go. That's a start. <sighs> um, mirror on Bitchute. Well, we actually got past it with uh, Opera. That saved us. It's all good. Thanks, Opera. Yes. Congratulations, Opera. You saved the day. Yeah, but you weren't that great in um, A Wrinkle in Time. You weren't... I didn't. can't say I was a fan opera. You know, I'm going to agree with that one. 110%. Uh, hi, Efab. I'm the guy who makes. Oh yeah, we did read that out. Um, yes, we did. Making the rain call. Uh, yeah, she yeah, said yes. We, we we did indeed. Wonderful, excellent news. Very happy for you. Awesome tisms. A historic occasion in Efab history. Mm -hmm. Destroying art, creating relationships. Efab, the way forward. Whoa, dude, I could have farmed that fight and just leveled up fully, probably. Yeah. Let me kill so many people. Do you think that they didn't think that much about balance in this game? Is that what you're saying? No, they clearly va balanced the balance out with balancing. That's at least what I've taken away from playing this. Definitely. And honestly, I'm I'm fine. If, like, if I'm reviewing a game, and that was a thing in a game where technic, like, if you use skill, like, I suppose you could get to max rank in the Skyrim tutorial cave, you could get you could max rank up and like a bunch of skills get them to 100. But it's so time consuming and tedious. Yeah, I think I'm okay that, with that existing. Yeah, I was like, I'm fine with you being able to do that if you, for whatever ungodly reason, wanted <laughs> to do it. I think yeah, the very presence of it would probably invite people to be like, you know what? Fuck it. I wonder if I, I could do actually it. do it, and yeah. then they make the YouTube video, you know getting to 100 sneak in the tutorial barricade or something <laughs> like that. This is talk I was just like, why though? <laughs> it's like, why? Because I can. Well, their sneak is at 100, and in doing so, they've lost track of their lives. It's funny, there's, there's a lot of things like that with humanity. Like, why do they do it? It's like, literally because they can. Like, it's just... Yeah, there's a... There's a guy, and I've watched his videos on can you complete all of the StarCraft II campaigns without losing a single unit? And I'm like, damn, like, I don't, I haven't played StarCraft II in ages. I don't have any emotional connection to it. But I'm like, this is so fucking impressive that someone did this. Yeah. Like, the strategies that are involved and how to do it and each individual mission and stuff. Like, man, kudos to the people who just have the fucking time to do this stuff and you see that with runs in pokemon too you see people doing pokemon runs with can you beat pokemon using only this or never healing or just these crazy challenges and i'm like man god bless you for doing this just thank god so that now we know it can be done that's crazy uh you thought I was merely pretending to be retarded but i was actually retarded all along also high ranks Aha! Hello! So you Retard. didn't expect me to say the expected. That's true. I didn't expect to see the expected. Oh my god, I found a golden belt buckle that's a three and a half star. This early into the game? Oh ho! Whoa. Oh my god, look at it. Look at those beautiful stats. 13 speed. What wow. is speed? What does speed do in this game? I can only... Oven well, let's have a look. Addiction. <laughs> uh, speed, 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 speed. Anyway, speed... Eh. How do I find the attributes help? No, that no. How do I wait? So I can't actually see what speed does until I can upgrade it. I guess. Cool. <laughs> Once I can upgrade it, I will read out what the tooltip for speed says. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna treat your silence as an okay. Yeah, I am in total approval. 
Uh, anyone watch Trago? Makes funny, short, usually two to four minutes videos about filmmaking. Would give Muller a run for YouTuber with best voice. Oh my god. What about me? I, 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 I was, that's what I was I saying. Have a oh my very god, approachable, down to earth voice. Oh, it's, it's very rude to just, just throw yeah, rags I mean, under the bus. The like co host that. is right here. You might even call it the cost, just to save time. <laughs> cost. The host. The Elagos. The Elago. Co so talking about things that nobody would play as. It's upsetting to me. Because when my brother and I played through Third Age, I was first player, and so we're like, okay, listen, these characters are horribly unbalanced. What we're going to do is I'm going to be Barathor because I'm first player, but I get to walk around and get like the extra XP and stuff for walking around, and you could control Idriel and Hadhod because they're just so much better than the other options. Yeah. Wait, does that mean you, do you replace Barathor eventually then, or...? You get uh, Morwen or whatever her name is. But you replace him with her. Cause... No, I always kept Barathor. Yeah, because his, um, when you unlock like maximum moves with him, he has like that five strike move. It does do quite a shit ton of damage, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I don't know what Trago is, or Trago. Trago. Um, or um, the YouTube channel, I mean, yeah, but, but good stuff. Reminder that aliens aren't protected by the Geneva Conventions. Oh wait, do you think I they, assume they would be. Do you think they would? Like it's not in fine print, but in spirit. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, in, in spirit. In the, you know, maybe not in technicality. Besides, surely they would edit that if that was to be exploited, like extraterrestrial beings. Yeah, it's it's the, the stuff like that isn't in the wording because we haven't found aliens yet, so. Just like, if there was around. a sentient species on Earth apart from humans who are our level of development and had personhood, essentially, then, mm -hmm. you know, the verbiage we'd use in our documents for all the legality. There's just no reason to do otherwise, because humans are the only thing human-like here on Earth. Yorp. An inheritance issue actually happened to a friend of mine. Their mother owned the ranch that she spent her entire life working on and maintaining, then when the, her mother passed away, with no will, her sister took the ranch. Damn. Hmm. That's what I mean about, like, it's probably a clear person who probably should get it based on just, um, everything that's going on. But it gets, it gets really complicated with shoulds, with inheritance. Uh, you gonna miss again, Idriel? Hmm? Yeah. She didn't miss, also, and she critted. Noice! Uh, gets entire inheritance, doesn't kick everyone out of her house. Dumb. No, she's too pure and kind. And I was gonna say, I think they imply that she's gonna help them. Uh, in, in, I think she even says it, I can't remember. I think, I think Daniel Craig says it, he's like, she shouldn't help you guys, but she will because she's nice or something like that. I don't know. He, he's just he's he's fucking fighting for her in the whole movie. He's he's so certain that she's such a great person. It'd be so funny if the whole time she was manipulating him and she did actually do all of this on purpose. She's like, "Oops, I guess it just happened to work out this that way." That would be a great. They're subverting expectations. Yeah, but thought... that would show the immigrant lady to be bad, which means that we can't do that. Imagine, like, that's the big reveal. You do all of the film, it zooms into it on the, um, you know, the thing, and it's about to, so it almost looks like it's gonna fade out, and like, yep, yeah, we did it, but, like, music starts to play that's a bit more devious. And then it starts showing flashbacks of all the things she did to set all of this up. It's like a really sad, um, like a, a mariachi tune. <laughs> yes. But it's done really slowly. That's The Shining. You've ever seen that? The Shining? I haven't actually seen it. Mm hmm. Um. Didn't what? they do a Shining? Didn't, didn't they do a Shining sequel last year? Like Sleepy. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Sleep. Mr. Sleep, right? <laughs> Mr. Sleep, Sleepy. Dr. Sleep is the other name. But yes, <laughs> I just sleepy is just what came to mind. Oh, you know, that movie Mr. they made. Uh, what's it called? Sleepy. Mm. 
Wouldn't the government discover that Marta is an illegal immigrant in the process of transferring Harlan's assets to her? Well, she's not an illegal immigrant. She's got, uh, she's naturalized. But, but perhaps her family, in some way, shape, or form, could be, could be discovered, yeah. I think with the transfer of assets to that degree, there is a good chance it could be discovered. Yes. Yeah, there's, there'd be a lot of scrutiny on the family, a lot of news coverage, stuff like that, so... Does Though, make sense. she will have the resources to try and, you know, extend it for as long as she can or get some uh, loophole or avenue in. Yeah. Maybe. Also, someone's spamming in chat. When, when chat is nice, calm, and chill at this point, you're only going to get yourself booped. It's going to happen. Someone's going to come for you. It could be Rags. You never know. He's got a, he's got a big old wrench. But uh, you're upsetting everyone else. Look, look, you're harshing their mellows. I'll be doing that. Mellows are harshed. That's mellows all. harsh, mister. Shouldn't be harshing mellows. It's just wrong. Uh, you can't spell the meta narrative without theme. Bobdo, Ch Bobdo Chipkins, Third Reich oh, of the Third Shire. Reich. Third Reich of the Shire. <laughs> oh man, I want. I I, I realize now. I should have just been doing powers because Stone Shield is I, but Mountain Shield, that's where it's at. What's the difference between the two? So Stone Shield applies, like, I think it's like 200 shield to someone, or 400 or some shit. They don't give you the actual number, but obviously there is an oh, actual number. Um, Mountain Shield does it for the entire team. Jeez. It's so OP. <laughs> and it, like, reduces damage to zero or something, right? It's really good. Well, it's, it's essentially armor, and it, it has to be removed before the health can be hit, so... If, oh. Theoretically, let's say your health is a thousand and the armor is three hundred. If they hit you for three hundred and one, you will lose one HP. I see. Um, but yeah, it's very good. Wow. Take a drink for every time he says some form of subvert expectations. Yeah, it was the the filmento video was like okay. It's just loads of stuff in there that like I don't know. I probably want to clarify with him and be like, is that really the problem? Or was it this? And then also talk about Knives Out, because my god. Like, dude, the film isn't quite hey. as tight as you may have thought. I can't believe he called all those payoffs, like, amazing. What the fuck? He had the dude, uh, the, the reaction of, of him being, doing the thing, where he was like, oh, He did it for the yeah, mixed like, vials. <laughs> Tell me why you did this. It makes sense because he mentioned that his name was Hugh. <laughs> yes, of course. That answers the question entirely. Molly, your tasted games is perfect. I like someone saying that as a result of seeing the third age on screen. That's uh, good shit. I would love to watch this EFAP, but I still haven't seen the movie yet. Anyways, here is some money, Mooper, and hello, Metal Drinker, and everybody's favorite doggo, Raggers. <gasps> hello! Um, yeah, return- I would actually recommend that. If anyone hadn't seen the film, we probably should have said this at the beginning. He's like, go watch it, and then watch this, and see what you think, rather than- well, fuck it. <laughs> it's too late now to- Just go watch the movie again, and rewatch the EFAP, and see what you think. I don't know. There's some- there's some- we should have- we should have set them EFAP homework, shouldn't we? Oh bad. Make Next sure you do class, your EFAP homework. We shall be watching this. You must see it yourselves, otherwise you'll be considered a badism. Boom boom double critical. Whoa. Shit. Mm -hmm. Rags, will you marry me? Uh, um I'm I don't I don't wanna that's the thing, I don't wanna come across as being like too exclusive to one person, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like there's enough rags to go around. Rags is like a club membership for many people, you know? Yes. Uh, can't just be saying, like, nah, it's just us. It's like, oh, you, oh, you can't be doing that. It's mean. No. No. Get angry <laughs> cops and or donut operator on EFAP. Yeah. Sure. Let us do it. Uh, definitely a fan of some of their stuff that I've seen. Ooh, ooh. 
Uh, make art great again. I agree. Do it. Do it. Next, a divorce by Super Chat? Haven't we had someone Super Chat in that they got a divorce? I feel like we've actually had that. I don't know if they were joking, but I'm sure yeah, we have. Said that. I think I think we've had that, yeah. Wasn't it the meme that was like a guy who said he watched EFAB at his wedding, and then we were like, lol, that's probably not a good indication of <laughs> some stuff. Yeah, we got uh, that. And then he was like, also we got divorced. Oh, I can't remember, if, yeah, like, I, I think that's a thing that happened. Uh... Then again, I mean, if you know how women are with ceremonies and they want everything to be big, me, I don't even want to. If I do get married, God forbid, if, mm -hmm. if my life goes horribly wrong and I end up marrying a, someone and they want to have this, I, I don't want to have a ceremony and get to have a fucking buffet table and things like that. I just don't I don't want to do any of that. I'm just like, yeah, we're married now. You know, we have a dinner in our house. Or, I don't know. I'm just, I've never been one for ceremony. You don't uh, need marriage, you know. You can just, you can just, you can just do the thing where you're like, let's go on holiday. <laughs> Spend all the money on that instead. Do it. <laughs> uh, well, look, can I marry and then divorce you? You can keep the super chat money, but I'm keeping the dog. No. <laughs> no. I think the dog should have a say in this. Yes. If, uh, personally, I just, I just feel like I. Brain inspiration. No, that's a bad one to get next. Gift of Galadriel, that would have been a good one. Boo. There's Aura of the Valor, see? Once I get that, it's game over for the Balrog. I don't know if I can game get it in time anymore, though. Game over the Balrog, man. Game over, man. Uh, I love you, Rags. Will you marry me? Oh, another one of the... I Like I said before, I mean, I... I don't want to be the kind of person who I, I just think that there's a lot of rags to go around. I think I'm capable of what? what is it called? Polyamory. Let's give that a shot. I want to be polyamorous with all of my all of my amazing fans. Polygamy you shall engage in until the end of time. I'm going to make the smart business decision by recognizing publicly that if I commit to one person that rules out everyone else. I want to keep stringing people along for as long as I can. Um, okay, then I'll bite the bullet. We need the rejection. Mola, would you marry me? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, negatory for uh, all of the reasons. I don't need to say them. I don't need to explain them because they're so obvious. You see, I've learned a lot from Cosmic Variety Hour. Huh? You just need to tell people that the reasons are obvious and that you'd go through them, but you don't have the time. Rags, I want a divorce. Did you get married to this person? No, they might. They're probably referring to the divorce like a divorce with their spouse. Like they oh. currently have a spouse and they're thinking of divorcing. Him. Like they want you to, you know, do the divorce. Like you. you I don't you think I'm legally it. allowed to do that. I think there's like a process. Well, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll try and get you. You know officialized or whatever the term is to, in order to do it. That'll be a, a main goal of EFAP, I suppose. Getting Rags in a position where he can divorce people. That seems, like, considering everything we do here, I feel like that's very important. Hmm. It seems to match thematically with what we do, I mean. You know. Yeah. Reviewing YouTube yeah. videos about movies. It could just be, seems to just really... be some truth to yeah. that, you know. Uh, when do we get a Jeffrey Epstein murder mystery? <laughs> I'd watch it. Jeffrey Epstein murder mystery. I feel like it could be pretty good. There probably will be one. A documentary. Uh, Epstein. Yeah, probably. If it doesn't inspire stuff like that, or if it already hasn't, then yeah, I can see how that'd be. Uh, would you fuck a cactus or Amy Schumer? Amy Schumer? Yeah. Because I guy. feel like, here's the thing. I don't want to, I don't want to fuck up my dick with like needles and shit. And yeah, I was gonna say you, you might be thinking, that. yeah, but it's Amy Schumer. Well, here's the thing. If I close my eyes, then the inside probably doesn't feel, like, horrible. Like a cactus? You know? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel like I'm rubbing my cock against a cactus, you know? Like, I'll prob I'd probably be able to come in Amy Schumer. <gasps> I don't think I'd be able to come inside of a cactus. That's probably the most disappointing thing. I mean, thing I like it. I mean, like, I like the, the, you know, obviously, I was but... I think I'd be okay. 
I wouldn't brag about it to my friends. Neither would I brag about fucking a cactus. Zach They'd be like, I mean, it's like impressive, to I guess, that you can do that, but man, your dick must be poor. There is a clarification uh, that they wish to, to deliver. Some cacti are soft. Yeah, but aren't the outsides, like, spiny and stuff? Uh, I, I guess there was no rules in this question. You could probably just, you know, pluck them off. Make sure, uh... Still, safe. though, that's, that, that's a lot of... Hmm... Hmm. I, I, I still, I guess I still go with Amy Schumer over a plant. My God. It's okay, chat. It's okay. You'll recover from this news. Uh, Rags, please sing chorus to Bon Jovi's "Living on a Prayer" in Unka Plutt's voice, but instead of saying "We're halfway there," say "We're one quarter portion there." <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, uh, can you pay, paste that in chat just so I know uh, what I'm saying and whatnot? <laughs> Strange request. The suspense. I just... Second, I'm all right. Uh, I'll just get in the just listening to him again, just so I got the voice down. So I'm singing, uh, you're living our prayer. The line, you know, we're halfway there, but I sing a, a quarter portion there. <laughs> but then, but then there's a little part after it. He's like, Oh, we're halfway there. Well, living on a prayer. So, should I come up with something thematically appropriate, like? Like, oh, like, oh, we're a quarter portion there. Oh, oh, bring me that droid there or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I got to think of, I got to think of, um, yeah, it could be, um, yeah, we could do that. So bring me one quarter portion. So, uh, oh, we're halfway there. Well, we're a quarter. So I guess we go. Um, whoa, we're a quarter portion there. Whoa, ho, bring me that droid there. <laughs> Does he say bring me that droid there? <laughs> Nobody wants the droid True. for many portions. So it just se it seems appropriate. It does, I agree. Hey, Rags, what, what sounds more... What sounds like it would hurt more? These wog jaws more often pierce the jugular versus these claws slash with deadly effect. It's a hint. Say them one more time. Why? So I got perfect mode and it's like you unlock more perfect mode things the more the higher your level is. The first one's arrow volley and it just fires arrows. You're like, yeah, that makes sense. Lethal clawing. These claws will tear with the great wounds and you're like, Okay. And then the next okay. one is, these wog jaws will pierce the jugular. You're like, whoa. And the next one is, these claws slash with deadly effect. You're like, why don't you just tell me what it does? What? And then you look in the top left and it says it's a hint. Why are you giving me a hint about my moves? Yeah, this, well, what was I saying just a moment ago? I hate it when games don't give you proper explanations for the shit that they are. Like, tell me what it does. Tell me, does it do base damage of this? Does it apply this effect? How many targets does it hit? Tell me what my shit does. Don't leave these ambiguous, easy to misinterpret descriptions of what my attacks do, especially if it's perfect mode, and I need to make that shit count. And then all I have to go on is like, well, should I just go with the most expensive one? That's probably the one that does the most damage, right? Yeah, I mean, in a lot of stuff, you just do the one that does the most damage because. This It'll is something say. that I really don't like about a lot of turn-based stuff is that generally a lot of the, you just, all you do is just the one that does most damage. Because it's a turn-based game, so you just want to kill them before they kill you, you know, yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, that's the preference. <laughs> but so, the bite sounds so much better than the clawing, but the clawing is more expensive, so it's like, I guess I'm going with clawing. Let's see what it does. Oh boy, here we go. Oh... 2,500. That's fine. <laughs> Not impressed. Because 
because I'm, I'm I'm just fucking uh, fucking around in Guild Wars 2 right now, and I'm looking at all my abilities, and and you're like like you get ability, you get how long it takes to cast one second or, or sorry half a second. It recharges in 25 seconds. Gives you the the name of it, Nightfall. It, like, it gives you description. Call down a glowing column of shadows that damages and conditions foes every pulse. This skill's unique for game mode. It gives me how much damage does it do. It applies blindness for two seconds, and it, there's going to be four stacks of those, right? Because it happens at every pulse. There's going to be four pulses where it cripples. Cripple lasts for two seconds. It tells you what cripple does. It says boons converted to conditions, maximum of four. There's five maximum targets. There's four pulses that occur every two seconds with a radius of 360, and then it creates a combo field for dark. It's like, see, you're telling me what this shit does. Mm -hmm. So even before I ever use it, in my head, I see exactly what it does. I'm like, you know what? There you go. That there, I, I, I know what I'm getting into. And then this Very game is like, hint, it'll hit them. <laughs> like, oh. Hint. And I was like, yeah, it does damage. <laughs> just every, replace every ability with helps you win game. Dude, he got my stream up. He just fucking dodged the first yeah. attack when it clearly hit him. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know, fuck, dodged. Yeah. Boo. Um. Why are we this? Why are the same people that ripped TLJ a new one praising Knives Out? Hi, Rags. Hi. In fairness, just right praised them. Because both. they don't have a standard, is why. They don't have a standard to operate on. I mean, I'd agree with that. Ours is so very simple. It uh, really is. It's basically like, does it make sense? <laughs> For starters. <laughs> like, I, we don't, we don't want to set the bar too high here on every frame of pause. It, just, it comes it across as like, it can't be that simple. It's like, no, it's, that's basically uh, it. <laughs> you know, you would think that. You would think that. Die, stupid troll. That was probably racist of me, I'm sorry. Alright, don't dodge this this time, otherwise I'll be mad. Oh, he dodged it. He dodged twice! What the fuck? How you dodging this is fucking bullshit. Fuck. It's fucking raw. Raw, raw. It's fucking raw. It's fucking raw. Uh oh. Yeah. I'm a little spooked. I could kill him in, in my next move, but I also don't want to risk it, so I'm going to resurrect my precious man person. Berathor, guard of the citadel. He's a long way from the citadel to be a guard of the citadel. I, f I feel like everyone at the citadel is like, where the fuck is Berathor? Here's a guard of the citadel. And they're looking at their wrist sundials or whatever they use in medieval land. Mm -hmm. Like, shit, it is... It, it He's is late for his chef. This is just late. like Barathor. He's probably running around Moria with some elf babe. Mm -hmm. Just like him. Fucking typical Barathor, honestly. Typical Barathor. Kind of guy that you just you would not hang out with. You'd be like, oh, here he comes. He's like, guys, can I talk to you? I just want to tell you about my girlfriend. You're like, yeah, the elven. Yeah, I get it. Oh, she's so perfect. Look at her with a. Uh, she can run around, uh, fuck you, and and then he gets really upset. He doesn't get why everyone hates him. It's kind of sad, actually. Uh oh, I'm actually gonna. Oh, I'm gonna have to heal my stupid characters before getting to the save point. This guy sounds like Carlos from OG Resident Evil Three. All the ladies love my sexy South American accent. I never played OG Resident Evil Three, so I wouldn't know. Oh, wait, one more. Um, but I guess they mean Filmento sounds like that? In which case, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Man, I got so many belt buckles to choose from. Whenever I think of a video game character talking about how they're appealing to ladies, I always think about Sergeant Johnson, who, as he says, I know what the lady's like, he pulls the charging handle of a minigun on the back of a pellet. Do women like the miniguns on the back of pelicans? No, no, he got he got a tank. He oh. got a tank for his, his yeah. Do women like tanks? Because Cortana says you never he never gets any thanks for the tank. He never gets me anything to Chief. Mm-hmm. He's, he's like, I know what the lady. 
<sighs> For the record, Greyhound was a pretty good war film. I have not seen it. Do you recognize Greyhound ranks? Um, that's like, you know, you asking me that is like me asking you, uh, do you recognize human? Well, like, under the context of the previous sentence of uh, film. Oh, yeah, that's right. Context matters. Um, mm -hmm. No, I don't. Damn. And there's a cute little little doggo sticker. I like it. Uh, they break in and golf club the code breaker. DJ -O D D Joel. <laughs> I mean, that was like pretty good to me. Uh, Red Letter Media greater than EFAP. They got Rich Evans. You got J. They have a J too. No, well, you know what we do. <sighs> We we do the best with what we've got, all right? Yeah, Give us a break. Most, you know, movie reviewing semi regular show things have a J. Like a little Yeah, little, J just... J does his best, all right. Everybody has to have a J it's how you qualify. Otherwise, you know, if you don't have a J, can you really be considered official? I don't think so. When DJ overhears Finn and Poe, Poe does not know Holdo's plan to use stealth ships. Here go DJ has no info to trade the FO. Um, I think Poe says they're loading the ships, the transport ships, and so you only need a bit of inference to then tell the First Order. Well, they uh... could be going to the Grey Havens. <laughs> well, I mean, either way, that's his information. The Gorg transports. Hey, why don't you use a scanner to reveal anything that's hiding? It's like, oh my god, what a great idea. Let's do that. And then they did it, and then he got loads of money for coming up with that genius fucking idea. You need a DJ on, on every ship to tell the captain to just do things that you'd think would be normal. Uh, where are we? The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some would consider to be unnatural. Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a Skywalker. dun dun, dun. Um, what's worse, a bad movie being defended poorly, or a good movie being attacked poorly? Uh, they're both equal. I was gonna say, I can't really spot the difference there. So it's the yeah. same effect, right? In both times you're like, eesh, oof, eesh, go up it. Mm -hmm. In the Clone Wars, Jabba has a gay or trans cousin called Zero the Hut. Just thought you should know this. Why is it gay or trans? It seems like... Because that's, that's the huts. The zero stands for zero genders. Zero genders. Uh, the Hugh Yu twist probably translated very well in non-English countries. Oh, yeah. I wonder how that goes. I guess they would just keep the name as Hugh. Like everything else is translated except Hugh. Yeah, I can't imagine they would trade it out for a an ethnically appropriate name that also rhymes that with would, you. <laughs> that, that that rhymes with you, yeah. At least I'd imagine. Maybe, maybe they did. You did this is officially worse than Martha. Um, what do you think, Rex? Say that one more time. Uh, you did this is worse than Martha. Martha did this. <laughs> That's what she says. He's like, Martha did this. No, the um, the the Batman vs Superman thing. You know the. Oh, I I know, I know. I was just thinking to tame that thought for a moment. Um, it's not fun anymore. It was very short lived. Um, hmm. I think the Martha thing's worse. So if you break them down, you have Superman and Batman's mothers both happen to be called Martha. So that's a big coincidence to start off. Secondly, Superman is like, damn, Batman wants me dead, like, more than anything. That's pretty nuts. I guess I give up. I'm gonna die. I need to tell him to save my mum. But instead, he says, save Martha, which is weird. You'd think he'd say, save my mother, which, by the way, would fix that scene pretty hardcore, because it's way more humanizing to hear him say, save my mum. Um, 
But no, instead he says, save Martha. And Batman, of course, wouldn't know who the fuck Martha is. And so Batman is like, huh? Save Martha? And I love, dude, I absolutely love that in his head, he thinks Superman might be referring to his mum. <laughs> He's like, why would you say that name? <laughs> What's wrong with you? And, and so he just flips out, and then as as Mike put say it, that name? he's like, like she runs into the screen, Lois Lane. She's like, Martha's his mommy's name. <laughs> it's like, oh, so it's pretty bad. Uh, that whole thing compared to Hugh did this, you did this. I do feel like they're in the same ballpark, but I think I would side with BVS being worse on that one. Yeah. That's how I'm feeling on it. Um, okay, everyone, let's answer a real question. How many quarter portions would it cost for Star Wars weed? How about weed in Lord of the Rings? Stuff is strong. Do they sell death sticks in portions? That's how they... Not like ounces or anything, it's always One in portions. One quarter weed. I don't know. Oh, Rice, did you fucking... I just remembered because of the weed thing. Um, in the first part of Last of Us 2 stream, remember when I entered the weed room and they played sad music because it was dead? Yeah. What uh, was that I, about? I don't remember the music. <laughs> I, I remember that part, though, where you get to the weed room. Yeah, you enter the room. And they realize, like, oh, the weed's all dead. And the music's like... No, no, no. no. It's like, no, the weed. <laughs> it's like, okay. I feel like there are bigger issues uh, that dead weed isn't really a big problem, but fair yeah, enough. Like the weed, though. Huge ass. Huge cocks in my ass. Huge erection. Huge more amount. So, okay, so huge cocks in my ass does not work. All right. Huge cocks in my ass. It, yeah, well, if you say it like that, huge cocks in my ass. I gotta do I it the like exact way it's written, because that will show the talent for the writing. Huge cocks in my ass, and yeah. you're like... He's gotta do it, he's gotta, you gotta, 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 you gotta put them together, you know? You gotta, you gotta get me to say it that way. I gotta, gotta stick to the rules. Otherwise, it makes it too easy for him, you know? Can't be having that. Huge more amount. Humongous. Huge cabbage baggins. UJ Scrotes. Why did this happen? Why 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 so many people doing this? I don't know. Was there a part of the stream where we, we did UG Scrotes? <laughs> Is that what someone said? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Scrotes and the Ball Brothers. UG Scrotes. Scrotes is such an unfortunate surname, isn't it? As is like Adam Sachs or something <laughs> like that. Like Dick Willie or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Shaft Jones or something. TFA Part Little 3 Richard. was. Oh wait, that was actually someone. Oh, that was that, yeah. Uh, TFA Part Three was awesome. Well worth the wait. Looking forward to August 2021. Uh, high rags, kick J, etc., etc. Oh, hello. No. And yeah, glad you enjoyed it. Uh, you are. Was that guilty? Because because of. You are guilty, I guess. Oh wow! No, not me. Well, I, 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 I don't think they meant you specifically. Um. Also, just just fucked it up. One one moment. Boop boop. Uh, Hugh will admit John Wick the second is pretty good. No. No. Metal. I think after we watched, uh, we watched the third, and then we watched the second. Mm -hmm. I think the second's worse. Yeah, we concluded the second was worse. Uh, I thought the third was worse, but then I rewatched the second and I was like, wow, the second one's really bad. I'm sorry, guys. More red pills coming from EFAP Central. Oh my god. Uh, They're pretty bad. The first one's good. The second and third are pretty fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. Like, remember, the plot of the second one revolves around John just being retconned into being a fucking idiot. Yes. Uh, he doesn't understand the fucking rules of the universe for no reason. Just like, oh, and I love how they're explaining it all to us by explaining it to him. Fucking John Wick. Like, he's he's the last person in the world. So this is news to him? Um, 
7 out of 10 for me. I still love Knives Out, even with its many flaws, so swing away. You can't change my subjective opinion. Oh, and hi, Rex. Um, hello. Uh, I don't know. I think we can change your subjective opinion. Yeah, it's good. It's but I'd be bad. curious to know what brings it up so high to give it a 7 to you, knowing how much the plot and like the the mystery elements of the mystery movie fall apart. Maybe they're saying that even with all of that, they still get a feels of about a 7 out of 10? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, hello, Moron Rags. Hello. Hey. Rags, which character do you like the most from Arknights? I don't know what Arknight is. But I can take a look. Uh, could you spell that? Uh, A-R-K? Ark with a K, yeah, and then uh, Knights. Well... Oh, okay, so Arkham. AR and then Knights as in Medieval. Oh, I'd have to get back to him. I don't know. If it's an anime thing, I don't know. <laughs> the... Why must uh, it always yeah, be Yeah, I don't know. Anime's not really my thing, honestly. I'd have to... Uh, let's see. Um... Uh, Arknight Bears Country? So they have these, this one has rabbit ears. Not too keen on the rabbit ears. Um, cat ears, dog ears, bear ears. Uh. Hey, um, this game has Gift of Elrond restoring X amount of health, and then Gift of Galadriel restores, like, almost full. What are they trying to say? Wow. Wow. What, what is that? It's, uh, I'm offended, I think. I don't know. Texas looks kind of no. No, I'm going with Siege. She looks pretty good looking. Yeah, I'm going with Siege. I like her. She looks hot. I like it. I like how the ears match the the hair, and she's you know got great tits. And I'm gonna go with that. There you go. I'm not particularly really strong in my investment though, so only to it. You sub vidor expectations, Ryan. Oh, I get it. I fucking get it. I follow. I, I, I understand. Uh, mo wait, look. I think I actually, maybe that read that. I'm, ca I'm just kind of, it's a little late. My brain again is, is getting to, um, to tism mode. You guys need to watch the nice Jedi trailer by Imperator Cuts. The nice Jedi. Hmm. Uh, Remember when Jedi were nice? No. Mace Windu was always mean. He didn't give Anakin the rank of Jedi Master. He's too dangerous to be left. He's too dangerous to be allowed to sit there, cackling. Uh, but yeah, I've not heard of that, and, and uh, I'm assuming it's like a supercut maybe of, of The Last Jedi, but... The Nice Jedi. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe I'll check it out. Uh, hi, Rags. Are you going to launch a Teespring store? Yes, I am. <gasps> uh, I was addicted to a mobile game and spent half my income every month for a year. Thankfully, I got out of it and stopped. Yep, that's what they're oh, designed man, I'm to do. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I'm glad to hear you were able to get out of that. Yeah, this is yeah, the thing. Man. Some people might, like... They can rationalize it as being like, nah, it's it's money well spent. It's what I want to do with my money. And it's like, oh, uh, there are better ways to spend your money, I swear to God. It's like, it's like even worse than, oh, I actually know. Simping for like a, a Twitch thought would be way worse, right? Because at least with the game, you can see colors and lights flash and stuff. Yeah, at least it's like yours, you know, and it's mm -hmm. in a strange way. And you can brag to your friends about your scores. There you go. That's already a plus. Yeah, you can't brag to your friends about your scores if you're a simp because you ain't you ain't scoring. Do conspiracy. Raid is partly responsible for the demonetization of YouTube to get the shills. What well, Raid is like trying to demonetize YouTube things so that people would be more desperate to uh, engage in promoting it. I guess. Maybe. Hello, Mubles. This is only if you want to talk about it. On the topic of Super Chats, does the good boy Raggleton get a percentage of the Super Chats? Yes. 
yeah we've got a we've got a split made up that's uh really excellent no issues uh no issues there um holy cow i use the same mouse as rags and i didn't realize neato hi muller and hi rags hello hey yeah that g600 is legitimately amazing i really really love it um gladly recommend it and it's like 40 bucks too and there are some mice out there who are who that are <laughs> really really expensive and stuff like that but um why can i go up yeah here? 40 bucks for an amazing mouse this is a nothing area boo i want the balrog to burst out of the door otherwise you're a bad game Dude, i'm actually a little bit lost right now rags where do i go um up I went up the stairs and it was a dead end. You know, like an end that's hmm. like there's a creature there and it's just deceased. Horrifying. That's not I'm gonna make sure and, and go up to that door again. Seems like a door that I might click and it just sends me to a different area. Don't lie to me, game. Oh my god, it is. This game lied to me. Um. Do do do. Your reaction to Manny getting sniped is priceless. I was, I think, even though it shouldn't necessarily be, that was probably my favorite payoff in the whole game. I, uh, I was very pleased. It was such a great surprise because, you know, you play The Last of Us 2 and everything keeps going wrong. So, like, when something goes incredibly right, when you didn't think it would, oh, like, what, what can I say? Just hot damn. That's, that's what I have to say about that. Uh, I'm making a highlights video right now. Ah. Oh, wow. I'd, I'd be very curious. To I see feel like some out. of my reactions are probably going to make it into EFAP memes. There's a good chance. I, uh, there was some funny shit. Boom. Boom. Oh, you dodged. Uh, give us a Welsh Wii U? Is that Wii U or Wow? Wow. 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 We always, the, the Welsh often do the, the thing where you drag out... Oh, it's so frustrating to listen to sometimes. It's like, um... Wow, your own people. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. But uh, the, there's like this extended moaning on the end of a lot of words. So, for example, with wow, if, if say, I was saying wow because you'd slap me and I didn't see it coming or whatever and I was annoyed, instead of saying wow, I'd go wow uh, Oh, uh, yeah, I, I got what you mean. And it's like, ugh. <laughs> Why do you need to do that? Hi, Rags. Hey. I recall in one of your videos stating that what Joel does at the end of The Last of Us was horrible. Have you reconsidered due to the issues involving production, distribution, and who owns the vaccine? Um, probably, yeah. I can't remember what video that was, um, but yeah, I definitely well, I mean, have. A lot I didn't of people... give it that much of a... A yeah. lot, I just didn't give it that much thought, you know? If you boil it literally down to kill one, or or literally, like, save the world, like, like if you get to that simplistic level, it's much easier, but when you explore yeah. all of the situation and the context in The Last of Us, yeah, I would have done what Joel, Joel did. And the fireflies <laughs> and their limits and what they actually are gonna do, and what, it's just... Yeah, they ooh. can't be trusted, not to mention that they deliberately avoided asking her, which is like, ooh, that's a big, that's a big no-no. Um, even if she says no, right, it still it says something about them that they refuse to even ask. It's like, hmm. And then, of course, mm. you just want to see her, and they refuse to let that happen. They don't come through on the deal. They uh, take your supplies that you came there with, which to me is fucking staggering, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's like just straight up. I don't even vindictive. know. That might have been an accident, mechanically. Um, because the cutscene is you kill the guy who's... Uh, you know, got the gun on you, and then you pick up your supplies. The implication being that had he kept pushing you out of the building, you wouldn't have gotten your supplies. So they, they have now officially taken your supplies in the story, when I don't even know if that was the intention mechanic. Like I said, the cutscene ends with you putting it on, and it's like, right, you're in gameplay now, and you've got all your weapons. But uh, you can't conclude anything else, can you? Like, they took all your shit. Um, also, they punched you and knocked you out when you were trying to give CPR to Ellie when she drowned. Like, that's unacceptable. There's, there's, there's a lot about the Fireflies that... <sighs> hmm. And yeah, and I hmm. hate the second game for ignoring every single part to Joel's uh, actions, or what it all means. 
he's just like and how he doesn't explain it to Ellie when he needs to and <laughs> clears this all up. It's just, I, he only needs to say what he needs to say so we can have this emotional thing we want to be in this game to just have that exist. Mm -hmm. It's really shitty. And um, there's a nice, I would call it morally ambiguous to a, to, a, to a degree at the end of the first game that everyone can discuss it and really figure out what's going on there. But the second game is like, no, it was bad. Like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. Oh, that game, man. Uh, the EFAP 100 meme is in the final stages of polish. In the meantime, check out the direct prequel to this meme on the meme repository, Spoodageddon. Spoodageddon. There's quite a few memes that we might need to... I'm not sure how I'm going to balance this out, because, well... We can't do another... Meme fab, I don't think we can fit it in. We got so many faps to do before 100. You know how it is, guys, when you're trying to jam the faps in. Gotta get them in that with the time man. frame. Yeah, I'll have to figure out a balance for that, but yeah, I'll try and uh, grab a hold of that. Hi, Mola. Hello! Once there are enough fan made songs to make an EFAP album, what would you want to call it? Um. Something generic, like Songs of EFAP, so it sounds really funny in terms of like, it sounds official, but then it has EFAP in it. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, I'd have to think about it. I bet there's a lot of clever stuff that you could do, though. Yeah, I, I mean, similarly to how we named the fucking podcast, I'd probably leave it to Community Vote, coming up with some clever sh uh, EFAP greatest hits. We could call it I mean, Jam EFAP the Faps in. Is I mean, we we got the name EFAP from a suggestion from someone, didn't we? That's some that's some historical shit right there. If you go to, I think it's I want to say EFAP three, maybe four, but there is a top comment that says, "Hey, why don't you guys call it Every Frame a Pause?" And then you can see Smiler Al saying, "Oh, I'll I'll move it along to him," and then I say, "Yeah, we'll throw that in the suggestions." It's like, oh my god, what a fucking Chad! What a historical content commentism. That got the name right from there. Even Ellie is mad at Joel for saving her life in The Last of Us 2. Yeah, he ruined her death. <laughs> yeah, that thing, she really, really wanted to have a meaningful death. That was extremely important to her that she had a meaningful death. What a weird direction to take it, honestly. It's so odd. Like, what are you doing, dude? What are you fucking doing? No. No, 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 no. EFAP touches on Bionicle. I give my immediate undivided attention. <laughs> Dude, EFAP... The EFAP audience has quite a connection to Bionicle. It's not something I want explained. I just like it. We have a, a Bionicle in us. We have a... We have an understanding. Mm. Also, George R. R. Martin said, if he didn't finish Winds, Winds of Winter by July 29th, 2020, today, fans can imprison him. So, thinks he's a man of his word? Um, didn't he, like, almost say that Corona has, like, slowed him down or something? Which would be, like, you'd expect... How the, the fuck has Corona slowed you down? I know, it's... That man's playing with fire. I don't even know why he would bother to promise a date... Because, uh, funnily enough, we're about to hit August, which is the time you said I'd release TFA Part 3, so I did make it. It was close, though. But, uh, yeah, we probably, you know, you just shouldn't promise dates of release. It never ends well. Um. Hello, Rags and Mola. Hello. Hey there. Thanks for recommending the Chronicles of Pridi Pridane. I just finished Tar and the Wanderer. Great stuff. I'm glad you liked it. It's been a long time since I've read it, but I remember enjoying it when I was younger. Hmm. Uh, Rags, today you Yo. again made disparaging comments towards women and minorities. Here's some more money. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, very uh, kind. Keeping the helping me keep the dream alive. Just trying to be the best pro gamer I could be. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can cook your school loan books like a grenade. All right. <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah, sure. I can't remember what we were talking about, that that would have been 
important. Uh, all relevant, I mean. Uh, ooh, I got a new hammer. It's a war hammer. It's replacing my axe, I guess. Ooh. Better sword for Berator. Oh, dude, do you remember this? I always remember this. So, as Hadhod, you like yeah. at one point pick up the second age Dwarven Dragon Helm, and it's just better than basically every helmet you're going to come across for the next 20% of the game. And that's what Hadhod will look like now for a long time. It's like, huh. The four and a half star item, I don't know why you get it now, but... Oh, yeah, I remember this helmet. Yeah, once you've equipped it, I'm like, I remember this helmet. Mm -hmm. He wore that for ever. Because <laughs> you don't find one better for ages. <laughs> like, well, I guess I'll wear this. Uh, my name is Mola H. Mubschley, and I love Christmas. Christmas is the best holiday ever, and I was wrong about Halloween. Rags was right. Hi, Wags. Hello. That's false propaganda. Back, everybody. Propaganda. Uh, how did you guys come up with the formats of your videos? Did it happen naturally, or was it planned out? Um, um it just sort of, I just sort of did whatever, honestly. I didn't think about it too hard. I just sort of did it. Yeah, I did it in the, the way that most made sense to me structurally. And then, I guess the other half of it, as I've said before, is that copyright has kind of directed the way, dude, I cannot wait to edit my Last of Us 2 video. Because I won't have to deal with any cuts. I can just put whatever I want for however long I want. Oh, oh my god. It's like, it's like a miracle. I get to edit like everyone else. <laughs> I mean, the video essayists mainly, but you know. Even though they, 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 the funny thing about them is they tend to actually do, do the whole copyright evasion thing by cutting clips quickly. It's just that their videos are usually like 10 minutes long, whatever. Um... Reminder, I got Mauler to unironically say the N-word on the first stream of his Last of Us 2 playthrough at 8, uh, 10 18 00. Good rat if anyone wants to hear. <laughs> there you go. That's some good rat right there. That's some good rat. Hello, this is probably my first EFAP. I learned about this from your manager and AM? You don't know if this is your first EFAP? I guess so. But wait, they said from your manager and AM. Who's what's a, uh, 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 ammo. Manager and AM. Hey chat, help me out. Who whose initials make AM, or am I missing something? <laughs> it wasn't the real Edward. <laughs> they would have been happy if it were. Someone's already he's like, ah, oh, no, that doesn't fuck. Um, on 45 and have only learned about it a few weeks ago. How rail? Assistant manager? <laughs> armored media? It could be armored media. Wait. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but that doesn't. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but yeah, I yeah. Mean, either way. Welcome. I hope you enjoy. Plenty of episodes to get acquainted if you wish. Ooh, I'm dealing a nice chunk of damage with that hammer. I like it. Uh, split between you both if you are not doing so already. I love you both. Hi, Rauglers. Oh, that's nice. Hi, hi. It's so nice. Thank you very much. Uh, hey, Moosley. I made a quick Reddit post explaining why James Bond would have been hired and possibly after movie effects of what happened if you want to make fun of it. Quick Reddit post explaining why James Bond would have been hired... And possibly after movie effects of what happened. Hired for what? Who's hiring James Bond for what? You gotta tell me. I can't handle this. It's insane. But, uh, good stuff, I guess. So that went right through him. You liar game. Uh, even Rags has sent a super chat. Mola, can you send one? Yeah, Possibly. Mola. That's a that's a challenge accepted right there. Wait, can you send yeah. a super chat to your own channel? Does that actually work? I don't know. I wonder if it would like it would prevent you or, or block out the option or whatever. Um 
By reading this, you're agreeing to review Johnny Cash's A Boy Named Sue live on EFAP 100, the pinnacle of storytelling. I don't agree. I have foiled your evil plan. Okay, so there's this dwarven, like, coffin, I guess, uh, tomb, in this, like, throne roomy type place. I guess it's just a tomb as well. Guess what I find in it, Rags? Guess what I find? Um, something for Idriel. A Rohan third age long sword for Idriel. Well, oh, what? it was for Idriel. Yeah, oh, was. right, I guess. But, like, wh what? <laughs> Why would that be there? Your weird game. Fucking weird. Um. You know. Hi, Rags. Hey. I heard you mention the show Castle earlier. What are your thoughts on it? Oh, I, I don't know anything about it. I know my my younger sisters and my mom really liked it. Uh, I just know that they... I just know that they used it a bunch. Or they, they watched it a bunch and they like it. And they like, you know, yeah, Castle... Um, Nathan Fillion and all mm -hmm. that. Who doesn't like Nathan Fillion? I love him. He's awesome. He was in the Halo EST, right? Yes. And he was, he plays he's, like, he's in like lots of uh, Destiny, I think, as well. Yeah, he's a character in Destiny. Uh, Raid Shadow Legend was everywhere during quarantine, but vanished. Did Raycon scare them off? Ever seen Netflix's Dark? Rags, I choose you, good doggo. Oh. I mean, I haven't seen uh, Netflix's Dark, and yeah, Raycon, I've seen a lot more ads for recently, uh, like the baked-in ones. I assume they're good, I've never tested Raycon myself. And yes, good choice of Pokemon. The Last of Us 2 is like if Boulder killed Kratos and Atreus went after him, killed every Aesir, but let Boulder live because he didn't want to stoop to his level. It's fucking stupid. It's... I don't even know that anyone can defend that shit, man. It's oh, a pile of uh, diarrhea dookie, as, as Irate Gamer would probably say. Doctor. Oh, no, not that. I've discovered the cure for the zombification disease. Also, Doctor, doesn't write down the procedure or tell anyone else how to do it. Yeah, do you know about that? They say that uh, he was the only man in the world who knew how to do that. Wait, what? The, to be able to get the cure out of... Because basically, right, you might be saying to yourself, well, hey, if Ellie wants to, you know, have a brain cut open so that she can save the world or whatever, you can still do it, right? And they have, like, a throwaway line in the game where they're like, he was the only guy who knew how to do it. Oh. Does that not sound like some bullshit to you? <laughs> if only he had written I... out the procedure... You'd think that he'd have a apprentice or he'd ri written it down or something, or... Mm. I mean, yeah, I don't know. He said there's no way to separate the like the the thing that grows on the brain without killing the subject, and it's just like so. If the only goal is to separate it, surely anyone can actually do that if they're allowed to kill the patient. I don't know. What do I know about doctoring? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, wow, that worked. Um. Littlefoot is not an orphan. His dad is alive, just just usually absent. What do you think? Say that one more time so I catch the technicality. Littlefoot is not an orphan. His dad is alive, just just usually absent. Huh. Maybe I, maybe I don't remember that part. E well, even if... Here's the thing. Even if his dad was dead and he was being raised by... Uh, Littlefoot was being raised by grandparents. Um, his grandparents. He wouldn't be an orphan. He'd be, he'd be his his grandparents would be acting as his parents. Do your parents have to be so dead, dead or just gone for you to be an orphan? Um, I think they have to be. If they if if your parents leave, like if they put you, like if they you're born and they put you on the fire. Uh, house's doorstep or whatever mm -hmm. or the orphan you know they drop you off at the orphanage then I would say you are an orphan they have abandoned you they have given you up they've forsaken you in some way 
uh, either justified or not. You're orphan but, in everything um, but name. Yeah, because if an orphan gets adopted, they're not an orphan anymore. People say when they like if an you have some an orphan at an orphanage who is adopted by people, grows up with those people as their parents, and they look back in their past and they say, you know what, I used to be an orphan, or I you know I was an orphan. They don't say I uh, I am an orphan. You know that changes. You could lose your orphan status. Uh, what's y'all's opinion on the Just Cause franchise? I, I, I I've never played, played Just Cause. Yeah, feels bad, man. Yeah. I guess I should have to be able to answer that question. Also, I just got attacked by a line of four creatures of the darkness. I think I'm going to use a volley. Use your anti-darkness creature ability. Damn, that worked pretty well. Um, You're allowed on the council, but we do not grant you the rank of orphan. Oh, no! Also, uh, Just Cause... I'm trying to think if Metal's ever played Just Cause. He might have. Ask Metal what he thinks. You'll get an interesting answer, possibly. That's... there you go. And, um... Yeah, you have to earn the rank of orphan. You can't just take it, you know? Be like, oh, I'm an orphan now. It's like, hey. A lot of people work really hard to get that label. You can't just take it. That's how it works. Uh, Saving Private Brick, written by Neil Druckmann, directed by Ryan Johnson. Gotta leave now, but good tisms whenever you hear this. Why, thank well, you for thanks. the good tisms, yeah. Um, Saving Private Brick. Remember, I'm not exactly against Ryan Johnson's directing. It's the writing of him that I, you know, yeah. Yeah, the sort of. it was directed fine. Like Knives Out was directed just fine. I don't. At least nothing comes to mind as being terrible. Mm -hmm. The Geneva Convention does not apply to aliens because it only applies if both nations signed the treaty. They would need to sign up first. Well, I think that generally the way that we behave now is civilized enough to where even if we fought a country that hadn't signed the Geneva Convention, but they didn't specifically go out of their way to violate it in particular, I think most people would, you know, go along with it, you know, unofficially. Yeah, I think it would be considered pretty lame if someone yeah, and plus, violated it's it not and like said, an yeah, alien well, they didn't species, sign. It's not like an alien species was at the meeting and they didn't sign it, you know. <laughs> So yeah, like they, they didn't really like, have a you, chance. The aliens were like, you guys didn't tell us when this was getting signed. It's like, oh, we didn't have a fucking phone to reach you, what? You call me on the space phone. Whoa, space phone. Um, isn't Daniel Craig basically a simp in Knives Out because she's a good person? I mean, he's so sure of it, you know? He's just so Yeah, he is sure really of sure of it. Uh, some. Um, I just feel like there's a lot of evidence pointing to the contrary, but you know, he's, he's sure of it. Uh, congrats on the Patreon goal. Now go save some zebras. Hi, Rags. Hi. Uh, yeah, it hit a 2,000, but, um, I imagine that, uh, it's, it, it's all literally on the line. It's probably gonna go up and down and up and down and stuff. Uh... Yeah, I'll have to make sure I'm, I, for what it says on the goal, that I definitely come through on anything that I haven't done on it. Uh, just finished Knives Out, so I'll be ready to engage with the Tisms later. What did Hugh bring me? So stupid. Yes. Some people consider it masterful writing. We need, this needs to stop. <laughs> like, that's not, it's not clever. Do you remember, um... It was considered clever that uh, s something exists just because someone mentioned it before. That's how it works. So if like, yeah, yeah, go. I think, go I on. think we made an example of this before, but it's just like she just pulls out a, you know, a mini gun and mows down Chris Evans' character into pieces of flesh, and we're just like, God damn it, that scene was insane and bizarre. And then it's like, ah, but did you catch in the opening scene? She was like, she had that magazine. 
and it said it was a guns and ammo magazine, and it was the page that was open on was minigun. Like, uh, it's the kind of shit where I'm like, you got you are you fucking with like, me? You fucking with me right now? I think people I think people who do that imagine themselves as being a lot more clever than they really are. It's it's I, I can't it's handle like it. see there's a poster in their room <laughs> of a motorcycle. That's why at the very end they have a motorcycle. It's like, Um, no. Hashtag Shad says it too. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I guess this is for you, Rags. I don't know. I, I can't. I can't. I can't be the one to do it. I can't do Shaggy. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay. Um, I gotta do. Gotta do Shaggy's voice here. Let me see if I can do it. Um, like Zoing Smalls, how are we gonna solve all these bad takes with any Jebby without any Jebby snacks? Also, hi rags. <laughs> Jebby snacks? Why would we want Jebby, Jebby snacks? snacks? Scoob. Yeah, I don't know how to do. Um, I don't know. I don't know about Shaggy. I, mean, I, I haven't I, heard. I haven't heard Shaggy in so long. I don't actually know what he sounds like. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what 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 you just did, uh, that's, that would be my approximation of it. I was just like, I, I haven't seen it in a while, but I think that's what he sounds like. Yeah, sure. Uh, ruh -ro. Like, like Scooby. And the guy who does the voice for, uh, did the voice for Scooby also did the voice for Shaggy as well. Wow. Yeah. Well, how about that? Uh. And here we see the long man has tied up The Last of Us 2 with a golf club in hand. He prepares to educate it on irony. Um. Yeah, it, it, it's one of those it needs to be punished games. I watched uh, Angry Joe's review. He did a pretty damn good job. I'll 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 say that. Yeah. Um, it'll be curious for us to see some The Last of Us Two reviews, possibly on Saturday. Who knows? Well, if um, if Angry Joe, if you want to come on and talk about uh. Last of Us 2, yes, go on. Do it, Joe. Do it, Joe. Do it. Come on, and we'll talk about The Last of Us 2. Do it. Uh, literally every death that happens after the first game is Joel's fault. Just right. Time code 417, The Last of Us 2 video. What caused this man to go insane? Um, Every single death is Joel's fault? Hmm. Is the logic there that the Fireflies disbanded because of Joel and thus became the WLF and the WLF waged a war with the Scars and so every death between those two factions is technically Joel's fault? That's a, that's a really interesting way to look at it, isn't it? That's, that's super nuanced. Oh boy. <laughs> I like it when they do... We've, we've, we've had to deal with this a couple times, right? The whole... Um, Hey, you know, Rags, you're not responsible for any decisions you made. It's really your parents that chose to make you. It's their fault. What? That sort of shit, where they just trace it all the way back. I don't know if you caught any of that. Basically, apparently, just right. Yeah, says well, that... I mean, I'm, I was like, that, who made that argument? Who said that? Some crazy person? <laughs> well, did you I mean, that it? would be like a test to see if someone's crazy. Well, I think so. Yeah, just driving. So, all of the. X fireflies that became WLF and all of the scars, all of those individual people choosing to kill each other. It's like, well, I mean, technically, it wouldn't have happened if Joel hadn't done what he did. So everyone's death is on just... Joel. I mean, it's amazing. No, <laughs> I agree with That's that. That's like no. insane. Totally removing the entire concept of agency from these people. Like, in the end, they're the ones who choose to continuously s stay with their factions and do the things that they do and pull the trigger. I mean, it's... I You can be informed by something without... And still also have it be your choice. You can make a conscious decision based on information that you're aware of. Uh, the WLF are a completely different group than the Fireflies, but aren't, like, all... A bunch of ex-Fireflies join up with the WLF, don't they? Like I don't, I don't know the history of the WLF. I just know that there's fireflies in them, and that 
that's a I'm a, that's all I can assume the argument is even you know, I don't know. <laughs> uh moving on. Um Zero genders. You say that as a joke, but some sources say that the Hertz are the Hertz are hermaphrodites? What are the Hertz? Maybe he means the huts. Oh yeah, that would make sense because we're talking about Jabba and shit, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When we were talking about the zero genders, we were for, yeah talking about Jabba the Hut. You know, because we're a pretty typical podcast. That's normally how. Jabba the Hut. Um. Funny how Mola played all of The Last of Us 2 and doesn't know much about the WLF because the game was that bad at explaining it. I'll be honest with you, man. I'm willing to admit that I didn't absorb the information, but there is a sinking thought at the back of my head where I'm like, what even was the WLF? It was like a response group, I think. They were, they were like rebels, and they were like, we need freedom. I think that was the, the deal. I don't know. I have to, I have to re replay cutscenes about the WLF. Uh, just gonna say, Zero the Hut in Clone Wars isn't gay slash trans. He's just, he just has a high pitched Southern accent for some reason. Lol. High pitched Southern accent. Uh, okay. I want, <laughs> that sounds sounds odd. <laughs> How does that sound with a Java creature exactly? <laughs> Uh, watch the one minute meme video, The Last of Us 2 She-Hulk in action. It's copyright free and well worth it. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it is, but um, I'm afraid, because we got a relatively late start today, I'm going to try and finish these super chats for this epipode and probably wrap Ooh. up. Uh, what's wrong with the second one? Okay, look. John Wick 2's tisms, they shall be covered by the wondrous Metal Commander soon enough. I shouldn't like to deliver uh, semi-baked criticisms. I'd rather he, uh, he get his video all up and ready, which is pretty much what I said about John Wick 3. Um, I think he did a good job, so uh, I shall be with you soon enough. Um, Hugh shall not pass. <laughs> Definitely the feels. Objectively, it's a four at best. I can, I can be okay with that. A best possible number for Knives Out is a 4, but I'd still want to sit pretty on a 3. My god, this tisms. How is Arknights? Also high rags. Hello. Like, are you asking us how the Arknights are? Because we can, I guess we can ask them. See, see if the Arknights uh, yeah, are doing okay. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll ask them, mm -hmm. but find them. Who knows where? Who knows where these anime characters are? They're in some space-time dimension, something faster than the speed of dark, or some edge. Destroy all humans remake thoughts. Uh, oh, I've never played Destroy All Humans, um, so I I don't really know what to say. Yeah, all I know is I that, hope it's good. Yeah, people love the shit out of that game, right? I never played it, but yeah, um, people talk about it fondly from I everything I've heard. Hope the I don't even know if the remake's out yet, but I hope it's good. Absolutely. What is your ranking of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies? Also, hello there, rags. Hello. So uh, I watched the best some... one is one. Yeah, there's no disputing that. <laughs> it's like it's over. It's already done. If anyone says that's not true, they need to go to the, the brain store and buy an upgrade. Okay. Yeah. So that's the top tier insults I got going yeah. right now. You need to get a refund. There's this defective. <laughs> uh, but second up, honestly, is number two for me. I I really like number two. I just think that it's hard to watch it because you have to watch three, and three is fucking bad. Um, and then four... I can't remember if I thought four was worse or just as bad as three, and then five was fucking horrible. Like, five is the worst one. Like, once you start talking about anyone after the first, my bind just mixes them together in this weird mush. Like, they've all been blended up into a, a pirate shake, mm -hmm. and I just I can't distinguish any of the ones from each other. Like it's all just a memory mush in my head space. Um but yeah, I'd have to rewatch them to know my uh my real ranking tisms, but everyone just watch one, okay? Just watch one. Uh, can you please do more playthroughs like The Last of Us? 
Um, we might want to make it a like like do co-op stuff and make it an EFAP gaming. Or... We do have plans for that. We'll just yeah, we'll try and just crank up the EFAP gaming side of things. Okay, let's, let's I would really we'll like that because those Last of Us streams have been pretty fun. Uh, but I mean, it was a special occasion. Um, Game special thirty-hour fucking occasion. <laughs> Did, did, did I, I did send you it, right? It like, there's like a two-hour after video where we all just complain. <laughs> That's all it is. We just jump into a fucking call and we're like... So that was bad. I um, I do know of it. I just haven't... Yeah. I just haven't watched it yet. Uh, bring the guy who gave you the name onto EFAP 100. I mean, I'm not entirely against that idea, but I don't know I'm not exactly against who it. it we was. got a day to kill. Oh, it won't be, dude. I said it before. Like, we did we get through seven videos in fifty? It's like it goes quick, and you start to think like, oh fuck, we're running out of time. Excellent <laughs> <sighs> on wrath. Here's the sextism and racism money rags. All right. Oh, thanks. I thought I was gonna. I, the way you said it, like there there was gonna be more. But yeah, no, kind of there it is. What, el what else do you need? Uh, I'm sorry, but I recently found a channel that makes wonderful content and needs a shout-out for the hard work he does. A British potato. The Don d approves. Ah, British potato. That's, um, I feel like British potato has made memes before. That's vaguely familiar, British potato. Hmm. I have familiarisms in braintism. Can't change my opinion. The fuck we can't. <laughs> Like, that's the spirit. Have you guys seen the amount of reing coming from SJWs about Ghost of Tsushima because it's a game made by an American studio and not a J Japanese one, even though all the Japanese devs loves it? I... I've heard stuff uh, like that, but I don't know any specifics. But th that, that is what I've heard. I've heard that they don't. Do you remember when it was really cool to, like, combo up cultures? But now that's like racisms. Yeah, um, it's really weird. Like Dark Souls is Western and Japanese combined. Like it's super influenced by both. But I wonder if that's an evil. Cultural appropriation is such a fucking weird thing to me. I think um, even even some of the like the types that might call it even find it to be a bit much at this point. Because, you know, like, 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 uh, I think there was a girl wearing dreadlocks or something relatively recently that people tried to, like, cancel, and it was just like, wait, we're not allowed dreadlocks now? Guys, chill, okay? Dreadlocks are quit fine. It. But, uh, yeah, Ghosts of Tsushima, we should have an issue with the fact that they mentioned ghosts. I don't think you should be able to make a game about ghosts unless you are a ghost. And do you think that's fair? I think that's fair. Yeah. You think you just own ghosts? Have you ever been a ghost? I don't think so. Yeah, that's that's livingist. That's lifeist. Life fist. I feel like I'm gonna die. Does stunning work on trolls? Oh, I wouldn't know because fucking Idriel missed. Does everybody have to miss? This could be really bad. I'm finding two big, big chunkuses, and 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 like everybody's sort of dying already. Uh, uh, are the rumors true that Patrick Williams will be a guest on the hundredth episode of EFAB? <laughs> you imagine if he actually reached out and said, "Can I come on?" I'd be like, "Absolutely, dude." Yeah, we could talk about. We could just ask you some questions and see where that leads. Do you want to talk about plot holes? <laughs> Yeah. Man, that's almost nostalgic at this point, isn't it? Shut up about plot holes. Good times. Uh, lol, lose your orphan status. Alright, little Timmy, you've been adopted. Hand over your orphan badge and orphan gun. Imagine Dude, I want an orphan gun. A gun that shoots orphans? I Not guess. like it fires orphans out of it. It's just a gun specifically designed for thinning the orphan pop. Yeah, like you fire it and it just they home onto the nearest orphan. 
Orphan wow. seeking missiles. <laughs> it only makes sense. Deployed from planes and shoot them in the air. Stone shield on Barathol. We're gonna survive this team. We can do it. Uh, could have been interesting if the dad doesn't hesitate when Marlene asks if he would do it to Abby when she's there. Might have added some dimension. Yeah, right, we don't even get a proper answer to that question, really. He's just, he's just sort of like, hmm. Basically, the idea is like, would you kill if it was your own daughter? And he's like, oh, I don't know. How can a man answer a question such as this? Well, that sort of did something. Uh-oh. Aha! Stone shield, bitch. Oh, he missed. Good. Best episode of Community, in your opinion? Uh, you haven't seen any of that, right? Riga Ragaloo? No. So, um, I would probably go with the, um, the second paintball episodes, the Western-style ones, that turns into, like, sort of Star Wars at the end. That, or the band episode, the super fucking horrifying and evil band episode where they, um, they do blackface. Oh, no, we have to ban it. We can't let people see that. Like, honestly, you guys can go check out that episode in whatever way you can, but please do avert your eyes when you get to those scenes. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Oh, yeah, we don't want you to get, yeah, your soul damaged. You can handle it, mm -hmm. babies. Uh, little Excel on Wrath. Whee! Go, Barathor! Oh, wow, that, that did about as much as the perfect mode did, so that's not bad. Um, but yeah, those are probably my favorites. Mm -hmm. Is it true you guys are planning to watch the Monster Hunter movie for EFAP movies? If you are, I wouldn't mind seeing how that turns out as a massively educated Monster Hunter fan. Uh, maybe, I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna tell you now, being a Monster Hunter fan is not gonna help you in relation to the Monster Hunter movie. Hooray! It's made by the guy who made the Resident Evil ones. He is not gonna give a fuck. Well, that's why when we made the, uh, when we watched Doom, we played all the Doom games through so we could uh, acquaint <laughs> ourselves with the lore so that we wouldn't be lost for the movie. Of course. Oh, nice dodge, Idriel. I'm proud that they can actually dodge shit considering the amount of fucking times they miss, you know? All right. Do it again. Um, wait a minute. That actually might be the end of the super chats. It can't be. You guys won't be able to see whether or not I defeat these trolls. Oh my goodness gracious. Turn in next week to see if the trolls get fucking killed. Oh wait, we got we got three more. It's fine. Uh, I remember thinking when a Plague Tale came out that it would be obsolete when The Last of Us 2 comes out. <laughs> I've played it. Oh APT yeah, I would like highly recommend now. everyone check out a Plague Tale Innocent. Wait, is it better than The uh, Last of Us 2? Can you be sure? I legitimately enjoyed a Plague Tale. Um, Interesting, uh, well-made voice, uh, well-done character work, uh, for the most part. Good voice actors for them being children. Uh, the mechanics are pretty simple in terms of the puzzles. Um, like, very rudimentary kind of simple puzzles. Decent stealth parts to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's great-looking game. Very gorgeous world. Um, I, I would highly, uh, highly recommend. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Um, I definitely cared about the people in uh, Plague Tale far more than I did with uh, far more than I did with uh, The Last of Us Two. And... Have you considered that you're a racist? Um, that might be true because all of the people in the Plague Tale uh, that I remember are white. No, it takes place in, like 15th century no. France. So, but it's it's kind of nice. It's it's good to have um, uh, like all the the main characters are kids. They're very young. Mm -hmm. um, the main character is a um, a young girl. She's like 14 or something, but the voice actor is good. Um, she be, she has a younger brother she's watching after. And so the way that they interact is very believable in terms of how a, you know, a, a, a girl and her brother would, you know, behave and that sort of thing. So I like that. Mm -hmm. Someone said, are they orphans? Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, well, at that point, what's, you know, uh, how's their bone density? Is it, like, is it noticeable? 
I don't know. You can only hope, I suppose. Uh, Tommy, are you okay with letting Abby live because live because Dina is preggers? Also, Tommy, what the fuck, Ellie? Go kill Abby by yourself. Um, Tommy uh, isn't really like a character in in the game. He seems to be whatever the plot needs him to be at the time. Nobody actually cares about him. Nobody cares to ask him fuck all. Even though he's Joel's brother. And by the end of the game, he's a husk of who he used to be. And it's a real shame because he's probably, after Joel, m my favorite. And uh, it's literally just because of the fact that he actually, like, fights for the people that he loves. <laughs> as crazy as a concept that is. Sure, he's gonna later on in the next season. He's gonna say, "I never cared." About oh yeah. Well, a lot of people are already panicking about The Last of Us Three. Like, I don't think there's any indication that we're getting one, but like, people are just already assuming The Last of Us Three will be even worse. <laughs> and I'm just yeah, like, I think people Jesus are. People Christ. should be. Yeah, I mean, at this rate, because it's not like uh, Last of Us Two wasn't that good. He's like, no, 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 no. They went from a game like The Last of Us, which, even though it's not great it's fine it's very beloved people have a lot of emotional attachment to it and they love the characters and stuff like that and they, and they really really want it to be good they went from that to the last of us 2 like a fucking nosedive mm -hmm. so yeah people i could definitely see why people are terrified about the last of us 3 potentially if they're gonna make Um, Southern accent. My name is Sue. How do you do? Is that like Mary oh, hi. Sue? Oh, hello, Sue. Yeah, all right. I guess that's it. Sue. Um, let me, let me just refresh. Just time, too. I'm fucking beat. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Almost there. I swear to God. Almost there. Ooh, woo, high rags. Oh, ooh, woo. Hello. Uh, better revenge game, Mario Sunshine or The Last of Us 2? <laughs> Mario Sunshine. I think it achieves the message of revenge in a far superior way. I think it captures the anguish, the struggle of Mario. Uh, and, and it just, it teaches us that to end the cycle of violence, you need to fucking rip out Bowser's skeleton. Okay. Well, actually, no, that doesn't work, because Bowser's skeleton's like a boss in several Mario games, right? The dry bone shit. So, okay. And now a lot of the series that we the series that we love now those have become skeletons. True. Would you rather be able to watch every ever every movie that ever existed or will exist, but never do another review, or be able to review every movie that existed or will exist, but could only watch them once? Could you review a movie properly after only watching it once? When you say make a review, can I talk about it, or am I just not allowed to make a video? Yeah, so I don't like either of those. I don't want them. Um, I can only watch the movie once, but can review any of them, or be able to watch all of them, but not review any of them. I mean, if I can't, if I literally can't talk about the media I'm consuming, then I'll want to fucking die. So I, I guess uh, I'll have to pick the latter because I won't be able to handle that shit. Yeah, I'd probably feel the same way. Won't be able Talking to... about movies with people is fun. Yeah. Or sometimes it's all of the fun. Oh, and they clarified make a video. So, yeah, I can still talk about them. I just can't make any videos. I'll take that over, um, over only being able to watch them once. It's actually so interesting to think about. Um, what about streams? Am I allowed to do that? <laughs> if I'm allowed to do streams, the answer to me is obvious. If I'm not, this is a weird universe that we're in, but, yeah. Uh, Seth did nothing wrong. Seth for EFAP 100. Listen, Seth was the second best character. It's kind of hard to beat out, uh, Fat Geralt, okay? You do accept that. Also, just one more Jared vid for EFAP 100, please. I think it's probably good to stick to the no coverage thing, especially with, I don't even know what, what's going on with him these days, you know? 
who knows what his uh, YouTube testimonies are like. Star Wars fans to The Last of Us fans. First time. Yeah, Game of Thrones. They're all in it together. Uh, Uwu Bully Hunters. I, I, I'm sure that, that, that strikes a chord with their ranks. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. What's that? Uwu Bully Hunters. Oh, Uwu Bully Hunters. I think Bully Hunters would come for us when we cover people. They come for us? Um... They fill our chat with bully hunters. Yeah. The the kinds of people who would go after bullies in video games like them would absolutely go after us because we are the same exact people that they want to go <laughs> after in games or just doing a podcast. Can you imagine they, they come in chat and they're like, you're a bad person. You're like, okay. So anyway. Um, but yeah, they said streams are fine. So yeah, I will pick. I can watch infinite movies, infinite times, and I'll stream reviews of them uh, instead of I can only watch movies once and make reviews. I wouldn't even want to be able to make reviews if I can only watch a movie once. I feel like my yeah, review would be thing. awkward and broken. Might miss out on a lot of info. Yup. Um, and that is that is all the Super Chats for this stream. Of course, Rags and I need to catch up on the, um, the others that we've missed, and I need to catch up on my Last of Us 2 ones. All have been stored and shall be addressed. Unfortunately, we got the uh, two-hour late start today. It was a little bit longer than that, actually. So, a um, little bit conked out. Um, but I just wanted to round it off. It was, uh, it was good. Tomorrow, I will try and stream uh, The Last of Us 2 catch-up Super Chats. This is a decent chunk that I, like I said, didn't manage to get to. It's been fun, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Talking about Knives Out. And um, obviously with uh, this being a delayed EFAP as well as a delayed time, another EFAP is on the way on Saturday. So, um, I suppose Sweet. we shall see you there. Uh, who knows yeah, what the topic absolutely. will be? I can't imagine what we might be discussing considering recent events. It's probably going to be Knives Out. Third Age, we're talking about Third Age, a retrospective look <laughs> at Third Age. Um, um, the ones that just yeah, came everyone, in thanks for a high and short man bad. I got you both hi, hello, and... Well, my bad, bad for a fucking seven plus stream. <laughs> we spoil people, so they think seven hours is a short stream. They're so I'm used fucking to fucking dying over here. They're used to eleven hours. You can't blame them. I guess yeah, you can't blame them. For a long but... time, I'm just I'm I'm at the end of my energy. I gotta curl up in my doggy bed and stare at the back of my eyelids for mm -hmm. t ten hours. Um, so yeah, that's that's what's coming next. You might get a Batwoman next Wednesday or Wednesday after that, at the very latest. Uh, and EFAP 100 is on the way. The 22nd of August, EFAP 100. It's gonna be exciting. And yes, I'm planning on making a Last of Us 2 video, so basically all my days will be filled with working on that now. Um, but it's been fun. Thank you to our guests, thank you for the kind donations, and thank you for hanging out with us. It's been Wonder Fuel, and that's about it. Uh, other than that, is there anything else, Rags, before we go? Um, nothing comes to mind. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching our videos, dealing with us, deal with the plot of Knives Out. And um, I guess we'll catch you guys uh, fairly soon. Looking forward to it. Lots to talk about. Good Not night. that I know what we're talking about, yeah, but if we're going to talk about something, then we have a lot to say about it because yeah, it's us. That's what we do. We just, mm -hmm. As jabber jaws, that's us. I'm so fucking tired. <laughs> good night, everybody, and goodbye. Good night. Goodbye. See y'all later. Ciao.